Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope all of you have had breakfast, well rested, well breakfasted, and uh, ready for the 18th edition of Traders Carnival expiry day special. So we have here probably some of the best traders in India that I personally know, and they are good friends of mine. So I'll obviously I would be biased, but. Um, I'll quickly introduce people on the trading desk. Uh, on the extreme left is Shiju. Shiju is from Kerala. He is uh, an options buyer. And you know, some of you might uh, remember that I described him as Virendra Sevag. And today you will know why I did that. To Shiju's left is Shiva. Shiva is a constant presence at Traders Carnival. And we are very happy to have him here. Thank you. OK, scalper. He will also showcase his product, OI Pulse. Any free offers for OI Pulse for the audience? Uh, yes, we have uh, mic is on. Yeah. Perfect. And we are giving away the scratch card. Our team is there. So someone who has not availed the scratch card from us, you can contact the team. They will be giving you the offer. And you can scratch it and use the OI Pulse as we are doing it for the expiry today. So this is for the offline audience seated, seated here? Yes, only okay. for the offline audience this time. Thank you, Shiva. So here on my left, extreme left, is uh, IT Jagan, who's also a constant presence at uh, Traders Carnival. He's an op option seller. Praful Kulkarni, Davangere, Karnataka, again an option seller. Sha oh, yeah. So now we have option buyers on the right and uh, option sellers in the le on the left. We have uh, Praful Kulkarni and Sharik. OK, there's going to be a tug of war. We're going to have it, call it a ruling party and uh, an opposition party, just for fun. So because you know, they say trading is a boring uh, profession, so let's make it as much of fun, fun as possible. And we're going to, yeah, yeah. So Sharik, hello. Mm -hmm. Sharik is also a constant presence. He is the Rahul Dravid, as opposed to his exact uh, opposite counterpart sitting there, who's uh, Sevak. So we're going to light the dia. So request uh, Rekha to do the honors. and signify the opening of the markets today from our side. Unfortunately, we don't have a bell like NSE or a BSC. I wish all of us a profitable day. Let's get the show on the road. Two minutes to go for expiry. Let's get started. OK, thanks, DJ. And uh, welcome you all for the live commentary session. With that being said, uh, I welcome all the panelists and the speakers who are going to be there doing a live session with all of you. On behalf of everyone, a warm welcome. And most importantly, as a disclaimer, we as speakers and traders here, we will be sharing our views. Please, please take proper risk, like a risk to uh, whatever the risk allocation that you needed to be doing for your trading. Take care of it. We will not be providing any calls as such. We will be sharing our views. Please, please take proper care. And we will not be responsible for any of your profit or loss. With that being said, I welcome uh, Jagan and then Siju and, uh, sorry, Siju is here, Sharik and then Praful. So let's get that rolling. Currently, the market, I believe it has been gapping down with the banks Nifty almost 0.32% down with 42,399. But looking at yesterday's data, things seems to be like, and we can see a little bit of a pullback in the morning. Why do I say that? Uh, can you guys get the screen on bigger one, please? So I was looking at the 42,300 data. So if you look at the call, as I was explaining you about the golden crossover strategy and other things, I will, I will be keenly looking for where exactly the put riders and the call riders are. So today, if you look at it, the data, 
the call writers were clearly running away on 42,300 with almost uh, from 16 lakh it has come down to 6 lakhs. Whereas on the put side, we can clearly see there has been an increase of close to 50% in terms of the OI, sorry, the price falling 50% and the OI increasing by 30%, which is suggesting that we could be seeing whatever the gap down initially, we might see one round of a bounce. So my first uh, stick is going to be on the downside. If it is going to be there, you can expect one round of a pullback. For some reason, HDFC Bank ADR has been falling. It was only on three shots it has fallen. So the initial move, Yes, it is getting the bounce as we expected. So currently it is 110 points down on the Bank Nifty, 140. So you can look at it. The premiums have been the ones which has been crashing here. So for my opening trade, I'm just looking at 42,100. So I'm just quickly taking some few trades around there. It's an opening trade. So if you look at it, already we have taken around like a 300 quantities over there. So the level which I will be looking for the support is going to be somewhere around this particular VWAP level, the previous days. So already it is from almost, it, the fluctuation is too much there. Let me quickly look at this data. Is there any other inputs which anyone wanted to share on the opening trade? I'm just trying to pull up the early data, especially on the open and high. So if you look at it, I see most of the open and high is on the call side, so which will help me to be there on the call side today. Okay, so just a sec. Just one yes, more Suju yeah. has an update. Go ahead, Suju. Okay, so I just play for the trend usually. I, even though I am an intraday player, I usually uh, play for the major trend in the market. So since the major trend is uh, up, the market is taking higher highs almost every day. So I'll be like, I, I would be liking to play mostly on the long side. But right now the market is not ready for a bounce. It, it, it may fall further. But just to be in the trade, I did short some put option. I did uh, sell some 42,300 put option at uh, one means uh, 62 rupees. That is just to be in the trade. And uh, as and when the market gives me an opportunity to go long in the call, I'll, I'll go aggressive with a good quantity. But right now it is just to, just to stay myself in the market and just to control my urge to take a bigger trade prematurely. So my view is that eventually market will, uh, uh, will be coming back up and it can, it can give a good rally is my view currently, although it is weak right now. Absolutely, the market is little weak, but it is trying to look for a bounce, but currently the Bank Nifty is close to 80, 90 points down. So the first candle, the bulls are getting it. Okay, will they be able to take it? So we had an M2M getting it to close to 10K in the negative end. Look at the volatility there. The M2M is swinging wild. Okay, the 42,100, the one we are looking at as an uh, open and high at around 388. This is Jared got it hit. Okay, so it is still opening at 388. So probably what I can do is I can also place in target order here. So I've kept it at around like in 385 to 385, uh, 387 I'm just playing for the open and high in case if you guys are quickly coming for one round of an up move, hitting the open and high and then going back. It is absolutely in a flat territory after the initial candle. Though the initial candle had a volume of close to 70K, we are not seeing any follow up. So now the market is trying to move up higher, but will they be able to push it up higher with a fast pace? The price at which it is trading now is 364. 
get it to the open and high, hit all those strikes, and then move on. Three seventy two. We wanted a three eighty eight on that one. All they would require is just one candle to go hit it and come back. So the me reason for me to be looking slightly mildly bullish on the market today, it's purely on this data. So if you look at the EOD data yesterday, it was clearly suggesting me, sure, like, and these guys are just planning for something. Yes, please, Rijo. So I did uh, go along on some uh, all options too. I was actually planning to short put in uh, one more account because I trade in two different accounts. So I was actually planning to short in both the accounts, but I see the market starts bouncing. So I, I bought some call options. Okay, the open and high is it. As we discussed, oh, yeah. the open and high is it. I s bought so some, our uh, position got yeah. closed. 42,300 call option I bought for uh, 200 rupees uh, now. So currently I'm holding uh, call long and put short. All trades on long side. Okay, someone who has been looking for an open and high, we just did it. So almost 10K profit on that one. So currently where it is? It went, hit that open and high of 388. Now it is back at 377. Once it hits, I might not be chasing it. These are the scalper points. So as a scalper, we quickly look for 20, 30 points in an intraday, wherever there is a possibility. We just chase the momentum. When you look at the open and high tab here on the OI Pulse, we would have given you certain instructions. So if you go through the document, we will have a clear instruction how you needed to play the probability. Some of those will be showing you a 90 and 95% probability with a badge on the top. So what we have identified is, we have like an AI-driven engine in the backside. It goes, tracks the data from various angles, and then tells you exactly whether this has a probability or not. When it goes about 90%, it has a bigger probability. That's when we chase that one. So if you see most of these tabs now, almost everything has a 90% probability, right? When you refresh this, so the only strike which got hit is the one which we took the trade. So some of these guys still have not been done. So that's the reason I always look for at the money strikes or in the money strikes, which is between the range of 300 to 500 to go for the chase. So if you look at it, this is the only one which was convincing to me at 388. The other ones are like in above 500 or below 300. So I don't want to chase it at that time. But once the momentum picks up, then you might see that they do that. So currently, this is one strategy which I shared it in, uh, I think, Hyderabad Carnival. So now, it is almost hovering around the 380 mark. But now, since the opening trade is done, I will be looking for a breakout. Always remember, the opening trades are the most risky. If you are a trader who wanted to get in into the opening minute, try to enter and exit, you need to be real quick. So that's the reason the opening trade, I don't suggest most of the entries. The reason is some of them, they will be able to enter, but they will not know when to exit it. It is like Abhimanyu getting into the chapter here. So never do that. Be careful with the opening trades. But always wait for your setup. Now, if you look at it, our view on buy on dips in the morning, it has been playing out well. The pure, pure reason, if you are able to understand the expiry day analysis, just go and look at this expiry day analysis tab. What I have done is, I have just added 42,000 to 42,500. I just look at the data where the shots are covering their position. Once the shots are covering their position, they don't have anything, any interest on that particular direction to pull the market lower. So they have clearly exited all the position on 42,300. And they have been adding significant positions on the put side. And one more point, if you go and look at the individual option analysis yesterday, I'll just go you, show you the historical data of yesterday. Look at this particular data of 42,500 and on a 60 minute time frame. What has happened in the last one hour? That's the most crucial one I, which I look for. As a buyer, I shouldn't be showing my weakness to the sellers. If I'm showing my weakness, then these guys will be pounding on me. So if you look at this, this particular one, the long unwinding around 2.30 to 3.30, that is the most crucial one. Almost 15 lakh position got wound up, and the price almost 26 rupees just came down, a big one. The most important element, if I know that the market is going to be going lower tomorrow, why would I exit my position as a put buyer? At the other side, you can clearly see the call buyers were also exiting it. That is purely the theta play which is going to be happening on the Wednesday afternoon. That's the reason as an option buyer, few Wednesdays between 2.30 and 
don't do anything. Just give it to the sellers. Let them enjoy it. And if you look at the premiums also, it was crashing close to like 120 to 150 rupees. Now, you can clearly see the market is getting into a consolidation phase. Always remember, when the market is trading between the VWAP and the super trend, that's called as a no trade zone for an option buyer. You can scalp when it reaches the support or the resistance, but don't try to make a large play during that phase. Just try to hold your positions. And now is the time for us to be start looking at the premium tab. This premium tab will let you know how much is the premium left for each of the strikes for the writers to make money. If you look at this, at the money strikes are having a call premium of 84 and put premium of 82 and 42,500 as a premium of 88 and 87. Imagine the market is going to be closing exactly to the same place where it is now. They will be able to enjoy this entire premium, which I don't want to give it to them. But considering an expiry play in the morning itself, these guys doesn't have much to write. If you ask any seller, they will not be happy with whatever the premium that they are seeing now. If they wanted to enter into a fresh position, that's not going to be a big risk reward for them. So a straddle player, if they know that there is not going to be a trending move, they will definitely enjoy it. Okay. So with that, the price is just hovering around the 300 to 390 odd levels. And let's look at the open and high, whether they have hit all the strikes. Almost 80 to 90% of them hit. As an option buyer, focus on the open and high. As an option seller, focus on the open and low. Open and low, I don't see much in the in the money and other money strikes. Open and high on the call side, most of them have hit. So in case if they have opened it lower, data supporting you, it is ideal time for you to chase that and the day would have been done for you now. Guys, any updates from anyone? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, can I get my screen here? Oops. Uh, Sharik, just before that one update, I'm just exiting the position because the market is not behaving the way I expected. Uh, the, the call long I exited, I'll show you the chart. So right after the gap filling, the market started coming down and the, the way it is coming down, the candles are forming like a, uh, it's not like a consolidation after a swift up, up move. It is like uh, the market is slowly grinding down. So I don't like uh, this kind of uh, the opposite to V shape pattern when I'm long in the market. So whatever position that I have taken, uh, whatever I had taken at uh, 200 rupees here, uh, that I exited at 208 or 209. So not an ideal uh, price to exit uh, for a for a trade if you are uh, trying to grab the move. But the move that I was expecting, that is not coming. That is the reason I exited. It is not a profit booking or uh, it is not a uh, exit of a trade. It is just to uh, exit the trade because the market is not behaving the way I expected. Otherwise, I don't exit the trade regardless of profit or loss. I don't look at the profit. I don't look at the losses. I, don't, I just uh, look at the market. If the market is uh, behaving the way I expect, I keep the position regardless of prof profit or loss. Right now, I exited that. So I'll wait for a, another setup, another another trade uh, to come in. And until then, I'll keep holding the put short. Thanks, Sharik. So, sorry. Sharik, you can carry on. Yeah, I'm still figuring out uh, how I can share my screen. Anybody? Can you help me? My screen. Anybody? Uh, anyways, good morning. How many option sellers in the house? Sellers. Good. Cool. Oh. What is the number, Sharik? Which screen is yours? Oh. Yeah, I think probably it'll come here. Can we get that screen, please? Yeah, so anyway, so even uh, when the market opened, initial few Greek candles, I started shorting puts alone. Uh, I sold 18, 250 and 200 puts. 200 puts, again, nothing there. I just shorted it for nearly three rupees. 18, 250, I shorted for six rupees. It's come down all the way to four rupees. And after the market shot up the first rally, I entered half of my quantities in 18,500 calls. And now I have 25 percentage capital left so that I can again enter calls when the market shoots up. So that, that was a discretionary entry, I would say. Again, given a non-directional iron condor seller, I have to enter calls and puts. So I started off entering only puts. So entry is where I use a bit of a discretion. I try to time the market when I'm entering, right? So when I saw it was shooting up, I only entered puts. 
and it spiked up. 18,500, I entered at 4.7 rupees. I think that's the high of the day. Yeah, if you check the premium chart, you can see the high of uh, 18,500 call is nearly 5 rupees. And, I and that came for only a few seconds. I showed it right then and there. So that's what I'm currently in 18200 put sell, 18250 put sell, 18500 call sell, and I have another 25 percentage of my capital free to enter if something goes wrong. And again, my calculation is always based on what target I need. So when I enter into a trading day on an expiry day, I try, I try and I target to make one percentage of my capital, and I think that's too easy to do. And the position I'm currently in, I'm on way to make one percentage already. So given it's an expiry day, I'll get one or two more adjustments, and probably I can even go above that. So that's my plan, lose one percentage or make one percentage and I hope things go well from here. That's my update. Okay, thanks Sharik. Jagan, you have any updates? Okay, can you bring the two screen, number two? Number two, please. Number two, please. And this is the reference account where I uh, run for 30 lakhs. Okay, so the, the profit is close to uh, 2,000 rupees. The system uh, starts selling uh, straddles uh, at periodic time and it will trial the profit as well as it will trial the uh, uh, portfolio level uh, also. So the system is running uh, mo uh, almost close to 100 CRs, but this is a reference account. And one more account, this is my own account, Kavikul, that I, um, you are able to see right now. So the profit is close to uh, 25,000. So that's what you are seeing. But if you look at this one, the market condition, right? So um, example, today, right? So the market started going up, right? So, uh, so most of my stall, all stop loss is hit and put stop loss is not hit. So that is the reason why we started, the system started buying the hedging. So you can see it here, the put is being bought here for three rupees, four rupees, right? So this is because we want to take a leverage. So I wanted to run more straddles in intraday, but still now we started buying only little of call options. Within half an hour, the margin will be full. I'll be full margin will be utilized within half an hour. Then I would be rotating the my margin periodically. So that's how I make a huge profit for expiry. So right now, uh, so how do I make a profit? It's a simple thing. So you can go to this, this is sensible applications where the delta is 85. So which means that if market goes up, I will make a huge profit. If market comes down, I will make a huge loss. So, so to me, uh, it is not one crore profit or two crore profit. To me, it is always what is good for me is the ROI. So if I'm running for under CR, if I'm getting 2%, 2 percent, two crores a big profit, no. It's a normal profit only. 2% loss also, it is a normal loss only. So I am addicted to ROI from the day one when I started in 2014 with the 3 lakhs. Good morning, guys. So um, I'm, I put up all my live trading videos on YouTube. So if you guys have observed my trading style, it's pretty simple. So I trade intraday non-directional and I try to stay as far away from the market as possible. But at the same time, I try to, you know, push the gears, like come to fourth gear or fifth gear whenever I see the opportunity presenting itself. So currently um, I'm sitting on the 18,450 calls. I'm short 18,450 calls and I'm short 18,300 puts. I mean, relatively, it's a risky strangle because the market, um, I have only 75 points towards the upside and 75 points towards the downside. But one good thing is that the market's relative volatility in relation to the implied is almost pretty much the same, right? If you look at the markets, the yesterday whole day, the straddle was pricing in somewhere around 120, 130 rupees at the open, and the market managed to remain in that 120, 130 point range. So this has given me the confidence over the last few weeks that, okay, the premiums are low, but at the same time, the realized wall of the market has also come down. So I currently have a premium of around 20 rupees, net credit of 20 rupees. And if I manage to collect this entire 20 by somehow, by doing delta adjustments, by collecting additional premium as, I, as the market tends to go towards the averaging period, probably I can target around 2%. 
but the idea is not to collect 2%. The idea is to capture 50% of the premiums that I'm sitting on. Currently, I have a net premium of 20. So even if I collect around 10 points from this, that makes around 1% of the capital. So if you look at this, the mark to market is somewhere around 30K on a 2CR, this thing. Can you, is my screen visible? No, right? Okay. I think we still have to figure it out. We, both our screens are not getting projected. Um, <coughs> that's about it. See, if you look at the markets, I think you, you guys have access to the charts. So a top has been made. Okay, the rejection has come from a 20 moving average as well as the CPR. That CPR say exact rejection a chuka hai. So till the market breaks that high, I'm okay with holding on to my calls. And once the market breaches that level, probably I'll take additional put side credit or I'll risk away from my calls depending upon how the premium volatility, I mean IVs are behaving. Let's say if the strangle, this 20 rupee strangle, if it gains in value, I'll consider it an IV spike and I'll consider it as an opportunity to take additional put side credit. But if the overall strangle loses in value with the delta movement, then it doesn't make sense for me to take additional risk on the put side because the puts have already crashed. So I can't take additional risk when the puts have already deflated. So at that point, I'll try to risk away my calls and try to manage the delta. So that would be the approach. So currently, uh, we are sitting at a mark to market of around 30K or something. You need to be a little louder. So okay. I have one update from my side. When the market was coming up uh, after a consolidation, when I saw this candle, these two candles and uh, about to be broken out, I bought some, I shorted some put option in uh, this account, and I also bought some call option. I shorted uh, 40 to 400 put option, 77 rupees, and I also bought 40 to 500 call option at 108. So these two trades are open right now uh, in this account, and here I have uh, still the morning trade is on, 40 to 300. So in this account, I keep the very uh, conservative trade because whenever I get a quick opportunity, this is very fast in uh, execution. So I can, until I start using Shiva's uh, uh, one click, I need to uh, depend on uh, this one for uh, taking the fast trades. Okay, so thanks, thanks Siju. And can you bring the uh, number one screen please? Okay, so talk about the data. Look at the data, like in buy on dips has been playing out pretty well. The market is slowly but steadily, like in uh, number one, number one please. Not the screen, the bottom left. Okay, so if you look at this chart now, slowly but steadily it is trying to break out, the Bank Nifty is trying to break out, and even the trending OI data is starting to be bullish, but I'm not extremely confident about this data at this juncture. If you look at the OI, it is almost 1.36 score on the call side and then 1.44, but it is starting to break the day at day's eye. So which is a very good sign, but I wanted a further confirmation. What is the further confirmation which I'm looking at? If you look at the option chain page, which has been giving you a clear clue that the riders are having an absolute gala time in the morning, writing the premiums on both call and the put. Both sides, the premiums have been crashing. I'll give it to you guys. Enjoy the premiums in the morning. And look at the IV here. Call side IV is around 10, and then the put side IV is around 15, 16. So which is clearly suggesting if there is going to be any kind of a move on the call side, these guys doesn't have any premiums to write and it is going to be absolutely a nightmare for them if they are writing on the call side. So as a buyer, I will be starting to focus on this and the IV on the put side is around like in 13. That means the buyers on the put side still having a hope that we are going to be getting some kind of a crash which can help me to gain the premium. So as a buyer, you need to be on the call side at this current juncture, not on the put side. So our morning view of buy on dips has been playing out at this current juncture pretty well. So let's see how the day is going to be progressing and then we will take a call. So I'm going to be looking for a two candle from here. So what is a two candle theory? You guys have been like looking at to see what is that. So after 10 o'clock, as I explained it to you, after 10 o'clock I'll be looking for two consecutive candles of more than 50K in Bank Nifty and 125K in the Nifty. As of now, Bank Nifty is pretty well poised, staying above all the parameters which I wanted it is below. When I say all the parameters, look at the PSR, the blue dots are the PSR, and then the super trend, and then the VWAP, and then the blue is the WMA. So all are below, which is giving me the confidence that, yes, the bulls are having in control. But what I wanted is, I needed to see the RSI staying above that 50. Currently, it is well and truly there. But I wanted this OI data, which you are seeing in the bottom. It should be keep moving higher, or it need to be dipping drastically so that the shorts will be covering their position. 
Either I want it in long buildup or a short covering. So I will be keenly focusing. I don't want a flat line. Flat line represents no participation, nothing, and that will be in perfect writer's market. On the futures, I don't want to see that. So let's see how it is going to be done. I'm just going to be looking for that elusive two candle. In case if the market is trying to break out, that's when it is going to be an opportunity for me to participate in a big manner. Is your mic on? Nope. Guys, can you have this mic check, please? Okay, in the meantime, just look at this tab of what I'm going to be showing is, is the premium tab. So as I told you, the IV on the call side is much lower. You can clearly see some of the in-the-money strikes are all in discount here, which is clearly suggesting the writers do not have anything much on the call side to be writing at this current juncture. So put side premiums are a little crazy, so be watchful. If you are trying to be writing it, very, very careful on the call side because all That's are in okay. discount at this current juncture. So look at this, 42,000. It is almost 10 rupee in discount. Wow. That too in the morning on an expiry day. You can expect some wild moves to be happening there. Can the bulls rock? For some reason, HDFC is not participating in today's rally. If you look at the HDFC chart, uh, so HDFC is the only one which has fallen close to 4.45%. And the other one is the Kotex. So it looks like both the retail banks have been like in falling and then the, uh, all the commercial or the corporate banks have been like in performing better. And the contribution, ICICI leading the pack with 60 points on this Bank Nifty move. And Axis is followed by that with 27. So this is the ba Bank Nifty contribution which we are looking at here. And the market is just trying to play around in the territory. Guys, unless and until there is a clear breakout as an option buyer, my job is to stay away completely. And we got almost all the open and high hit, except the 42,300, which is trading at 249. The open and high is at 262. We may get to see that getting hit once the market is making a move again. But considering the risk reward, I don't want to chase for 10, 12 rupees. At this current juncture, I will rather wait for the two candle theory breakout to be happening. And uh, yeah, the update that I wanted to uh, give you after every move, the market is trying to create a fear in the uh, in the chart because if you, if you look at the longer wick is getting created on the uh, uh, upside then uh, it is giving the bigger ticks so if you, if you look at here the ticks used to be very small for the past many days it used to be like uh, one to two points or two to three points where the movement used to happen but right now if you look at from uh, 28 it came to like 22 then 26 so 5 to 10 point is the each move. So that indicates to me that there is a high probability that uh, market can make wilder moves today. So when the ticks are uh, making bigger moves, ideally we I used to see a uh, little bigger move and uh, I am expecting that move on the upside for a couple of reasons. One, the trend is up and there is nothing that can trigger a trend change right now. And when there is a strong uh, dominant trend in one side, a bigger move on the other side usually doesn't come abruptly. Means uh, especially on the upside uh, when the tre trend is up. If the trend is on the downside, yeah, ab abrupt reversal can come and you can see all of a sudden market rallying hundreds of points, right? But when, when the market trend is up, without any major reason, uh, there is no reason for uh, market to come down big. And uh, uh, mark we are not in an overbought territory. Means I'm not looking at the RSI, I'm not looking at any, any other uh, momentum indicator to uh, determine whether it is uh, overbought or oversold. I, without even looking at those things, uh, how I read is, I look at the daily chart and when, when the momentum is high and when the market is making the higher highs uh, on a daily basis and uh, when, the, when the buying interest is there in the market, if you look at the last many days, you, we see most of the red candles. Red candles means the market is closing below opening. It can indicate some distribution, it can indicate some shorting, it can indicate some profit booking, but as long as the market keeps making the higher highs, the people who book the profit and waiting on the sidelines, they tend to come back 
and participate in the rally. So there are a lot of money lying in the sideline. So when the money lying in the sideline, it is very difficult for the market to fall. But if everybody is in the market, market can fall. And if you, if you look at uh, the larger perspective, for the last couple of months, if, if you look at uh, the FIAs, they, they have been buying in the cash market. I'm not looking at the derivative market for FIAs. I'm talking about the cash market. So cash market, they have been buying decent amount of uh, uh, stocks every single day. That means that much money is coming into the market. At the same time, DIS, domestic institutions, they are not booking the profit. They are just like staying flat. There is one more bright side to it. They have been getting good inflow over, I mean, every month uh, through SIPs. Those money they are not investing right now in the stock market. Mostly they'll be investing that into the debt market. So they have good reserves to support the market in case if there is a sell off or uh, uh, dip comes in the market, they, they have uh, enough cushion to support the market because last two months inflow they haven't invested in the market. So more than the money in the market, the money waiting in the sideline is higher. So whatever dip comes in uh, right now, I'm pretty much uh, expecting uh, that, to, that to come back and uh, on a daily basis, not just uh, uh, today or uh, the other day uh, or tomorrow or next day or something. Uh, usually the market is in an uptrend and which, which is likely to continue. Okay, thanks Suju. And we have an update from uh, Prafo. Um, can you pull up that top right screen? The top right one. The top right, which is in the black screen. No. Not this one. The dark The background. one which is in the black. Okay, it's, it's stuck. Why is it stuck? I don't think it's updated. Okay, in the meantime, let me give you a quick update. You're ready? I think so, just give me a couple of seconds. Okay, so I was just looking at the trading OI data to give you an update. So if you look at it, though the Bank Nifty is showing me the bullishness, but still it is not convincing to me that we would be able to take it pretty aggressively at this juncture. Let the writers enjoy the first half. We will give whatever that they needed it to take it, and then we will take it over. But looking at the Nifty as well, Bank Nifty is slightly bullish. Nifty is also getting into the bullish tab. But look at the, uh, like an OI data. Both the sites, it's 2.3 crores, which is absolutely telling me it is a writer's paradise at this current juncture. There is nothing much as an option buyer, you will be able to fight with them. So you needed to see a break breakout or a breakdown happening before you get into the mode. So as of now, all the indicators which is suggesting to you, including the options uh, statistics, OI statistics, look at this data. This is the overall cumulative OI data. And what is the change in OI suggesting me? They have been adding more positions on the put side compared to the call side, especially on 42,400 and 42,500. So I would love to see more and more positions getting created on 42,500, which is going to be giving me the confidence that the base will be set at 42,500 and then the market can move further higher and higher. So this is something which I'll be keenly watching for, which is going to be critical. So they are now coming near to the support level, which is the VWAP. And they're just trying to take a small pause over there. Will they be able to make a move? Or it is going to be an uh, expiry, a boring one? Always the boring expiry is what the sellers will be keenly looking for, right? You guys just want it, don't want any major moves. Just keep it at a particular place. <laughs> we will keep on writing it. We will keep on adding <laughs> the position. Exactly. <laughs> Jagan is laughing and I can clearly see that he's enjoying this expiry. Yeah, expiry is the only day uh, sellers are having uh, more edges. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's okay. gone. The screen is gone. Okay. Oh, so, so coming to this point, right, so, um, hello? Yeah. You want to? I'm sorry, I had to snatch it from Jagan. So um, if you look at it, um, all my calls are at 18,450 and all my puts are at 18,300. So one thing to notice is the premium behavior. When the market comes down, my mark to market is increasing. And when the market goes up, the mark to market is decreasing. What does it tell about the direction of volatility expansion? 
the options there is a lot of fear on the call writers so that there is additional demand from the call side so if the market breaks the day high um, uh, this is static man okay whatever so um, if the market breaks the day high that has been formed there will be an expansion from the call side but at the same time since the day low has already been formed because the market's almost open near yesterday's low and from there it saw a demand that is why the put writers are much more confident and they i believe that they don't cover until a major support level is breached so even though my puts let's say at one point my calls were at 7 rupees or 6 and a half rupees and my puts were at almost 11 rupees the skew was almost 1 is to 2 the calls the puts were trading almost double my calls but still i didn't cover my position why because downside is not the direction of volatility expansion today usually kya bola jata hai agar market niche aata hai to puts mein zyada overreaction hota hai the puts both gain vega as well as delta but on expiry day vega ka thoda kafi matlab effect kam rehta hai and because of how the market has been positioned since morning i believe that the direction of volatility expansion is still on the upside and not on the downside that is why my calls currently are trading at around 7 bucks and puts are trading at 10 bucks and i don't intend to square off my puts until they reach around 13 14 after that probably i'll take them away to 18 to 50 okay so can you switch on my this one yes so you could see that actually uh, this is i'm running for 4.85 cr in kavikul account that you can check it here it is sitting with a profit of 1 lakh okay so what it does uh, the simple thing is the whatever the straddles i'm running right now let me show here here okay, so so here uh, my i started selling a straddles and most of the call it's hit i am directional like uh, 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 like shiv kumar jay chandran so i am waiting for the market to go up then only i'm going to make a huge profit but but the, my system will look for two scenarios number one scenario the time based rolling okay so if the market is not making any move uh, around 12 o'clock then it is going to roll okay and by any chance the market went up and the put premium has come down to below 10 rupees during that time also it will square up the position and it will reuse the margin so these are the two scenarios which will, uh, which will trigger my system so my system will look for the updates here you can check it right now most of my call stop loss is hit and put is not hit so so that is the reason why I am having a directional view. You can check the um, can check the delta as well. So the delta is also 116, which means that if market goes up, I will make a profit. Then you may have a question, what if, if a market comes down? That, for that I answered, if market is trying to come out actually, my system will trial. By the time if I am getting a nice profit, it will exit the trade. So, uh, my system will use the margin four or five times in a day for expiry day. So, so right now I'm sitting with a profit of close to one lakh. So more than one lakh for 4.85 CR. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jagan and uh, Sharik. You have any updates? Yeah, I mean we cannot sh share our screens from here, so that's sad. <laughs> Yeah, so I have deployed under 2 CR today and I'm already sitting on top of 80,000 uh, profits, so nearing 0.5 percentage profits already, or 0.4 percentage profits. Uh, so I'm on my way to reach 1 percentage profits on the deployed capital. I still have 25 percentage capital, which is not deployed, which I'm waiting for a, an opportunity, right? So as I said, I have an 18, 200 put sell, 18,250 put sell, and 18,500 call sell. Now if the high is being broken, and if 18,550 is spiking even to... 2 rupees plus, I'll be selling that and I'll be having a decent 1 percentage profit day. Now, if the day low is broken from here in Nifty, then I'll be selling 18,450 call with the remaining 25 percentage capital, then I probably would have a 1.5 percentage profit day. So, how I think when I am in traders all based on where I can get and I take positions based on that, right? So, it's always about the target. You have to be absolutely clear about where you have to reach and what will make you happy. So as I said, anyway, between 0.8 percentage to 1 percentage on an expiry day is decent for me. 1.5 percentage is a good day. 2 percentage is amazing, right? So let's see. Uh, and again, you, you, you never say on an expiry day, uh, your actual ROI, you can only know at 3.30. I always say this, right? Anything can happen. Maybe I, I'm, I'm in a very safe position now. Maybe market moves in such a way. I get a lot of adjustments. I end up having 3 percentage profit in a day. You never know, right? I, I, I might be a 2 percentage profit at 
2 p.m. and I can be in low. So uh, all you can do is plan for the moment on an expiry day and by 3.30 you'll, what you'll get is what you'll get. And that's exactly why I choose to be super safe on expiry days. I mean, given I see Profil is also doing the same, but I would say being on a cell uh, portion 75 points away from the spot at what, 10 a.m. in the morning, I think that's too risky to begin with. So yeah, I, I prefer to say 100, 150 points away from the spot to begin on a day and towards the end I might end up reaching uh, 50 points, even 50 points near to the spot. Let's see so how it looks, goes. Looks like Sharik has done his day now. By morning itself, 4% four, four and looks like the entire seller gang is like unhappy there. Point for point. So if you look at it, um, Sharik had sold uh, much cheaper options compared to mine. But he has also made around 0.4% and even I'm looking at a 0.4, returns at this current point. So Sharik said that my positions are risky. But what the edge for, edge for myself, okay, personally, that comes from me able to exit my loss making positions very quickly. I don't hold on to the positions. For example, this 18,450 call which is trading at 950, now if it starts trading in double digits, I don't hesitate to cut it and re-enter if again a top is formed. See, as we are speaking, a stop loss is hit. So what I do is whatever the quantity the stop loss are getting hit, I'm entering the next strike, 18,500. And there is no shame in accepting that, okay, your stop loss is hit. Because all we are here, I would call like usually the strangle sellers, no? They're, we are like scavengers. Don't be, I mean, I'm not saying it in a derog derogatory sense or with any neg negative connotation attached to it, but that's what we are doing. We are trying to just capture theta. And when you are here to capture theta, you have to, of course, you have to con compromise on your delta biases. So that's what I did. When the market's day high was formed, look at that, the day high, high was formed and the day high got taken out. And my calls are bleeding now. But at the same time, my mark to market is exactly the same. I'm still looking at 0.45%. And when I've got out of my calls at 10.5, I'll get out of my calls at 11, at, I'll get out of my calls at 12, and I'll make sure that the premiums are balanced at all times. Right? But when the same thing happened on the put side, when the calls were trading at 6 and puts were trading at 11, I didn't square off my puts because that was the sense of my volatility direction. Where was the, in which direction the volatility was expanding? It's on the call side. So I should be more careful about the call side expansion than the put side expansion. So that's why I'm very careful about the calls and I've already cut out half of my call positions when they've reached, when they started trading in the double digits. So if again a red candle forms and if the market starts coming down, I don't hesitate to come back on those calls again. So it's not exactly like non-directional trading and sitting on your positions all day hoping for the markets to mean revert, but it's pretty much like non-directional scalping with some insight into the volatility play. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I have a point here. Hello again. Um, Sharik mentioned just now, am I audible at the back? Show of hands, please, at the back. Thank you. So, Sharik mentioned just now that option sellers invariably need to wait till 3.30 p.m. on expiry day. Now, I would like to tell you that traders at Traders Carnival like to challenge, challenge each other on ideas, execution, and results. So, there's one example here, uh, which I would like to showcase for the next five minutes only. Abhishek, can you please join us? Think, uh, so, Abhishek is also an option seller. He calls himself a hybrid option seller, as in both intraday as well as positional. So he said he has completed his trade for the day, being a being an option seller. Over to Abhishek. Okay, so uh, as I, so, there are two myths I want to clear out here. I do believe that uh, trading has to be considered as a serious business. You need to have a laptop and everything. Now, because I'm traveling, I usually don't carry laptop. That's a strange thing. So on the cell phone, DJ, can you just see the fluctuations are going on? What is the M2M I'm sitting with? That's going live because I have small positions now. Okay. So it says 24 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, my glasses are defective. Okay. Okay, it's 3,32,565. So, yes, 3,32,565. Now it is 985 and we are right now at 958. The reason why I've kept like small 400 uh, sold uh, calls is so that people may not say that it is a mopped one or something. And if you want, I can just refresh and uh, just for confirmation, if someone else wants to want to see, I, 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 I can actually show this thing. So this uh, will be vetted by uh, the people on Sharik, Sharik, Sharik. So Sharik, just, just for this thing, no counter over here. 
I'll also explain what exactly I did. So uh, these positions are going on, and that's the 3.32, and I'll just clo close this thing. I'll tell my logic also. So what Sharik said is completely fine, that yes, mostly the sellers have to wait till the last end, but what uh, causes a bit of fear for me in terms of the current market scenario is the lower side of the uh, IVs as well as the premiums which we are getting on either side. So if I'm going non-directional, suddenly if I get a spike on either side, that can cause a trouble. So what I had done is, to be very honest, I had some positional uh, bets also. So the positionals had already given me 2 lakh and then since I'm a hybrid person, I did a bit of scalp in the morning and I added another 1.33. So two things. First, irrespective of whatever style you do, you can even end up your trading just like Siva in five minutes also, or like Sharik also by the end of the day. At the end, what matters is if you are making money. And just for record, the percentage ROI on the capital deployed is close to 5.8, which I don't think is bad. So you have seen, or you're going to see today by 3.30, you're going to see the results of both the option buyers and the option sellers. You'll get a fair idea of both. And pre people have been doing those interchangeably as well. Like option buyers have been option sellers and vice versa as well. So whole of today we're going to be seeing about Nifty and mostly the bank Nifty. Tomorrow you'll see a new angle to it. And that new angle is going to be something like passive income. Passive income is where you can do things totally unattended. People do things with their laptop. People do things with their mobile. And there are people who do things with a microphone. So you take a call. Basically, I would suggest I, or I like to think that at Traders Carnival, we generate the best ideas ever for the markets. Because of just one fact, we probably invite the best traders in India and abroad. We've been doing that for the last 10 years. And happily, it's worked out for most of us. Of course, there might be exceptions, but there remain exceptions. But my suggestion to you is to keep an open, eye, open mind and be very, very receptive, internalize everything, ask questions, that's very important. So when we talk about asking questions, we would like to open up the floor. Every one hour, there's going to be a five minute uh, question, a Q&A session. We will, we're going to put up a mic on the side. Whoever wants to ask a question at every hour on the hour, starting from 10.30 a.m., which is about 25 minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, you can ask questions. We have kept it for a five minute interval only because we do not want the flow to be un, uh, interrupted, number one. And number two, so that people are able to focus on their trades and give you the best possible ideas as possible. Thank you. Thanks, DJ. And uh, guys, can you get, get the number one screen on, please? Guys, if you look at this, the open and high which I was referring to, it has all been hit now. So the only strike which I was telling you it's to be hit so far it is, is the one yeah, which yeah, yeah. is 42,300, huh, which was trading at 230 odd levels. Now it is trading at 262. So that has also been done. And look at this. What the time it has been done is around 950. So clearly the market wanted to move higher, but they just hit the target and then came out. So which has been in, uh, can you guys get the number one? One, one screen. One on the bigger one, please. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. Number one, number one, please. No, the other one. I think you guys are like in roaming around everywhere, not now, now to number one. The screen. This is number one, label it. This is number two. <laughs> Probably I think uh, Shiva, <laughs> meanwhile I can give the update. Yes. So the Nifty actually broke the day high, did not sustain, immediately got sold off and uh, it, it looks like a weakness to me. Uh, even the bank Nifty is also coming down. It, it came yes. to like uh, 40 to 400. And uh, um, uh, if, if, you, if you look at, I actually wanted to share another thing. That's why I was waiting for uh, the, uh, the screen to be shared for me. Oh, it, now it's Okay, shared. they have changed it again. Yeah, after okay. that I'll share. After so that thanks, I'll share. thanks, Shiju. Guys, look at this particular one. 
the open and high is like and something which is an interesting theory which I invented. So if you look at this particular tab, they ensure that they just go hit that number by a rupee and then they are coming back. Did you see that Bank Nifty just went? They just wanted to ensure that what are the positions which we create in the morning? We will go hit that number no matter whatever the time and then we will be coming back. So if you go and chase it now, you will be in a trouble. So as an option buyer, you need to know when to chase it, when not to chase it. So if you look at the price on that one, I believe it is currently trading at 229. If you would have been little late in entering that particular strike, you would have got stuck. The beauty about chasing the open and high is you needed to go with the momentum, get that done. How much rupees it was done? 262, 263. They just filled that order at around 959. Now it has come down to 229. That's the reason I keep saying, when you're chasing an open and high, don't set your targets higher than the open and high price. Just place it five or 10 rupees below. If it is going to be like, an, if you're chasing from 300 to 380, if you're chasing at 330, place your uh, like in star targets at 375, let it hit, even for 388, I kept it at 385, it got hit, went to 400, came back. Here again, the same scenario. Someone who's chasing from 230, 240, Keep your target at 258, 260. Once it got hit, you just needed to come out. Never ever be in the trade unless and until there is a momentum happening on that particular strike. So currently the sellers are absolutely keeping the market under control. So whenever you see the market playing near the VWAP, it is just a writer's market, which is not going to be an ideal one for the buyers. I'll be happy to stay light. Till the time these guys give me a clear sign that either we wanted to take it higher or either we wanted to take it lower. Till that moment, let them enjoy the premium. You guys keep continuing to do that, whatever that you wanted to do it, and then we will come back later. Okay, guys, as an option buyer, that is the most important rule. Never get tempted, okay? When they know that this is the moment wherein I can keep on adding more position, let them do it. Let them add more positions to the market. Then as an option buyer, when they are starting to cover, that panic is more important to me. I needed to see the panic which is going to be getting created later in case if the sellers are covering in one particular direction. Why I say that? If you look at the data on the trending OI, there will be always be like in two sets of people. One will be riding on the call side, one will be riding on the put side, unless and until they have an agreement, it is going to be an, uh, okay, should I fool them or not? If you look at the data, 1.98 to 1.83, which is even Stevens for me. At this current juncture, it's an even Stevens. I'm not getting the conviction to chase on one particular direction. Even if you look at the data, it was bearish, then it became bullish, then again slowly it is becoming bearish. I wanted to see a big difference, at least 40 to 50% in terms of the OI. So if you look at the graph, I'll just show you in the graph view. Just click on this, you'll be able to see the graph view. If you look at this, they both are traveling together, which is not a good sign. I wanted one guy to be like a vertically scaling up. Okay, either it can be a call, it can be a put. I wanted one guy to be vertically scaling up, which will be the area wherein the sellers are going to be concentrating. At this juncture, the call OI is slowly but steadily is going up. Let's see whether they have the potential to move it up higher and higher. If you look at the Nifty, you can see the put OI is higher compared to the call OI. The data is also suggesting, see what slowly Nifty is getting into bullish territory. Can you see the difference in Nifty? 1.59, 1.84, 2.3, 2.3, 2.29, And the call side, the OI is just stabilized there, 2.3 to 2.4. But on the put side, slowly but steadily, they'll keep on increasing. But this is not convincing to me as long as the Bank Nifty also participates into that. Because Bank Nifty is the biggest index heavyweight in the Nifty 50. I wanted these guys to add more, and then the percentage which you see the direction change, I wanted to keep seeing every hour, it, at least every 15 minutes by increasing by 50 to 100%, which will give me a conviction that Nifty is slowly getting into the bullish territory and the Bank Nifty can follow suit. As far as the chart goes, even Stevens at the VWAP. So in the meantime, if you have any questions to any of the panelists here, feel free to ask as DJ pointed out. We will be happy to explain the logic as well in case if you have any queries. So anyone asking your query, please ask on the mic so that we'll be able to hear you better. Okay, 
you can share my screen. Screen number. Okay, two. number two, please. You know something to note about what Shiva said, Not right? Like one. he's using Not our peer for his entry, but oh. as an option seller, you should be exiting before he tries to capitalize. So, for example, I got out of the 14, 18, 450 calls somewhere around 12 bucks. I got out of them because after 13 or 14, once the calls start to breach their respective day high, people like Shiva will kill us. So that's why we need to escape before Shiva gets a chance to attack us. So I got them, I got off of them. And after that, when the, again, the market started to make that red candle, I again got back in. Because at this point, the ad updated high is 18,417. But before the updated high was 18,400. Now, the sellers, the call writers will be confident till the new high, which is 18,416 is not taken out. We won't see a gamma on calls. Now I can hold on to those calls with much more confidence. So two day highs I'll be observing. One is the spot high and the another high is the high that has been made by the option. So everyone thinks the same. All humans think the same. So if I am trying to exit at the breach of day high, Shiva will be looking for momentum above day high. So if you are an option seller and if you are playing close to the money and if you are trading with bigger size, it's better that you exit much before the gamma starts. The markets will give you plenty of opportunities for re-entry. I again re-entered. I got out of 18,450 calls and I am again back on 18,450 calls. I got out at 12 or something, I got back in at 11. And I'm not trading with just like 100, 200, 300 quantity. I'm total in, in total, I'm trading with around 25,000 Nifty shares. And even with such kind of like decent sized volumes also, markets will give you ample time to both exit as well as re-enter. But the only place where we get stuck, option sellers, is hoping that, okay, this might be just a gamma and it will come back. But that gamma will actually convert into an actual delta move. You can see that happening after 3 o'clock. Correct? 2 rupees ka option 6 jata hai. Aapko lagta hai ki, aray 6 na, wapas aayega. Dekhte, dekhte, wo 6, 30 pound jayega. Yes or no? So, don't, I, I see, personally, I don't get into the game of speculating whether this is a gamma move which will cool off or which will actually convert and materialize into a delta move. I get out before my, wherever my risk parameters is. For example, this call is again trading at 9. I've gotten, I've got back on calls at 11. So probably I'll get out at around, again 12. And again, this, another thing like the uh, understanding of the direction of volatility expansion, it helps a lot. Because even if the market comes down, and even if your put premiums are higher than your call premiums, they're not expanding. Because if you look at the price action, it clearly says bullish or at least sideways to bullish. Because though bottom form ho chuke hai, okay, and the market opened at the yesterday's low and it has seen some amount of demand. So using all these confluence, you can make a guesstimate. Okay, we are not saying that uh, I'm, I'll be right 100% of the time. I go wrong at least four to five percent, five times every single expiry. Every single expiry, I go wrong and I take at least four to five stop losses on different strikes at different times. But what is helping me is my ability to again be fluidic with my view. Come back on those strikes. Because in the end, as I said, up delta ke liye jitna bhi stop loss lene wale hai, understand that if you collect 10 points on Nifty, just 10 points on Nifty, it equates to 1%. So what do you want? Call se 5 rupai, put se 5 rupai. So usually speaking, jo, um, straddle premium ko we consider it as an indicator of what is the expected volatility, expected range kitna ho sakta hai. So if a straddle is trading at 80 rupees, we expect that the market us taraf 80 points or this taraf niche taraf 80 points move ho sakta hai. But you will get that 5 rupee call and 5 rupee put at 150 or 150 points away. So it will be much safer from the call said, I mean much safer from the realized, expected realized volatility. But at the same time you will still be able to make 1%. But whenever that move comes, you should be the first ones to get out. I think the edge lies there for an option seller. Thanks, Praful. And uh, Siju, you have any number update? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I have some update. Yeah. Okay. Number two, right. please. So now you can check, actually, it is um, sitting with a profit of 2.5 lakhs. So that we will come to know only by 3.30. It is running in Kavikula account. So the capital is close to 4.85. The same thing is uh, replicated in multiple accounts uh, through the keys, more than 100 CRs. Right. So now, coming to here, so what it does, okay. So okay, you can check here, market went up. So uh, my system took a directional, uh, uh, directional uh, trade. So I was setting a good profit. When market is coming down, 
right? So if it market comes down this level, day low, right? So it automatically converts into delta neutral because the market has coming to the neutral. If market goes again, it will continue the profit. It will wait for some more time. So, so as I said, actually 12 o'clock or the premium comes down, whichever comes first, it is going to take action. So one more update. Yesterday, I did not do the positional trade. So people had been asking, so why you don't do the positional trade? Because at the money was less than 1% of the Nifty, bank Nifty value. What is the bank Nifty value? It is 42,500 42, rupees. So 1% of 42,500 is a 425. So not even 1% for the overnight, which I don't want to take a risk. That is the reason why I did not take any positional trade for yesterday. And true and expiry date, there's a gamma effect is there. What is gamma effect? So you'll be getting a huge profit or huge loss. So it can, huge profit can be converted into the huge loss or huge loss can be converted into huge profit. So to avoid this gamma, right? So you have to do the gamma scalping. So I don't know the theory of the gamma scalping. So meaning of the gamma scalping is actually go in, come out, go in, come out. So gamma is the place where you get a maximum profit if you are a directional player, okay? So you make a profit. So gamma will kill you if you are staying for pretty long time. But if you're going out and coming in, going out or coming in, it is going to hurt you only the limited amount of position size. So with the less position size, you go in, go out, because where there is a gamma, the decay is much, much higher. You get a very nice uh, data decay. So many people are not in when there is a gamma. But I always love to play the uh, my trading in a gamma because I get a super duper profit only in a gamma period. But the thing is, you should go out and you should go, uh, go in. So you should not stay for pretty long time. So that is the uh, that is the main thing in expiry trade. So here you can check it right now. So my profit is increasing. My profit is increasing, is, is coming close to 0.75% because the market is going directional. So it is going to take a two directions. If market is going up, actually it is going to enjoy the delta. And by that time, if the premium is coming down, see here premium is, the put premium is 63. If it comes to 10 rupees, it is going to square off and it is going to use the margin for the next trade. If it is not coming, then actually it will square off call and put together which is an equal premium, then it is going to reuse the margin with a different stop loss because the stop loss, what you're using in the morning, it cannot be used for the noon because the gamma in the morning is different, the gamma in the noon is different, the gamma at 2.30 is different, the gamma at 3 o'clock is different. So we have different, different system for different, different, this thing. And you can check here, we started buying these options. People don't buy this option, they look for what is the interest you are paying for this one, okay? So, if you don't do this one, take a leverage, take an interest, then people say that actually you don't, you will, you will get, you will save 20% per annum. But which I don't agree because when you buy this options, you get three times volume. If you are selling naked one, you can do only one lot. I think the margin is comes to close to 1.6. Okay, but if you are buying this option, especially in low volatility, the beauty is you are going to buy very close to the spot. With the higher volatility, you need to buy 2,000, 2,000, 2,500 away. So I always buy option close to three to four rupees, which is always very, very close to the spot, which I love in a low volatility, because in low volatility, I can do multiple lots, okay? So that way, actually, if market is suddenly moving up, this hedging will be in a profit, I will exit, because call stop loss will be hit. If market is coming down, the put stop loss will be hit, this, whatever, the one actually I will exit. So in reality, the, if market is going in a big way in one side, the hedging cost is not, not, so, not so high, and you are going to get three times of your profit. So if you are getting one lakh profit with the naked one, with the hedging one, you are going to get a profit of three lakhs. So you can spend even 50,000 as a hedging cost, so it is going to be two and a half lakhs as a profit, rather than having one lakh. And moreover, one more advantage you are going to get is, buy any chance if there is a black span event. Okay, so by another half an hour, I'll, I will have more quantities. Say for example, for every 10 cell options, I will have 12 or 13 or 14. If there's a black span event, you are not going to make a huge loss in intraday. There will be a loss, sometimes if it is a 20% uh, uh, crack in the live market, then you are going to make a profit as well. So that is the main point of having a hedging. Okay, thanks. Yeah, we have something very special from the audience, which just came into my WhatsApp. Yeah, I'm just looking at the person who sent it to me on WhatsApp. And again, the point is something very special has happened in the market. If you look at the option chain, you can see that at 18,350 put, this 2,7803 contracts, which is one CR plus volume, right? So at a 50, 
point strike, right? An odd strike, like a 50 point strike. I think it's the very first time we have one CR plus volume. Yep, amazing. So, I mean, as we can see, volumes are just increasing in the market and this is nifty for you. And just like that, e even if you look at Fin Nifty, over the last one, two months, uh, thanks to a lot of great players on uh, Fin Twit, yeah, we could see volumes going up in uh, Twitter, uh, uh, sorry, in, in Fin Nifty expiry as well. So things are changing. But again, my point being, this point was sent to me on WhatsApp. This is not something I found, right? From someone in the audience. So uh, we really want the audience also to take part in what's happening, right? So uh, I do live trading every Thursday on YouTube. Like some 1,500, 2,000 people watch. Uh, I sell options every Thursday, every expiry live on YouTube. So there, how I keep things interesting is not that I speak a lot. Or the audience actually in the live chat, they ask me questions, they talk between themselves. Uh, so now, if you don't talk a lot, what would happen ideally is, we would all start speaking for the sake of speaking. And it is not really nice. Even you know that, right? We'll start finding points and just uh, dragging things. So we really don't want that. So it would be very better if we, you also uh, join, not necessarily to ask questions, but to share your views, share your positions, what your rationale was when you entered a position, what, when you modified a position. So we could keep it really conversational, interactive, and I believe that's the best interactive live trading experience we could have. Looking forward. Okay, Shiva, I will give an update. So this is my chart uh, on, on the top of it. Morning market was consolidating in this range between uh, 40 to 450 and uh, 40 to 500. Then it broke out, again came back to that uh, range, again broke out, again came back to that range. Now again consolidating in, uh, in the, the, the same area. If you look at the Nifty, it, it also does the same thing. So morning, wherever the congestion or uh, consolidation, market has come back to that uh, range once again and now it is trying to uh, trying to inch up from there but it is not happening every green candle a uh, fight is coming from the bears every red candle bulls are fighting back so it's a very narrow range extremely narrow range in uh, nifty and bank nifty so let's see if market can break out and i just want to show you one more thing so these are the chart collections i keep on a day-to-day day -day basis if you look at here when did we last get a uh, strong trending move there is nothing recently Probably 2nd November, it was a downtrending move, approximately, no, not a big downtrending move. And on an expiry day, if you, if you lo uh, keep looking at 10th November, it was, it was uh, sideways down, then up. And 3rd November, it was just a uh, sudden move in the morning, then it is a consolidation. And 27th October, it is again sideways market. And 20th October, sideways market. 13th October, sideways market. And uh, 16th October, also sideways market. The last time we got a trending expiry was 29th September. So from 29th September onwards, every expiry, every Thursday, market has been feeding the non-directional traders. And it is high time to feed the directional traders. So let's see uh, what, what the market has the plan. Right now, uh, the morning we had huge negativity because uh, Dow was not that great yesterday and uh, Hong Kong Hong Kong, I'd, ideally we should not be watching Hong Kong. And most other markets were uh, trading in red. Now all recovered to like mild degree, at least to flat. So right now there is no much negativity other than the sell-off and uh, the, uh, the retracement that, is, that keeps happening in our market. And uh, even in Bank Nifty, the day low is protected, but every dip there is a buy coming in. So if this trend continues and if the market can stay sideways uh, until at least uh, 2 p.m. to 2, 2.15 p.m. in the last one hour, Ideally, we should see what happens, uh, what happened in last uh, couple of months. So that's what I'm, I'm expecting and I'm, I'm waiting for. So I'm not tra uh, taking any aggressive position. The only little aggression that I have uh, taken is in this account. Uh, I had a short in the 42,300 call option, uh, put option that I covered. Then I shorted some 42,500 put option. I shorted at 88 rupees. Now it is 118 rupees. It went up by 30, 30 rupees. So that still I'm keeping because uh, only if uh, I see that it is going out of hand and if it is uh, uh, going way uh, out of my hands, I will cover because uh, my option sell positions are extremely small quantities compared to uh, the, the size I trade. So I, I don't mind a uh, little bit uh, here and there because uh, these are the uh, stop gap arrangements or stop gap trades wherein I just keep the trade open until I get the 
proper trade in option buy on uh, the other one also i am just uh, the 42500 ce that's a small quantity only that uh, that also i am keeping and uh, the 42 400 pe short so both the trades i'm keeping i'm not doing anything i'm not adding i have uh, not exiting anything just waiting for the right time to come for uh, going an aggressive trade either side ideally i'm expecting on the upside but if at all uh, things doesn't look good and if i get an opportunity on the downside i, I won't mind going on the downside but at this point i am still expecting it on the, uh, the the trade to come on the upside thanks Shiva. Okay, Siju, just to add, uh, I think uh, Siju, like, and I may need to give you an uh, breaking news in terms of your expectations. Probably, like, and if you see this data now, can you guys get the number one on number one screen, please? Number one. Yes. No? The other one, please. Number one. Screen one. Okay, here you go. If you look at this data, the trending OI data, this is slowly starting to look bearish. If you look at this, it was around 1.8. When we looked at this data somewhere around 10 a.m., it was around 1.8, 1.87. It was even Stevens. Now, what they have started doing is they have started adding more positions on the call side compared to the put side. Someone who's keenly tracking the data, this is already giving you a clue. Guys, on the upside, we have some limitation, and you guys needed to like, and pass a lot of hurdles for you to move forward. So the data is starting to turn bearish on the bank nifty. Someone who's looking at it, be careful, it is not able to scale up, and you're clearly able to see a breakdown happening below this VWAP, and then the super trend. The only thing which I would be cleanly watching is, get me some volumes. And look at this data on 40 to 800 and 700. So you can clearly, there is a short buildup which has been spiking in the last 30, 40 minutes, another four more minutes left for this candle to get close. So you're getting to see the day low break, and the price has fallen from 14 to eight, and the short buildup is happening pretty much on. So 33 lakh open interest on the call side, only 8 lakh on the put side. This is on 40 to 800. 40 to 700, the same story, 51 lakhs on the call side, 13 lakhs. But they have been adding more and more positions on the short buildup on the call side at the current juncture. The most crucial one which I will be looking for is going to be on 40 to 500. This is a, like in a vital zone, okay? So the Bank Nifty is currently trading somewhere around 42,450. This is the nearby round strike. And this is where the maximum action will be happening. So if you look at it, the writers are saying, Shiva, you don't need to enter. We will be writing on both the sides at this current juncture. One set of writers will be like in giving a punch, get an exit, and that particular direction is where I'm going to be looking for. At this current juncture, the call OI is around 88 lakhs, put OI is around 75 lakhs. Watch out for this particular strike. Imagine the put OI drastically reducing from 75 to 60 to 50. As a buyer, I'll be keen to watch on the put side. As a seller, your focus will be on the call side. So let's watch for 40 to 500, and whether we are able to get a breakdown happening with the volume. But as long as they are going to be just playing around in this territory, you can clearly see the, like in the, uh, what to say, the band is coming lower and lower and closer and closer, and it is getting tight. You, you are putting in like in a rubber band, and you're tightening it like in so much, once it gives a breakout on either side, it'll be like in a drastic one. So just watch out for that. So that's going to be the key one. Let's see. Hello. Yeah. From my screen? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you switch the screen? Number? I think it is four. Number two, please. Number two. Three? Number three. No, it's not. Next one. Number four. Is this the one? Yes. Okay, number two. So you can check it here right now. The profit is increasing. So what happened right now? You can check right now. Let me explain a few things. So the delta is 185. The market, I mean, if it is, it is going to give a more profit if the market is going up. So that is the reason why. So you can why check this is two? for okay, why is showing two here? 30 lakhs. Actually, the profit is close to 12,000 uh, is the profit. Okay. So now, if you go to the positions and click, this is a reference account. Okay. And you can do the analysis here. This is mainly for actually uh, how much risk we're taking in that. See here actually it is a limited risk. 
so it is saying actually it's so a 7.5 lakhs is the maximum maximum loss if there is a 20 percent gap down so that's what i'm saying so over a period of time actually i will buy more options than what i sold right now so that is the point so right now it is 10 30 in another one and a half hours actually the market will take a decision whether we can close the positions we can shift it we can roll it everything will be taken uh, uh, quickly but if you look at the premium right now it is close to 140 rupees is the lo lowest premium so far right now we have so most likely right according to the history the market will not move a big move even it moves a big move it is not a big issue this options I, as time goes on i will go and buy the options very very closer to the spot so if there is a big move is coming actually it is not going to hurt me in fact if there is a big move is coming later point of time thousand rupees two thousand points two thousand points i'll be in a nice profit with this one so that's what the system is doing right now thank you thanks and jagan and uh, moving on guys if you look at the global data number one please okay so looking at the global data at this current juncture the hang seng has been falling close to 460 points which is 2.5 percent hang seng futures is trading at around 250 the Dow futures, which was like in the Dow, which closed flat territory yesterday, even now it is trading in the flat region. So clearly there is not much of help as a global queue, which is coming for us. And that is something which is going to be bothering the market. So someone wanted to take a breakout trade and other things, which is clearly not been the case. If you look at the futures on the Bank Nifty, it is clearly suggesting a short buildup has been happening from the morning. So the riders are having in control both on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. So clearly this market at this current juncture, it is pure, pure, pure writer's play. And if someone is really keen to take a trade, you needed to wait for a breakout. Without that, it's going to be a boring and dull market, especially for the buyers. As a seller, it is a calm, full expiry at this current juncture. Whatever the systems, whatever the algos which you're running, it is all going to be like in showing you a positive one. You needed to be planning for your holidays over the weekend. As an option buyer, wait it out. And looking, looking at this, the market movers, though the market, like and everybody would be thinking the day I and other things, but most of the stocks which I'm seeing is trying to get nine day low, four day low, one day low. So market has been continuously on a spree wherein it just wanted to move lower, especially the ones like India Mart, Nestle, Zyrus, ICICI, General Insurance, Tata Power. Tata Power is like in getting weaker and weaker with five, nine day low. The only one which I see it on the five day high is the BL. Bharat Electronics. Other than that, nothing much which is interesting to me, but LNT, after a while, that big heavyweight guy is like an almost at 2054 with a 2% move on the price with 5% increase on the OI, and it is also breaking out on the nine day high. Someone who's keen on the stock, if you're looking for a positional play, this is looking interesting. So, especially on a market today, it is trying to go near to the, like in, due to the RSA effect, it is trying to fall. Someone who's looking for and support trade, you can look at the VWAP and the super trend over here, somewhere around 2040 levels. If you're able to get an entry, that can give you a quick move. And look at the intraday chart as well. Okay, so if you look at it, RSI is pretty well poised and it is trying to break out. So yesterday night, a gentleman was asking me, can I look for a stock which can give me an, a reward? If I'm a scalper looking for an intraday one person, this is a perfect stock which you can look at LNT. Okay, so moving on, what's the market is doing? The range is getting closer and closer. Look at that. The PSR, which was having a huge gap, which could have been like in a positive rally, the bulls could have utilized it, which they didn't do it. And it is trying to say, Shiva, like in whatever the bulls trying to do it, we are not going to be giving them any opportunity. We are slowly but steadily adding more and more positions on the call side. And Nifty, sometime back we looked at the data, it was positive, right? Now can you see the difference? It was around 2.29 to 2.9, but now 2.91 to 3.11. They didn't add much on the put side, but they were adding almost 70 lakhs on the call side. What is it suggesting? Shiva, it is a day wherein we are just going to be enjoying the premiums, you don't come inside. As a seller, perfect, perfect day. You can't the script better than this. When you are having the riders controlling both the direction with the OI, it is a perfect day for them to eat the premiums. And if you go and look at the uh, option chain page as well, you will understand that. Just look at this option chain. This is on the Nifty. 
They just wanting to eat the premiums on both call and the put. Absolutely nothing in for the buyers. I would be like and slowly but steadily looking for an opportunity. Today, I'll be more of a player who wanted to see the bank nifty giving me a breakout rather than the nifty, especially on the downside, looking at the way the things are. So you can see the graph view as well. Can you see this? Slowly, the call over is catching up with the put over. This is on the nifty. This is on the bank nifty. I would love to see this put over, the graph drastically going lower, and then this one going vertically higher. So which will be giving me the confidence that, yes, slowly this market is going to be bearish. And look at this particular data. The sentiment is also clearly telling me as it is going below the zero mark, more and more it goes in the negative. It gives me the confidence that this market has a potential to keep falling more and more. And in terms of the premium, now in the morning we saw the discount on the call side. Now we can clearly see the call side premiums are higher compared to the put side premium, which is a good sign for the riders on the call side. Is the market falling? Looks like it. So if someone wanting to do like an early scalps, so someone who wanted to just do like in a small scalps on the downside, if you're looking for it, I'm just taking few positions here. So just wanted to like, and some of you wanted to see how the one click is going to be playing around and other things. So imagine I just took 200 quantities, which is having a, like in a 400 to 500 rupee. So if I wanted to capture the momentum in case if the market is moving pretty fast on the downside, I'll just go along with that. But as of now, no indicators have been giving me the clue that you needed to go faster on the lower end. I'm just ca trying to catch the momentum for a small scalp, nothing else. But an, as an option buyer, we needed to be waiting out a little longer. I'll just open up the chart as well. Okay, for the first time, the super trend from morning has been broken. Is it going to be falling further? And you can clearly see one, two, three. The PSR is also going to be going above. The positions which we took, it is already giving us like 600, 700 rupees, but it is not a convincing one to go aggressively at this juncture. I'm just looking for the volumes to be playing out. If you look at it, the volumes are slowly but steadily drying out. So morning, something which was the average of 41. Now if you look at the average, it has come down to almost 13K. This is absolutely ridiculous volume on an expiry day for the bank nifty. So we would require a lot of volumes to be coming in. Good thing is, they have broken all the indicators, getting slowly into the bearish territory, but I would love to see a bigger, bigger fall happening. So as a player, if you are a buyer, don't try to stick with one particular direction. You needed to be ready to play both based on the market move. If it is staying above the VWAP with all your parameters getting intact, I will go on the long side. If it is not, I'll be happy to change my direction and my view. That is the way you needed to play if you are an intraday player. Look for the data. The data will give you all the clues that is required. The 42,500, you can clearly see 56 to 91. This guy, I wanted it to come down from 75 to 50, 40, and 30 so that the writers will be running for cover here. So the one which we took out is already like in giving us enough 200, 300, 500, or 1,000 rupee profit. It is volatile, but let's see. Wait and watch. Nifty is heading towards the direction of the VWAP, and it is much trading below the VWAP level now. So both Nifty and the Bank Nifty slowly starting to look weaker. Will it be a day wherein the writers enjoy it and then give you a small premium as an option buyer? I will still take it. Absolutely no moves there. And the most important thing, if you see the RSI line, which I've drawn, it is the 40 to 50 mark, which I call it as a no trade zone for me as an option buyer. So if you are adding more positions here, this is not going to be rewarding to you. Let them break down. So you can clearly see these guys are like in the last 45 minutes, they have been playing between this range. I wanted the range to be broken, staying below the 40 mark if I wanted to be bearish. All other indicators are above now. You can clearly see the PSR also, also has gone above, which is telling me, Shiva, you get ready for a move. The only parameter which is missing is the volume. If someone is not pumping in the volume, if a big player is not coming in as a retailer, if we are going to be entering, it is going to be a trap for me. So I would love to see the volume picking up. Once the volume picks up, just go along with the big fish. That's exactly what we needed to be looking for now. 
Get ready to see that. Guys, data plays a crucial, crucial role. And on the option chain page, just go and look at the data in the last one hour. The overall data was bearish, but in the last one hour, they have started adding more positions on the call side. The calls have been falling 30, 40, 50%, whereas on the put side, they have started adding positions. As an option buyer, they're adding position at the lower level. Slowly, the prices are moving. And this is the last one hour action. But someone who's looking at an intraday, you'll be still feeling, sure, they are eating the premiums on both the sides. That is the catch. You needed to know where exactly they are adding the position and then go along with them. That's something which you are able to see it here. So you can look at the data last one hour, or if you feel that I wanted to see it for the last 30 minutes, you should be able to see the data. Or if you want it last four hours, look at that, the trend is completely different. So we are looking at the full day data here. So the positions which we had, it is currently showing as a, like an uh, okay, M2M of minus 1,000. So the Bank Nifty has still not been able to move it anywhere. So where exactly in case if this trade goes wrong, where exactly I would like to exit? Probably like an I will look at the uh, intermediate high, which is somewhere around 40, no, 42,599. Or if they're able to break day's high. I believe this is at around 3 o'clock. So this is our intraday high. What I will do is I'll just draw a line to you to show that where exactly I'll be looking for an exit in case if they're able to break this level with the volume. So the high on this one is 42,598.70. Let's see whether they have the potential to do that. Keeping a close tab on the OI, and especially the trending OI data, which is going to be very crucial because they have been continuously breaking the day low break on the OI, but they were not able to break on the price. I would love to see the day low break happening on the OI and also the price. It is going to be a combined combination wherein they can take the market lower. So yesterday we did learn about the golden crossover. Let's see whether the market has been going to be giving us a golden crossover. When I say the golden crossover, we would love to see the the blue line, which is the WMA, and then the super trend, both piercing the BWAP together. And with the volume. Clear, clear, no trade zone on the RSA fact. And the most important thing, on the OI, what are you witnessing? From morning, the OI has been drastically going down. And the market is trying to fall. Two things which is happening, one is the long unwinding, another one is the short, like in the covering. So if you go and look at the futures data, Mostly, it will be showing you a long unwinding with a little bit of short buildup and so on. Let's look at the futures. If you look at it on a smaller time frame, clearly they are adding more long unwinding compared to the short covering. So these are the two things which is going to be happening. They are just wanting to exit their position. And if I look at the EOD data, this is EOD Y analyzer for every day. Look at this. They've been having a dream run, right? So they have almost been having a dream run. If you look at this from 31st, They've been continuously moving it higher. And if you look at this data, almost when was the last time we had a massive uh, OI buildup on the call, like in a put side? Nothing. They didn't short it much. Today is the first moment wherein they're just showing you a small one, but it is not going to be a strong one. We needed a much bigger volume to scare the bulls away. OK, so as of now, they are not doing that. So clearly, this market is absolutely in a Flat terrain. You needed to give it to the writers. Look at that. Even if the market is falling, the put buyers who were buying it in the morning, they were all exiting their position. They are happy with whatever the minimal profits. So both on the call and the put side, you can clearly see every hour the price has been falling. As an option buyer, don't try to fight too much. There is no point in you going aggressive at this juncture. Yes, Sandoshji. <laughs> Surrender. Yeah, absolutely. Surrender to them. Let them enjoy the morning. Let them enjoy the morning. Look at this. These guys made money and exited the hall. <laughs> that shows that they are enjoying it. Huh? <laughs> okay. 
Let them do that. Let them do that. Okay, another move towards the VWAP. But it doesn't look convincing to me. As the day progresses, I wanted the volume to pick up. I think at least people who are there in the hall, you guys needed to push the volume higher, especially on the futures. <laughs> you are into short. <laughs> okay. So absolutely no volumes on the future. Even if there is a move, there is like in two candles getting created and then market making a move on the upside, unless and until there is a volume, do not even believe in that. Those are all going to be the fake candles just to eat the premiums and then bring the prices on the option side lower. This is like a move which is very controlled. It is going to be very difficult for you to make money. So currently our M2M is around uh, 3,000. So I'm just adding few positions here. And that exactly I'll be adding maximum position in case if the trade goes wrong. I will be trying to add more near to the exit area because in case if they have to take a resistance, that will be the area wherein they will take the resistance and come. And my loss will also be a little higher over there. That I'm ready to lose. But don't try to average too much over here. By the time it goes there, you will not be running out of your capital. And the most important thing, never try to deploy more than 20-25% of your capital in a single trade. Even if trade goes wrong, you will still be able to exit the position. You can look for the next trading opportunity. That's the most important thing. So they went near to the VWAP, taking a resistance. One more time. What a play on the RSI. What a play on the VWAP. Both have been just giving you a clear clue. Just stay light. Just stay light. So every recovery attempt is getting sold. Sorry? Every recovery attempt is getting sold. Absolutely. Every bounce is getting sold. So some from 3,000, our M2M on that particular one has now come into the green. And uh, looks like market is not going anywhere. So market is feeding the sellers. You guys needed to create some positions. And you guys create large positions. Come on, you guys are the sellers. I want you guys to short it. We are scalpers. We just will take some points and then go away. Yes. That's what, like, I'm just waiting for it. Like, this is all in one click. All I need is just one option. <laughs> we will do that. We will do that also. Once we make money, at least we will give it back something there. But let them give us money now. No, not at this juncture. We will be getting it done, hopefully next year. They wanted us to charge you guys, but we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, we will. Sorry, Santosh ji. <laughs> okay, so any major things which is happening at this current junction? Nothing much. So let's do a quick poll. How many of you are hardcore option sellers here? Option sellers. Okay. 50 to 60 percent. Option buyers? Great. Scalpers? Ah, I see a few hands here. Good, good, good. Welcome to my brotherhood. Okay, so the most important one. How many of you are in, like, an, okay, my trade is done for the day? Ah. There are a few who still wanted to enter and exit. So market keeps feeding the option sellers and making them very, very, very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. It is within a very narrow range and exact uh, the same morning consolidation range is going on. And uh, the longer the consolidation, the bigger the breakout, either side. I'm not saying it is upside or downside, but my trades and my view is that it, it should be on the upside. Doesn't mean that it should happen on the upside, but my take is on the upside. Because we are in a bull market and we are near all-time high for Nifty, and uh, we are at all-time high in Bank Nifty. So in a flat market, when we are trading in uh, near ATH and uh, when we are flat, I don't see any game for uh, shorting the market. I see every opportunity and every reason for uh, going long in the market. So let's see how long the market will make uh, uh, option sellers comfortable and uh, option buyers uh, uh, testing means I have both the position. I have option sell position. I have option buy Shishu, position. As you talk, the market is giving you a green one there. 
that so let's yeah. see whether they are going to be like and making a fool of the people who would have been okay. like and taking a short position Sh and then like and trying to get it higher Shiva, let's see Shiva, the biggest problem for me today is the the kind of candles that are coming in see the spike right after the spike there are there are like red candles and the same is happening everywhere see if you look at this 10:30 spike there is a good spike immediately red candle and right now at 10:48 uh, there is a spike immediately red candle is coming in uh, and nifty it is even worst nifty it is a, it is an extreme uh, pin bar top it was it was a sharp rally and sharp sell off i don't like the sharp retracement in a trending market the retracement has to be flat so you see a move and the retracement has to be around a flat range near the top then you can expect the next breakout has to be uh, will be on the upside so you can see that that pattern is happening on the daily chart but on intraday chart that is not coming in that that is what is worrying me other than that everything is uh, perfectly in line with my, my view so if you look at the bank nifty uh, see this went up sharply here then it was a flat retracement here for this much period then then it gave a breakout right so it went like this it was a sharp retracement so it lasted longer so that is how i re read the market or uh, read the chart so the only and only thing that i don't like about today's market is this uh, immediate red candle that are coming in after the uh, spike so that is the only thing i don't like about today's market rest everything i like the way the market is set up for the day so looking at this with the low volume you can clearly see the market just even with the 50 crore or 100 crore in the market today you will be able to create some volumes on this particular market if you wanted to create a large candle on the futures you should be able to do that that's exactly the market participants are doing it look at this absolutely nothing in there if you are able to buy some around like in 7k volume on the futures you will be able to create a candle so again the rsi is trying to peak its head above that 50 mark but looking at the conditions it is still not convincing no way i would love to be a bull bullish player on this market yes go ahead sir can you please share uh, my screen screen number 2 this particular screen is the mic working no is the mic working yes. yeah it, it is so you can share the screen number 2 please Ah, okay, so uh, right in the morning there was a good weakness in the global market, which triggered the gap down and uh, subsequent uh, weakness in our market. Now look at uh, the global market and see what happens. What is happening? This was nearly 550 points down in the morning, Hong Kong. That is just like 290 points now, and Wall Street was like uh, uh, red in the morning when we started trading. Now it is, it is not a big rally, at, but actually, but it is the weakness is fading away. And if you look at the Germany, it was in good red in the morning. When I woke up and when I checked the Germany, German futures, it was about, I think, 70, 80 points or even more than 100 points red, I think. It was 123 points or something, it was red. Now it is 17 points green. That weakness is getting faded away from across the board. Though that's a very good thing. And uh, although we, we are getting this consolidation and if the global weakness is fading, because that is the only thing which is pulling down our, our market, right? So if that is getting faded away, then uh, I am I have every reason to expect uh, for the for the recovery. I'm not saying any anything special on uh, USD INR or dollar index or uh, commodities, and uh, there is no negativity from anywhere. It's all like uh, uh, not even kind of thing. So all these are supporting my view. I'm just keeping my position intact, not going very aggressive now. But if there is a breakout comes in, I might go really aggressive. Thanks, Shiva. Thanks, thanks, Siju. And uh, screen one, please. So as Siju pointed out, yes, the Dow Futures is trying to make a move on the upside, but our market, absolutely, I just wanted to play near to the VWAP. One, screen one. That's the screen. Screen one, please. Yes. Okay, so it's absolutely over there. Nothing major moves. We are sitting on a loss of close to 7.4 on this particular trade. We have around 400 quantities on this one. We'll just try to hold. From a scalper now, it has become like in a small positional play because the market is absolutely not moving anywhere. The trending OI, 
Looks like both are going to be 2.59 to 1.86. This is on the Nifty. 3.13 to 3.08. Slowly, the Nifty has also turned its table around. So they were able to get towards the, um, like a negative territory. They were able to break the day low on the OI. I would love to see the price also falling. Then it might give us some confidence. Without that, it's going to be a writer's paradise. Strange reasons, HDFC and Kotec both have been falling. These are the two guys who needed to be supporting this rally if it is going to be going higher. Yeah, it is on a, a daily chart. For multi-year breakout, but let's see. Look at the volume there on the futures. <laughs> okay. First time on 40 to 500, you're getting to see some buying happening at the lower level. The price went to almost 63. Now it is trading at 73. Yeah. Is it a breakout or it is going to be a fake one? Yeah. Sure, done. Yes, go ahead, uh, Jagan. Yeah, can you switch to four? Okay, you can check it here. It is close to 5 lakhs profit out of 4.85. It is more than 1% profit so far. So uh, you can check it here. So let me go to the here and then get positions. And you can check <coughs> here the put option what I bought is higher than the put option what I sold. So that is how I take a margin benefit. Okay, so that is how you can run more things. And that is number one. And today is a very special day because most of the time the strike price uh, sold is 42,400 and 42,500. And sometimes a call stop loss is not hit, put stop loss is not hit. And it is very unfortunate that actually the, the time has not crossed 12 o'clock. At the same time, the premium is also not coming down. So the system, what it did actually, it exited the positions manually. Okay, so it is exited, actually it was looking for this one because it doesn't have a margin right now for the, the time it is going to execute some more saddles. So it's exited because it booked the profit of some of the entries. So now actually the system is running uh, some more things, okay? By 12 o'clock the system will exit some more things and then we'll enter again. Let's see how much profit I will get with the, such a low week. So the Ardhi money is close to 140 rupees only. Okay, so there is nothing wrong if you're booking a profit early because you're not going to get a super duper profit in another half an hour, okay? You may get another 10 rupees or 20 rupees. So there is no point in keeping your positions open, okay? So because I need margin deliberately. The system should cry for the margin from 10.30. That is how you should make a optimal profit and option selling. Perfect. Thanks, Jagan. And uh, looks like uh, Jagan is going to be treating us all tonight with the way the seller's leading the party. Okay, can you get number one, please? Okay, so things have been on the VWAP. I don't know how long they're going to be playing around the territory. They just wanted to create more and more volume. Are you guys done with the creation? How many openers you guys are planning to create? Please create and let us move. <laughs> All OSR and 42500 and 42400, nothing else. <laughs> So uh, how many of you are finding very strange to trade in this low VIX, low IV environment? I think sellers will be absolutely enjoying it. But as a buyer who would have come into the market since 2020, you all will be finding it very hard to understand why this bank nifty is something which was supposed to move like in 2%, 3%, nowadays hardly moving around. 50, 100 points, nothing beyond that. 200 points to the max. They just play around, hit both the stop losses, and then just keep moving. So today seems to be that kind of a day. Even if you're placing a small stop loss here and there, it might just come, hit that, and then move on. So again, from almost 7, 8K loss, it has coming down to 2, 2.5. Now again, another fall. But nothing suggests for me to even, look at this, that's what I told you. Even if you are having 50 crore, you should be able to create a large candle. That exactly that these guys are doing it. <laughs> So they're just playing with your premiums.
40 to 500, another 30. Perfect one for the writers on both the sides. Again, trying to break the day low now. It went up to 73. It would have teased the people who would have been thinking that it can be moving higher. And then they are just coming back lower level. Will they be able to push it faster with the volume? Again, the RSI getting into the no trade territory between 40 and 50. And our MTM from good red, again, it is back to green, but still it is not a convincing one. From almost 10K loss, it has come down to 1,000 rupee loss. Can you switch to four? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to spoil your view. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Number four, please. This not able to access here. Our man. So can you, four quarters, can you make it? Yeah. It that's shows better. number one here. <laughs> it shows number one here. Right. So you can check it here. In the morning, I said, when market goes up, actually, most of my call stop losses hit. If market is breaking this day low, then only it will convert into delta neutral. Right now, still, it is a directional. That is the reason why I'm getting a profit. If market from here, if it goes up, I'll make a huge profit. If market comes here, some of the profit I will, I will compromise. But still, I booked 25% of the profit so far because I did not have a margin. Market is going to be in a sideways for a pretty long time. So that's what the system does. And you can check it here, the sensible one. Okay. So go to the positions. This is for 30 lakhs account. You can check it is close to 31 rupees. So I always look at this one because I don't get any emotions. It is close to one person. If you're looking for one CR profit, two CR profit is going to disturb your mind. So this is the delta. Okay, 152 is a, it means that if market goes up, I'll make a profit. And you can also check the number of options I bought. So you can do analysis here, the payoff chart. Look at this. I have more sell than buy. So this is the beauty of the system. Okay. So let me open. Here. Look at this. The quantity I sold, the quantity I bought. So it is more than close to 1% uh, right now. So let's look for 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, it joins the margin. Let's look at the results at 12 o'clock. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can ask us. Because we are only talking, so you can ask any questions. So we are here to answer the, your question. OK, moving. Number one. Looks like, again, another fake fall. But I should be happy, because it has already turned from 10K loss into close to 2, 2.5 profit. But let's see whether they have the potential to go another 10K on this trade. So what I'm looking at is another round of unfall, probably with the volume, if they are able to push it lower. And just look for the day's low, OK? Just look for the day's low. If you are really looking for it, the bounce has happened from here, 42,471. But the bigger fall is 42,400. So if they're able to take these two levels out, then probably, yes, it might will be like a day wherein the sellers can dominate it especially on the future side. So the Dow futures currently trading somewhere around 42 points on the green and the VIX. You can clearly look at the VIX factor today. So VIX, something which went to 14 odd levels, currently it is trading somewhere around 15. But if you have like an opening tick, it went to a low of close to 13 and the high of around 16.3. But at this current juncture, the VIX is not moving anywhere. It is just playing a game. So currently, we are sitting on a profit of five. Can they make another move? So the trending OI didn't disappoint us. The trending OI clearly told me, Shiva, like they have been adding more position. Just hold it, hold it, hold it. You might get some move. So we are sitting on a profit of five, five, five. The only problem at this current juncture is we have not added the trailing stop loss, which we will be doing it. So once it is done, then I don't think I needed to be using the nest at all. So our team is on the job to get that done for me. So at this juncture, if I feel that, OK, Shiva, like, and you're getting some decent profit, why don't you trail it? Yeah, Nifty is heading towards a day's low. 
So it needed to break this level of 40, 18,400 and then further move lower. Bank Nifty has to do it, but you can see the volatility. With the low volume, they can easily create candles on both the sides. They can create the candles on both the sides. And the pure, pure factor is on the RSI. They don't want the RSI to go below that 40 mark. Can you see this? They are playing for the RSI. One, two, three. RSI is just playing around in that 40 mark. They don't want the bears to have a control today. Once that blows below, then yes, let's see the fun. They are trying to defend that mark, but how long? So most of the people would be expecting the market, since the market is almost at the lifetime highs, and Nifty is going to be doing it and other things. And you know when the majority wanted something, what these guys tend to do with. They are keeping it under pressure. So Nifty has clearly broken down. Number three. Let's look at the trading for you for the Nifty. Again, not much there, 318 to 302. At least on the bank nifty, we are getting some clues. At least 60, 80, 70, 80 uh, lakhs, lakhs is different. But here, not much. We would love to see another bar. So that bar is going on the upside. Give it a bit, few minutes back. Okay, so whose screen is that? Huh? Raful, yeah. please give an update. So, uh, if you look at this, the premiums have almost, they're almost dead. Uh, at almost 11 o'clock, the straddle is trading at somewhere around 18,350 straddle is trading around 50 bucks. <laughs> you guys have already eaten enough, so where do you expect the premiums to be then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm up by around half a percent, slightly more than half a percent, 53k here, 53k here and all that. But um, I expect that once this 18,300 put starts to trade in double digits, now this it's going to be a problem. Because when I said that... Um, at 9.30 or 9.45, hmm? when 18,300 put went about 10, 11, even I held up till 12 hours. I had absolutely no issues holding on to that. But at this point, As of now. the calls are trading at 5 rupees. So do you think, is it wise enough for me to let these puts expand to 11, 12? Because I have to manage my position from both the sides and I will only lose from that particular strike how much ever the maximum compensation I'll be getting from the other side. I have full confidence that 18,300 will be out of the money, but I'm very fluidic with my bias and I don't play on my conviction. For me, risk management is the first thing. So once this starts to trade above nine and a half, I'll move all my calls, I mean all my puts away to 18,250. After that point, this 18,450 call will almost be dead. From that point onwards, I'll start to take additional credit on the call set because this is 18,410, right? It has been a good, a good, good top for the day. So, for the markets to breach this top, it has to take a lot of effort. So, but at this point, I don't think taking an additional credit on the call side is a wise decision. So, at this point, I'll be more happy to Sorry. take these puts away from 300 to 250. Mm -hmm. And from there, if it starts to see an IV spike, that is when I'll add the calls. Because at this point, this is not an IV spike. It's just pure delta move. Delta move ke hisab se put bad And I don't want to take additional credit from the call side yet. Once I see that IV spike, let's say, um, calls exactly 5 rupees pe hai, and if this 250, 18,250 put spikes to somewhere around 5, I would say that, okay, this is a good opportunity for me to take additional risk. So that is the place where I'll be adding the positions. Yeah, one question. Do people at the back, are they able to see the screen clearly? For example, if the first one is a put or a call? No? Okay. Praful, can you change your, can you, can we have screen 3, please? Praful, can you change it to a contrasting color? Meaning the screen the versus light the light theme. Theme, theme. You needed to change the theme to white. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's okay. 
much better up uh, no no people at the front are not eligible to answer this people at the back please is this clear still not clear can we do anything else it has an allot inch to it oh my i always turn on the night light so <laughs> is this clear people at the back perfect uh, okay. so the problem was uh, praful turned the screen to night mode uh, so you know he is a night person way. and he wants us to let us know is a party animal that's it thank you okay number 1 screen number 1 please okay great so the market is still hovering around that mark testing the patience of the buyers and rewarding the sellers at this current juncture keep it going keep it going time is around 11 10 we still have a long day to go we are just two hours into the day and we still have another four more hours let's see who's going to be like getting the party mode on So Mark has a habit of grinding against the trend True. and flying towards the trend. So now the grind That will require happening. some people to get in with the volume and yeah. once one set Correct. of party moves in, then you will see all the things Correct. are like in going crazy. So now the grinding move is happening against the trend and the fear is getting created in the market, Absolutely. which used to happen uh, when the market uh, makes the high every day. yeah so uh, just to remind you folks we have set up a uh, podium here um, does anybody have any questions for the speakers so far no questions at all anybody which means they have been communicating perfectly which is very nice thank you but if you do have any questions about any trades being taken aman has a question aman from raipur ha ah, my memory is working so yeah so every In another 20 minutes, 11:30 to 11:35 is the question hour, Q and A hour, every hour till 3:30. So the mic will be here. You can come up here and ask a question on the mic, so that everybody can hear the question as well as all the 11:30 aman, 11:30. Another 20 minutes to go. Thanks. Okay, so my screen is visible on the top. These global markets are not giving up. They are, they are uh, again trying to come. Just back show up. them the HDFC chart. Yes, I think. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, I don't have the VWAP here, but actually, sorry, I don't have the VWAP on this chart. So actually, this was the VWAP for HDFC Bank. It went, took a resistance at VWAP, immediately came down, and it in fact tested the day low. But immediately after testing the day low, it is bouncing. which is another good sign so i i've been saying that uh, these candles on uh, the, the these kind of sell off after the rally i don't like similarly this is something that i like when i when i am bullish when the market comes down immediately after breaking any any level immediately after that if you get the green candle that's a very good sign that's an extremely good sign and usually you should get the follow up candles which looks like it it might happen in hdfc bank but uh, bank nifty is still not showing any momentum it has to clear this level first which is uh, 42 890 that is the first hurdle to be cleared then uh, day high so these are the two levels that i would be uh, I, i would be liking to see clearing in bank nifty and support is obviously day low all these supports are like minor minor supports intraday the next support comes in the day low so the high is obviously 42 890 the first one then uh, uh, the, the day high which is 42 550 Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks to you. And uh, can we get number one? Number one screen, please. 
Okay, so another move, again it went lower, it went deep in the red, again it is coming back to the green territory on this particular strike which we are holding. 42,800, number one, number one. Okay, great. So what I was looking at is on the positional play, in case if you're someone who's looking at the positional play, we will definitely try to get some kind of a resistance somewhere around, in case if the market is trying to move today, 43,000 would be a small resistance over there, it'll be a trend line resistance. And then in case if it is moving tomorrow, you might get it somewhere around 43,032. And look at the RSI factor. The RSI is also like an, on the daily chart, it is still showing up somewhere around uh, 69, 70. They might just try to take a breather, unless and until you get some uh, major uh, cues, it is going to be like in taking a breather. And that might be the surprise ef effect today. So they just wanted to like and surprise the bulls. We have been continuously like and giving you the move. Today for a change, we might make a move on the downside and then keep a range and then come back hard. That may be a possibility. So let's go with the data at this current juncture. 262 to 1.90. We have started to add some positions here, both the sides, four lakhs here, two lakhs here, but nothing convincing. Nifty almost trying to break that 18,400 mark, which is used to be like in a small kind of in support. I even yesterday and day before, it was trying to protect that level. You can clearly see it uh, on 16th November, it had a protection over there in the morning, and then even yesterday afternoon, it came down, picked up the pace, and then moved it higher. So we had a resistance on that level the previous day. So today, that is the level wherein we will be keenly watching in case if they are breaking down with the volume, then yes, it has a potential. So the Bank Nifty does that, but the only good news for the Bank Nifty is it was not able to fall below the RSI of 40. Watch out for that. Once the RSA 40 is getting to break, probably yes, the bears will feel, okay guys, we have some potential to take this market lower. They just needed to break it further. 54 points down and the Nifty Constituents Reliance, HDFC Infi, HDFC and ICICI, the only one which is there in the top 10 in the green, other than that TCS, Infi, HDFC, HDFC Bank, Reliance, all are in red. And Bank Nifty, except ICICI and Indusind Bank, all of the guys have been in deep red now. So HDFC leading the poll fall by like a 0.72 along with Kotak at 0.81. And now slowly but steadily we are getting into an M2M of close to 8K. But I would love to see the volume, volume please. And they just needed to break this shackle, watch out for this level. So already it has been rewarding me close to 9,000. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing a trailing stop loss once it crosses the 380 mark. But this is not a convincing trade to me. With the way the market has been behaving, whatever that comes for the option buyers, you just needed to literally grab it. Okay, another candle. Take it again. No. So today, do we have a possibility of getting a golden crossover at this juncture? It doesn't look like, why? Because already, if you see that, the blue line, which is the WMA, is already below the VWAP. The only one which is there above is going to be the super trend. That, that can be a crossover trade. So even if for a crossover trade, this is an ideal candle for them to do it. All they needed to do is just pull it down with the large volume. Slowly, you will see the super trend for like in piercing the VWAP, going lower. Otherwise, you might get to see this kind of a move. Make a move, head towards the WMA, get a resistance, and then come back. This is not what we would love to see. If you are looking at the data, as a writer, these guys are like a now slowing its pace. 
the data has just been like an, in a stagnant mode. This is something which I don't like. Writers needed to be uh, like in creating some kind of a position on one particular direction, which they are not doing it. I think they are happy with whatever the position that they created in the morning and looking at the premiums, they said, Shiva, you are not going to get in now. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I want the market to go up. You want the market to go up? <laughs> I want the market to go down. <laughs> Okay, let's have a deal. Let uh -huh, the market you want the market to stay there. <laughs> so another candle, another candle, another move. We will just keep the chart side by side. So anyone in this room wanted to try one click? Come to the stage. Come, I'll tell you what to do. Yes, please, come to the stage. <laughs> yes, so how we needed to play the one click? All you needed to do is, you needed to play around with the arrow keys. Sell call, you needed to use this left one. left one. Buy call, you needed to use the up arrow. Buy put, you needed to use the down arrow. Sell put, you needed to use the side arrow on the side. So which one you wanted to do? It is my capital, don't worry, you buy anything you want. Buy put, buy it. So you see from the 400, it has gone to 425. Do one more time. 450, cool it is. Yeah. Cool. 450. Now you wanted to exit your position? Yeah, we what do you do? Again, buy. No, buy is like and you are going for the upper arrow. Close all position. Close all position. Now you will close F6. it. Yeah. F6. Change position. Done? Yeah. In a single click? Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful? Yeah. So, why don't you try one more time? Yeah, definitely. I'll we needed that. to make it fun, right? What do you want to buy? I just bought one and then I. You F6. want to close it? Yeah. So why don't you use the arrow key to close? Arrow key. Okay, that would be great. Um, try it again. Sir, it's my money, sir. You try it. Do whatever you want to do that. You need to play a game. Yeah, You're here to play a game. I need to close it, so... You want to close arrow? it? Yeah. Which arrow key to so close it? Sell okay, put. Okay, I bought put, so sell put. Ah, okay. okay, done. That's cool. That's cool? Yeah, yeah. You need to be like this. I'm giving you an opportunity and you're not making use of that. <laughs> you needed to do that. I don't want to blow your capital, no. <laughs> it's okay. That is to trust it, right? If I don't test it with you, who else can do that? Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Thank you so much. So, guys, no. we wanted to keep it simple. Okay, no, no, another person. I think, um, uh, Aman, Shiva says it's my capital. So, don't worry. Whatever you do, he'll close it and he'll absorb the whatever the results are. Plus, he'll pay you around... Uh, 10 lakh or something like that for uh, your time spent on this computer. <laughs> DJ, good thing is, he is a lucky charm. Look at this, the market was not rewarding at all all along and now it has given me a problem. Yeah, I think the market should come down to, like what is the nifty, nifty is coming? Uh, I think it should come down to 300. True. I think the True. market is bearish today. I just wanted to study the data thing. How can we study that data part, Wh OI data okay, part? Okay, OI data, what we have done is, go through our like an OI pulse. We have given you a detailed documentation. Go uh -huh. under the profile picture. You have a user manual which is available, which is close to 300 page. And all the like, strategies which I've been developing, everything has been explained. You can download the manual and open it, read the instructions thoroughly. Okay, so you will be able to take some time out. We have given you a detailed documentation how you needed to look at the data and everything. It will give you a complete picture about how you needed to be looking at the data. I'll just open it up for you. So this is the user manual, it's a version 10. So we have given you what is long buildup, what is short buildup, everything has been listed down here. What is an open and eye concept, we have added all the signals, what, how it is helping you and everything. All have been clearly, clearly explained, so you can go through this data which will be helping you. Now, thanks Aman, and it looks, looks like another person wanted to try it. Thank you, Thank you so Thank you. much. Okay, Rudraji, please. Which one you want to buy? You want to see the chart? Okay, the chart is right here. And you see the data here. So you want to buy a call or a put? I want to buy a call. I want to buy a call. You want to buy a call? Which strike you wanted to buy? 
We are currently having 42,200. You can pick and choose the call, whatever that we wanted to buy. Fine. This is fine with me. 42,200 is fine with you? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Apparel is for the buy. You bought around 150, 200 quantities. Okay, this man is at a high speed now. He is looking at it, and he's already sitting on a loss of 400, 500 rupees, and he's gone to 295, and it is going to be around 500 rupee loss. Will you add some more positions? Or you wanted to close your positions? You are adding some more positions. 475 now. He's getting towards 500. He's on a race track now. He just wanted to blow my account. He is pretty much sure on that. Yes. Let's take that hit. 290. 500. He is keenly holding. Will it be a bullish candle? He just wanted to see one bullish move. And 585. Profit. Or 885. 1100. And this man is still not booking the profit. He is determined. Yes. One sec. Perfect. Okay. 500. 635. That is a position closed. This is the one which you needed to close. No, no. no. So which one is live? Just this is the live. The net quantity is the live. And you can see the strike here. You can just see which one is that. And this man is a lucky charm to me. <laughs> so these guys are making money. So I should be asking these guys to make the money now. Okay, 2300. How will you close the position if you wanted to? F6. You can use this. I can use this too. Yes, that's the reason I've given you that. By the time you react, the market has been falling. Now, you have bought the extra. Okay. Now, this is what the fund is now. He has become a seller and he's been selling the both call and the put. And look at that, he has sold 75 quantities. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, now he has done a hedge. Now he has done a hedge. <laughs> okay. All our life with this 75, 75. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't panic. It's you who are going to close your position. Okay. Close it. Done. One click, you were able to close both the positions which were there on the call. Imagine. I'll just show you one more. So imagine I wanted to buy both call and the put. It takes like the APIs is just trying to say. Shiva, give me some time. You're just too fast for me. <laughs> yes. Let me just quickly see. OK, only one position. We just closed it. Done? So imagine, I just buy something here on the call. All you needed is, you can use the left arrow hmm. to close your position. Hmm. Done. Great video game. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rituraj. Guys, we wanted to keep the trading simple. Once you have the access, try it out. Give us your feedback, but just give us six more months. You will see some amazing features coming in one click. Thank you. OK. So that is some entertainment for you. At least the market is not doing anything. So meanwhile, uh, while they were talking, Nifty went and hit the day low. And immediately, it gave, it gave the bounce. It is just 10 points away from the day low. But after breaking uh, the day low, it, it uh, immediately gave some green candles. It did not give any follow-up candles. But Bank Nifty remains weak because uh, if you look at the Kotak Bank, uh, I think if somebody can pull the Kotak Bank chart, I think I have kept it here. So look at the Kotak Bank chart. This line, this is uh, 1950. So every time it is hitting the 1950, I think there is a bulk order pending in 1950. So it is uh, getting the bounce. In case if it breaks uh, on the downside, there can be a huge red candle. In case if uh, Kotak Bank breaks 1950 on the downside, because it is exactly hitting the 1950 and bouncing every time. So the moment it breaks, there can be another uh, 10, to 10 to 15 points uh, fall on that. And Nifty, uh, it is slightly above the day low. Although it touched the day low, it didn't, didn't uh, give any momentum after that. And Bank Nifty is coming down. It, it is, is trying to down. break it down. Is, it is fa falling. It is falling. Bank Nifty is giving a huge red candle. We need to wait and see what but happens the only problem right is after this one. Volume is not picking up, Suju. 
So what I would like to see is the next candle should come to uh, 40 to 450 range. That will be the amazing thing to see. But if the, if the market consolidates here, it is going to be really bad on the downside. In that case, I'll have to square off all the position and look for uh, a trade opportunity on the short side then. So I'm waiting for the reaction after uh, this break. Then uh, depending on the reaction, I'll take a call on my position. OK. So just to add, uh, guys, just bring up screen one, please. So which is a bank which has been falling in the last few minutes? If you look at the ICICI bank in the last 15 minutes, that's the one which has fallen close to 0.3% down. Okay, so ICICI was the loan barrier who was able to hold this market, and you can clearly see what the ICICI bank is doing it. And for the first time, they were able to push the average volume above the day's volume average. So if they are able to push it above that blue line, and if they're able to get the ICICI bank falling further and further, which is currently 0.13, if they're able to do it, then that'll help. So all the bears will be happy about that. Now it is time again for us to be looking at the trending OI data. Now, you guys tell me whether the trending OI data helped you to be on the right side or not. Is the data leading or lagging? So people who believe that the data is not going to be helpful, the OI data is all delayed and other things. So what was the reason for me to go and look for the data and then be on the bearish side? Though my morning view was bullish, you needed to adapt to how the data changes, and you needed to go according to the data. Now, if you look at the data, it has moved from 2.59, 2.62 to 2.67. What is happening on the put side? It is? So from 1.90, it has come down to 1.57. That means there have been a lot of writers on the put side who would have covered the position. Do you want to see that? You wanted to see the short covering happening on the put side? Just go and look at this data. On the option, you can go and look at it on 42,700 and so on, the one which we were holding it. Look at this. This is on 1130 data you needed to be looking at. They have covered close to 4 lakh quantity, and the price has moved from 250 to 300. So clearly, the writers are saying, Shiva, I think you are right. We wanted to write on the call, and we are going to be covering our positions on the put side. So they have started doing that. 42,600, the same thing. They have started covering the position. 40 to 500, which is what I was telling you to be the crucial one, right? Look at that. Where exactly they're adding the position? They have brought it down by 12 lakhs over here, 13 lakhs over here. They are starting to add more and more. The price has fallen from 71 to 38. Now it is trading somewhere around 39. Slow, slowly and steadily, the writers are fully hiring and control on 40 to 500. And we needed to break that level for it to move higher. In case of if you are looking for a huge short covering as Siju is expecting it, I would love to see the 42,500 breaking and then moving it higher with the short covering move in the second half if you want it to be a bull. Otherwise, this market is just going to be a grinding one. This particular volume is not a convincing one. I would love to see more volume picking up. One off candle with 30K, 40K. Just. It's not your day. Just accept it and then stay light. Look at that. Whatever the move that was given in the previous candle has been completely negated using a small volume on the following one. That's the reason we wanted the big money to put in their money before we get in. If you're a scalper, you would have easily exited on, like in whatever the positions which you are building, you could have easily exited on that particular candle. It would have given you at least minimum of 1%. But if someone was entering a fresh position, you needed to wait it out. Yes? This is the reason I was saying I will not act on the immediate breakdown. Because the, I was telling that the, I will not act on the immediate breakdown. The market suddenly went down. I will not exit on that. I will wait for the reaction. Only on the reaction, I will, I will take a decision. If the market was consolidating near that uh, breakdown area, I would have exited the position. But what happened right now is, it gave an immediate bounce. That means it is not a uh, real fall. So it will again consolidate in the same range where it was consolidating earlier. And it will take a direction later. It hasn't taken any direction yet. Not in the downside, not in the upside. But what I have seen right now, it is amazing. And that is what I, I love to see when I am in a long position. Morning, I saw a nasty pattern on Nifty, which broke down after creating a new high. Similarly, right now, if you look at the bank Nifty and Nifty, both ba Nifty initially hit uh, day low, immediately it bounced back. And Bank Nifty didn't come to the day low, but it gave a good breakdown on a couple of candles, but 
immediately right after that it, it came back up. So these are the patterns I look for uh, while uh, trading uh, using the price action. So this is absolutely fine. I don't have any any uh, tension on my position. I'm still happy with the way market is reacting. I'm still keeping the position on. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Jagan. Yeah. Can you make it four quarters, sir? What? Which screen? Four, four, four. Four. Make it four. Make it four. Four screens. Okay, so market took a complete U-turn, so that you know that right now in Bank Nifty, but the profit is close to 1% that you can check it right now. And um, what happened here, right? So, I'm sorry, let me look at the chart. Can look at the chart here. It took a complete U-turn. So now the system is made as a delta neutral. Some of the call stop losses hit, some of the put stop losses hit. The delta is absolutely neutral right now. If market take a fresh position here, so there will not be any problem. So we are sitting with a profit of close to 1% right now. You can check it here. It's more than that. So 4.85 is the capital I'm running in Kavikula Cone. That you can check it right now. And you can also check the once the put stop losses hit, the system will start booking the hedges. So people will say, actually, this is the additional profit, additional hedges cost, right? So this is not going to zero. You can check it here. And we are having only these quantities, which is far, far OTM. So if needed, I will buy the closer one as time goes on, so that you will get a higher margin benefit and the risk will be uh, less. So that is the reason why I always love the low volatility. Thank you. can check the positions here and uh, look at the delta it is 47 it is nothing for my portfolio it is uh, almost a delta neutral and you can do an analysis here this i keep doing this one i want to make sure that actually i take only the limited risk <laughs> so you can check it here actually it is a limited one okay so that is one more point right So our times goes on generally, right? So my profit will increase by two times after the noon. My maximum profit comes only after 12 o'clock. Let's see so far we have got this much. If you are seeing so much U-turn right now from here now, right now, if market goes down, I will be compromising some of the profit. If market goes up from here, I will make a good profit. So that's what I'm trying to see right now. Um, at the same time, that's in another 15, 20 minutes, the system will start booking the profits the equal premium it is trying to exit, and then we'll enter again with a new fresh stop loss. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. See here, the options, whatever we sold, we bought here, we bought here, we sold here. This hedges is no longer needed when the put stop loss is hit. So, so and later, we'll be buying for another option for three rupees uh, in upside. Maybe 40 to 500 or 40 to 600, we'll be buying these options for edging. Any questions you can ask us? So, any questions to us, you can always ask. <laughs> yeah. No, it is not delta neutral. Ideally speaking, it is a delta neutral. But if market trends, actually, it, it is always will try to maintain the delta. So we make more profit when market trends. Okay. If market reverses, then it does a delta neutral. Otherwise, it doesn't do. If market is reversing, it doesn't do. Market is trending up. <coughs> it is trying to capture the data. I mean, I started my career as a as a data player. So right now, I do 60% delta and 40% data.
if you want to make a huge profit you have to play with the delta if you want to make a consistent profit i mean delta you can't make a huge profit right so it will make 20 to 30 percent per annum in such a cases you can play for a delta okay so it's up to you to choose what you want to play i play both And some of the words you will not uh, uh, hear. Let me say this, those words. Okay. So in trading, right? So most of the time you would have heard about uh, support, resistance, stop loss, target, and uh, open, high, low, right? So some of the words let me introduce to you. Maybe it is well known, but for a beginner, it's a big. Uh, I mean, it may be something new. So number one word actually you should learn is actually hedging. So how you are doing hedging? So hedging there can be two parts. One is for a, for a call, you are going to sell a put, so that is the delta hedging part. And for a selling a put, you are buying a hedge, that is also one thing. So hedging, it's commonly not available in any trading book. So people will say actually where, where to take a long, where to take a short, right? So they will not talk about hedging. That's number one. So number two is a basket system. So only the big boy will do the basket. So my basket size is 15L for a expiry trading. I am running 657 basket today. So whatever I do trade in one basket and it is replicated in multiple accounts. So that is how crores and crores of money is being traded. And that is how a big boy will play because big boy will not look for the profit and loss of 100 CRs or 1000 CRs. He will always look for the profit and loss for one basket. That is number two. Okay. And one more thing. So taking a long and booking a profit or taking a short and booking a profit is a uh, generally it's a little bit done by a small player and big boys will always do accumulations. What is accumulation? A series of buy over a period of time. So that is how they accumulate. The same way when they want to sell also, they want to distribute, so they will be selling this share slowly and slowly over a period of time. The same way I would be doing. I will not be dumping my volume in a single uh, point of time for two reasons. Number one reasons, I will make a huge profit or huge loss. Number two, I will get a slippages. So straddles is sliced every seconds, every minutes, every se even a milliseconds level it is sliced so that I am not going to sell the straddles in single instance. Otherwise, I will get a huge slippages. So hedging is a one word. Second thing is basket. How do you play with the basket? There's a second word. And third is accumulation and distribution. So. Do you have any update? Uh, I don't have major update. I'm uh, just uh, do keeping the same thing. No update on the trade. No changes, no addition, no deletions. Nothing. Only thing is uh, global market again started moving up. It is making the highs uh, for the day. And uh, Germany is now 50 points up and Wall Street is like 63 points up. And even uh, uh, Hong Kong is staying where it was in the morning. It is 380 points down. So other than that, I don't have any update. Nifty and Bank Nifty, those are giving minor red candles, but those are not like uh, major issues uh, uh, currently. Like at least uh, Nifty is not doing, uh, looking so great, but Bank Nifty is looking actually great. And uh, Kotak Bank has uh, given some action. From that range, it broke out and uh, it was VWAP. Somewhere around uh, 1951 was the VWAP. It was uh, taking the support below the VWAP only. Now it broke out above the VWAP. So I am expecting some upward action on the Kotak, provided it stays above VWAP. And other banks are not uh, doing anything specific. HDFC Bank from the morning uh, fall, it recovered, and uh, uh, it is again uh, giving some flat uh, reaction. Let me let me go go to that. So this is uh, sorry, this is Nifty, and uh, one second. Uh, this is this is uh, HDFC Bank. This fall was little bad recovered and it is consolidating. Let's see whether it is going to continue the move. And ICC Bank, this r big red candle which caused a uh, fall in the Bank Nifty, which, which literally went and tested the uh, 40 to 400 range. And uh, uh, this is Kotak. This is a wrong chart of the Kotak. And Axis is also from the low. It recovered and it's consolidating. So all in all, I'm, I'm not uh, changing my view as of now I have the same view that uh, the market is consolidating and it is trading in the small range and the breakout should eventually come in the second half is my view even now over to you 
Hello. Jagan, a couple of questions to you. Yeah. Your question to me? Yeah, yeah a couple yeah. of questions to you. Yeah. Uh, typically, like, say, in stock options, uh, how I trade, like, whenever I find, say, the IV of, say, certain scripts, uh, you know, going above 50 in the option chain analysis at the NSE website, we typically go for these kind of straddle or strangle shorting. No, can you come again? I'm not able to answer. Okay. Is it audible right now? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I'm saying that typically in the stock options, what we trade, uh, we typically see an IV of, say, above 45 or 50 as a, a relative benchmark uh, a figure to enter into short straddle or short strangle, okay? Uh, in your setup in the bank, Nifty, like any particular Bible level you find to enter at the money uh, straddle shorting? Okay. So, um, with respect to the intraday and the positional, let me answer, okay? Yeah. With respect to the positional, I have some target for a premium. Say, for example, I want to do a positional, at least 1% of bank nifty underlying should be there at, at the money, then only I will do the uh, positional one. Best example, yesterday, the at yeah. the money premium was close to 350. So there is no point in doing this positional one for overnight because the simple gap down of 1% will have a huge loss to you. So positional one, you have minimal this one. And historically also, you backed us any strangle, straddles, iron flay with the risk defined one. Okay, with, with the risk undefined, you may get a profit. With the risk defined one, low volatility, you may not get a profit. You will get only the drawdown. Of course, there will be no profit, no loss, but the drawdown is very huge. Okay, With the respect to the um, uh, uh, intraday, right? So intraday, there is no difference. The only key difference is I will play less for trending. If the premium is too less, the most of the time it is not going to trend in the intraday. So if the premium is too low, comparatively, how do I compare? Again, 1% of under value, underlying value. If it is premium is lesser, 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 I will play less for a trend, I will play more for decay. So, so uh, a second question to it. Uh, sure. Like for example, in today's today market like it is too too very sticky like for example i trade more of nifty than bank nifty and i can find that uh, 18350 put and 18400 call like Correct. i'm getting the difference i mean the strangle if i'm buying i'm getting a difference of say 28 like i have personally made today at a difference of 28 i've gone long actually basically okay. so 18400 call i have gone long 18350 put i have gone long okay. so basically i've bought strangles so uh, because the IV right now is showing at a very minuscule 6 in the nifty part. So, do you also trade these kind of, you know, strangles from the longer end? No. Okay. I backtested strangles are giving a profit in intraday, there is no doubt. But the profits are always lesser than straddles. You get fantastic profit with the straddle because you are playing with the higher premium, you are playing with the higher, I mean, more time value. So the kind of drawdown you are getting in a strangle, in other words, not even drawdown, the time you are spending to recover your drawdown is more with the strangles. Because with the strangles, you get chota chota profit. And when you make a loss, you make a, a big loss. So it takes a lot of time to recover. But the story is different when it comes to straddle. You get a huge profit, huge loss. The time to recover your drawdown is actually uh, lesser in straddles. So I always love straddle. And I have a minimum profit per lot if it is not giving minimum minimum of 500 rupees per lot in bank nifty i will not do it and strangles to my knowledge it is not giving more than 500 500 rupees profit uh, for any kind of back testing of what i did so if you are no if you know if you have some strategies which gives more than 500 rupees profit per lot uh, please let me know no see because these are special days when on the expiry day itself like it is too sticky and the oi is highest at a just a difference of 50 rupees in nifty for example oh. so it becomes even more vulnerable the wall to be broken especially at one o'clock when the euro ma eurozone markets they open and all so that time you find the iv slightly higher than say at 11 30 in the morning on the expiry days typically i find I so uh, my intention of asking this is like uh, ultimately as a trader we have to be flexible we just cannot see it from one one angle that okay we just have to short things and get out of it because days might be uh, uh, there where there is absolutely no activity and it makes more sense to say just uh, take the advantage of say the other people who are having uh, huge positions at a particular strike 
you know, uh, they have shorted that and take advantage of that. I, I agree. So whenever you look at the market, uh, these kind of big, uh, thought process is very common. Okay, so you that we would have done this, we would have done that. Okay, so you you may have some thesis. So low volatility, we can do this. High volatility, we can do this. With this inputs, we have more than five years of data. We have to backtest, and we need to make sure that it is giving a profit on the paper. Then only we can go and implement being a system trader. Okay, so I'm not discretionary okay. trader anymore. So that is the reason. Now, being a system trader, I have to prove. But one thing I want to let you know that actually, so if you are keeping your stop loss your dynamic. Okay, based on the volatility, it is giving better results, a 10% better results. So for example, higher volatility, your stop loss should be small. Lower volatility, your stop loss should be higher. Uh, because with the higher stop loss, with the higher volatility, your premium is high, so that yes. your risk is high. Yes. So, and market most likely will trend. So you need little lower stop loss when, with the high volatility. And with the lower volatility, you need a bigger stop loss. It is giving 10% higher results than the normal one. So that I do. And in today's trade setup of yours, like, did you keep the puts extra sell just because, you know, the market was still trading above the VWAP? Uh, because, because actually, if you look at the margin benefit, okay, if you are selling one and buying one, the margin is 80,000. Yes. If you are selling two and buying three, the margin will come down. Mm -hmm. So I am deliberately looking for the margin benefit. No, but like today, I think you are more short in the put side, right? In, in terms of the because, edge. Yeah, because the morning the market was going up. Yes, that is what I So I started selling them. Okay. So the system will have more puts by default, yes. So um, two points I wanted to emphasize. So from, I mean, in 2014, I started with the three lakhs. So during that time, the margin was 25,000, 30,000 like that. And we had a leverage, and that is the reason why I was make, able to make profit. But in, uh, from the day one, okay, for until now, when I manage crores of money, I don't have any psychological issue. The reason is, there may be two reasons. Number one, I'm getting consistent profit every year, every quarter. Uh, number two reasons, I always look at my reference account. So if you are trading, if you are having a psychology issue where, while you are scaling your capital, maybe for five, 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, you are making a profit. But when it comes to 50,000 or 1 crore, actually, you are not able to control your emotions. In such a cases, you can create a one reference account. And today only, honestly speaking, I'm looking at this account, 4.85. Otherwise, I will look only 15 lakhs account. Okay? I will never ever look at how much profit I generated. So that's point number one. And if you want to make a higher profit, either in a life or anything, right? So you need to take leverage, okay? So leverage directly or indirectly, okay? So I'm not saying you should take a loan, but what is I'm doing is the better profit is coming from the leverage and make sure that your strategy is more than 80% success rate, then it, there is a point in taking leverage. But if you are doing a trend following, never ever take a leverage. My expiry strategy, success rate is more than 90%. So I want to buy the options as much as, as possible. If I'm able to run my straddle even for 50,000, 60,000, I wanted to do it. 
so that is the reason why i also take a leverage from a prop desk also there also i am running more than 20 cr apart from this 4.85 so that's what i do so if your system is more than 80 percent there is nothing wrong in taking a leverage but your stop loss should be based on your capital not based on your leverage capital so for example you are having 10 lakhs and you are taking a leverage of two times or three times 30 lakhs your stop loss should be based on your 10 lakhs two percent of your capital that's what for expiry i keep it three percent so for 15 lakhs a cone i do only 45,000 is the maximum stop loss I keep for expiry trading. And that is the reason why from the day one till now, actually, I don't have any psychological issue. Even my teammates are not having any psychological issue. Maybe that is a gift actual market has given to me. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, hi, Jagan. Uh, so I was asking, uh, will you be uh, squaring off these positions uh, before 3.30 and like uh, uh, taking new positions or you will just take it till the end? Good question. So I answered this question indirectly uh, just uh, 15 minutes before. So I do follow kind of accumulation and distribution model. So when I take a position also, I will take slowly, slowly, slowly. When I uh, square up my position also, I slowly, slowly. So, so so maybe in another 15 minutes, I will exit this thing. Then every one hour, I will be exiting my positions. Every one, 15 minutes, I will be adding my positions. But so on, that's how it is. On what basis are you exiting them? Like Based on the profit. If the profit and the premium is melted, then I will exit uh, very early. So for example, the premium is coming to 10 rupees. But right now, it is not the case. The premium is 50 rupees. So we are not able to exit right now. If I don't have a margin for the next one, that also, uh, it's a one more trigger point to exit. For the next strategy, I am looking for a margin. If it is not there, actually, I will exit. That's why you are uh, waiting for the margin to come. Okay. So rotating. So that's a key point. So leverage either by either by loan you can take a leverage, or buying a hedging you can take a leverage, or reusing the margin also you can take a leverage. Multiple times because we don't have a leverage right now. So understand. Thank you. Yeah. So I did my first mistake of the day. Uh, can you zoom in my screen? Number three. Okay. So what I did was when the market was heading lower, I kind of preempted with my calls because I didn't want to get out of my 18300 puts because I believe that 18300 puts will be out of the money. And uh, that's why I wanted to take some additional credit from the calls when these 18300 puts were trading at somewhere around 10 bucks. So I took these 18400 calls at somewhere around 30 rupees. And if you see the option chart here, there, uh, when this candle happened, I kept the stop loss just above that for the 18400 uh, calls, which I had risked on. But unfortunately, all my stop losses got hit somewhere around 17.518 or something. And then again, the markets came back. But I've again added some quantity here and uh, here as well. So one thing was that. Uh, it was a pure risk reward game. Okay. For me, it was okay. I entered at around 13.514. My stop loss would be somewhere around 17. So I'd be giving up three points if at all the market reverses. And it did. I gave up three points. But fortunately, I still had a decent premiums on 18450 calls so that even if I lose around three points from there, I'd make up that three points there. By, by doing this, what I did was I secured my 18300 puts for much more time. I can hold on to these 18300 puts for a longer period of time now. So this was a mistake. I mean, from hindsight, it looks like a mistake, but it's okay. I it gave. I mean, it took three points from me, but it was a good risk reward call.
Okay, great. So it looks like the market was just waiting for us to get another move on the downside. They're just playing with the VWAP again. So people who have been like trying to do a breakout on the upside or on the downside definitely would be disappointed. And let's look at the data. 42,500, around one crore on the call side in terms of the overall OI. And the put side is around 68. So the premiums are again starting to melt. And in terms of the trending OI data, it is 2.62 and 1.85. This is on the bank nifty. Moving on to the nifty, it is around 3.77 to 3.22. Absolute writer's paradise, writer's paradise. That is nothing much, nothing much. If you are an intraday trader, if you are a like, writer, you just needed to enjoy making money as long as they are going to be keeping at the VWAP. That's the reason I use VWAP as the most crucial indicator on my two candle theory. So volume weighted average price, that's the area wherein both buyer and seller is going to be holding their position with an average. And unless and until one person gives up, you're not going to be seeing a market moving in the other direction. So VWAP with super trend and then the WMA and the PSR below, still it is bulls, a little bit of an advantage on the chart, but the data says Shiva's bears are the ones who are having a bigger, car, bigger hand. So this is on the Nifty. You can look at the Nifty graph. Morning, something which start to be bearish, then again started to be bullish, then slowly it is getting into a bearish tinge, but now, slowly they are able to unwind some positions, cover some positions, now they are starting to add more, and the call over is falling. You can clearly see the trend has to be going lower and lower, but from the lower level, there is some support coming in on the Nifty. And looking at the Bank Nifty, this is the Bank Nifty, let's look at the Nifty as well. The data suggesting that riders are on the job on both call and the put. The call away is around 3.7 3 crores. The put away is around 3.2 crores. It is going big guns on big side, both sides. Look at this. Someone who would have been writing the 42,400. Imagine, I wanted to show you the straddle chart. Imagine someone was writing the 42,400 in the morning. They is absolutely enjoying the premium. Somewhere around 9.20, 9.30. It was trading somewhere around 2.40 to 2.50 range. And now it has a combined premium of 153 and it is trading well below the VWAP and the 20 EMA. This is the straddle chart. And in terms of the option chart, I'll just show you the 42,500 on one minute time frame. You can see both the call and the put. So the blue line which you see is the OI. The red is the VWAP. The green is the IV here. And the yellow is the volume. Whenever it picks up some volume, we would be looking to see that. But at this current juncture, the OI on both call and put, it is equally like and distributed. Hmm. Are they going to be keeping it at a particular range and try to write as much as possible? Looks like it. VWAP, VWAP, VWAP. No volume, once again, the Dow futures with... Mike, please, okay. It is trading at 82. Slowly but steadily, the US markets is showing, the futures are showing me the bullishness, but our market needed to resonate and then move higher, which has not been happening at this current juncture. Okay, so what I will be doing is, I'll be looking at 42,100 deep in the money. The reason is, if I look at the premiums on this one, I'll just go look at the premium stab. You can clearly see the call premiums are slightly higher than the put premiums. So every 30 minutes, they're just making a move on the call and then the put so that they will be able to erode the premiums and at the same time, they will be keep grabbing the points using writing more and more, calling the put. So at this current juncture, 57 to 50 and 40 to 500, 52 to 44, that is a premium. And you can see the last traded price, click on show LTP. It will show you the last traded price, which is 105 on 40 to 400. Out of the 102 or 105, 57.95 is the premium. So we give you the live premium, how much the riders will be able to enjoy it on that particular strike. So some of the put deep in the money, 43,000, 43,100, 42,900, all are trading in a discount. So wherein the riders do not have much to write. So that's the reason you will be getting to see this moves wherein they will go higher, erode the premium, try to take as much as premium from the call side. 
42.440 is the spot, and then the future is trading at, let me see the future rate. Future is trading at 42,531, almost 100 rupee premium. And in terms of the change in OI, you can clearly see in the last two, three hours, you can look at the period here, last one hour. So they have clearly covered some positions on the put side. They have been adding more positions on the call side. Close to 6 lakh quantity have been added on 40 to 500. 8 lakh have been unwound. Open and high, almost all these in the money strikes have been hit. Open and low is also done, at least not in the, like in the money strikes, these are all deep in the money or ODM strikes. Almost everything is hit, both on the call and the put side. There is nothing much to play on the open and high. Nifty is the same scenario. Look at Axis Bank. It was creating a base after initial breakout. Then I was uh, discussing with the Shahrikh sometimes back when uh, we went for the break. It is creating the base. Now the, the, it, it is breaking out from the base. Amazing breakout. Amazing breakout. So on one hour, that, it sir? is giving you a 0.5% move, and on 15 minutes, it's giving you a 0.2% move. Access Bank yeah. is your darling now. Ah, that created an amazing uh, base after, uh, after the initial breakout. But uh, like, did you notice that they are just doing a rotation? Yes. If they are making like an access move higher, they are making sure that the ICC is Correct. falling, Correct. and at the Correct. same time, HDFC, which was trying to be bullish, it is trying to fall again. And Kotak is also falling. And the one playing nasty is Kotak. Series. Exactly. So they are like in making a rotation. This is like in a clear, clear index management which is going on. Okay. So that is an opportunity for a golden crossover from the downside now. So if I'm a player who's looking for a golden crossover which we thought yesterday, what are the factors? All the factors are parameters are fulfilling now. The PSR is below, the super trend is below, the well, WMA is below, VWAP is below. The candle is perfectly fine. All I need is just a large two bars and one piercing, both together piercing the VWAP, which can you give me easy another 200 to 250 points on the bank nifty. I'm just going to be looking for that if there is an opportunity available. Other than that, this market is a dead one for me as an option buyer. Yeah, so I have a position update. I, I mean, did, this is a, sleeping uh, a long time just ago, sleeping, but not dead, sleeping market. Yeah, just giving an update, right? So earlier I only had 18500 call sell and I had 18250 and 200 put sell. I've moved. Uh, when uh, Nifty was moving down, I sold 18450 call as well. And now when it is moving up, I have sold 18300 put as well. So my capital is equally divided in quarters in 18500 call sell, 18450 call sell, 18300 put sell, and 18250 put sell. So that is what the position is currently at. So uh, looking in at Nifty, I'm watching 18390 on the upper side to be at least start concerning a, about my 18450 call sell. Otherwise, it's all okay. And on the lower side, I'm watching 18350. Uh, if 18350 is being broken on the lower side, I'll be concerned about my put side. And that's when probably I'll sell my 18, uh, 18400 call. So yeah, so now it's all good. I mean, as we discussed in the morning, right? We start off very wide, and when the market demands, we come closer, and that's where maybe the ROI could go up as well, right? And the, yeah, that's the journey I'm currently in. Let's see uh, what the market is offering in the next two hours, three hours. Even uh, Praful has a lot of updates. <laughs> I usually open two charts. One is the spot chart and another is the option chart. So this is the 18400 call which I've sold and 18300 put which I've sold. I mean, nothing, nothing major. On the put option charts, I just mark the swing highs and swing lows. And I expect that whenever a swing high is basically broken, like sellers like me will try to cover their positions. And I want the first seller to get out before that whatever that covering it happens. Is, so I want to be the first one to get out. My discretion is always exerted on the risk side. It's never on the reward side. Though I try to push myself and try to come in the fourth or fifth gear whenever I'm sitting on a decent profit cushion, but most of the times the discretion is exerted always on the risk side. So, niche pe volume hai and open interest hai, just to give an indication of what the positioning of the market is. So, as of now, it's 53 hour and around 56 here. Okay. Around like, 0.56, 0.6%, and we have a good chunk of premiums left here. And uh, again, uh, as Sharik said, 
our ROI on Thursday will only be known to you at 3.30. Because a lot of times I was at break even or even negative till 3 o'clock and ended up with 1% just uh, when you get that 3 p.m. ka move. And sometimes I was up by 2.5% and just to give away another 0.5% in that 3, 3 p.m. ka move. So we cannot say. Um, the idea here is that we don't have premiums, a lot of premiums to play with. For me, the key here is to get out without getting stuck in gamma. Okay. So I'm already on the risky strike because my puts are 50 points away and my calls are 50 points away. So I'm at the closest strike possible. So if gamma occurs, I'll be the one to first get hurt. So it's in my interest to get out of that option and sit on the next option because the way the market is behaving, if I move from 400 to 450, I'm almost like risk free because I don't see gamma affecting 450 much because 450 is almost dead. But okay, I'm not saying that it won't happen, but it's less probable. So my idea is to get out of whatever the closer options before the gamma occurs, that's all. Such a long consolidation. Bank Nifty will have to break uh, the barrier, which is uh, 42,487 or 490. That is the upper end of the consolidation range. If that is broken with volume and sustains above that for some time, we will see day high without much delay after that. So it is very closely guarded. Every time when it comes uh, at least 10 points near to that, the selling is happening. But the market keeps bouncing back. The very good thing right now is now it is bouncing back without testing the low or without even going into the lower end of the, means lower end of the smaller range, but no, not lower end of the bigger range, which is uh, the day low. It is not going into the day low, but it is bouncing way before that. Around 42, 430 range, it is bouncing every time. And even Nifty, that is also, it is near day low, but it is again uh, uh, in, in a position where it can uh, give the bounce any time. So waiting eagerly to see when it is going to break 42,487 or 490 because right now HDFC Bank is moving up and I'm looking at ICIC Bank that got sold off. And the interesting thing is ICIC Bank actually went and hit the day high uh, sometimes back, maybe 10-15 minutes back, ICIC Bank actually took out the day high. After that the sell off came in. And Kotak Bank also, it went to very close to the day high. It gave an amazing breakout on the upper side, immediately sold off. And when these two stocks got sold off, Axis Bank uh, gave the breakout. Now it is above the VWAP and it is uh, getting consolidated. And another one was H, uh, SBI that got brutally sold off uh, sometimes back. Now it is coming back. So it's a completely stock rotation which is playing out to manage the index. So the moment uh, that's uh, the, the rotation ends, we will see bigger move either side. And uh, the Dow Jones is like nearly 80 points up. Germany is also 67 points up. There is one more hour to go for uh, Europe opening. Uh, by the time I think uh, even FTSE also can come into the green territory by the time the Europe opens. If that happens, everything will be in favor of us. Okay, screen one please. Another move. Again, the VWAP is getting hold. Absolutely, there is no volume at all. And look at the way the average volume for the day has been keep declining. No one is showing any interest at all in the futures today. So they just say, like, and look at the futures trade, how it has been playing out in the morning. So even on early, this is like, an, and very rarely you'll be getting to see. I will just show you last week's data, how the expiry was. Look at the historical data on the Bank Nifty last week. I'll just go for the last week, 10th, on a 60-minute time frame. Can you see this? Every hour, at least the volume was close to 4 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 3.5, 5 lakhs, and you were able to see some good volume of action happening that day, and you had a uh, strong closing. We had a, uh, what to say, short covering happening in the second half, but in hindsight today, you can clearly see these guys are absolutely not having any conviction to take a large volume. 1.8, 3.5, three and then two lakh and one lakh. It is almost 50% of last week's volume. Last week if it was pathetic and this week is much worse than that. So 
there is no point when it is in low volatile and low volume market it is going to be a highly highly uh, demanding foreign buyer to get in and then get the move it is not going to be possible at all wait and watch is going to be the most important thing most of the times you will be like in forced to uh, sit in the trading desk for a long hours to get the right trade even as a scalper many think that you will be keep on trading in every candle that doesn't make sense you just needed to wait for the right momentum be like an eagle once the opportunity is there just go for the kill and then get out of the trade that's exactly your plan of action should be on a day like today but in order to do that you needed to build that patience and the discipline to be there to be there to be there all along in the market that's going to be the crucial crucial factor keep decoding the data keep it ready see how the volumes has been playing out last week how the volumes have been playing out this week where exactly they are trying to take a support whether they are able to make the market move above the yesterday's low or high keep looking at all this data so once it is convincing to you then you will get like an all the clarity what you require it so again they are trying to break it below the vwap making sure the rsi is going between the no trading range huge sell off in hdfc bank huge, huge sell, sell off in hdfc bank they are just like managing the index to the core now <laughs> nothing else someone who is selling it only hdfc this, bank HDFC has fallen like in point two percent in the last, and you know the biggest index heavyweight. You can clearly see HDFC alone is giving you a contribution of close to ninety-four points fall. Axis followed by that with thirty-five. AU Bank twenty-five. In the same, sorry, uh, look at SBI. Look at SBI. Look at that. <laughs> look at exactly, that. Exactly, they are like <laughs> just making sure that It if this guy is going firing over, big, <laughs> SBI is firing big. <laughs> And right before SBI firing, they took uh, HDFC Bank down so that the index will not go into no. It is a clear levels. case where in two parties, one is Correct. trying to use the HDFC, another party is using the SBI there. Maybe yeah. <laughs> they just wanting to retain above the VWAP as much as possible. So the clearly the index management is going on, and the moment they lose control, that is what I am looking for. So the trending OI currently around 2.68 to 1.89. Still, the bulls will feel little pressure as long as the OI on the call side doesn't come lower. So bulls on the call side will keep thinking that guys, we are going to be buying something in the future in the second half, and then we will be doing making sure that the riders are doing a massive short covering. That's something which we will be looking for. Let's see whether that's going to be happening. And keep Axis Bank on your watch list. It is giving another consolidation, which can uh, bring in uh, another day high. Okay, so overall, I think this is the ideal time. DJ, you needed to be coming on stage. The best time for you to showcase the crypto expiry if it is happening Nifty. today. Nifty, Nifty, look at Nifty. Again, the volume. And right now, HDFC Bank is coming back up. It is coming back up. So the sell-off that happened in HDFC Bank that was just to retain the index where it was, and right up, yeah. Guys, the Dow is uh, staying above that hundred mark, and now you are getting to see a big candle coming up. Can it be a candle which can push the volume to 50k and then get a follow-up? Can we get this now? Dow this is going to be the move which we wanted. It can we get this market moving on the upside with the volume? Dow triple digit up. 100 points up. Yes, Dow is moving, firing, and HDFC and ICICI both together firing on all cylinders. SBI with 20.23 percent. And Bank Nifty is again taking the resistance at uh, 42.8, uh, sorry, 488. Uh, let's see if it can break that and uh, fire big. It is all very close to is, the resistance. Very close to the resistance. All we need is one candle. One more yes, candle. One more candle. It can take out the resistance. Guys, just look for that. If the Nifty is able to break it along with the Bank Nifty, both needed to give you the volume. Nifty is are not firing all cylinders, but we would love to see the Bank Nifty doing it. If the Bank Nifty can give you another 50k bar, already it has given you a 25, 30, and then followed up with another large volume, and it can keep moving higher and higher and higher. And look at the global market. Dow 120 points up. Morning it was in red territory, and Germany from minus 120 now it is plus 86. All these markets are supporting us, and it is giving us opportunity uh, to to play around and uh, test the. I'm, I'll not say it is ATS because uh, morning I was expecting that ATS should come in uh, Nifty today. Now I am not sure because it's too far, like 240 points uh, away. So it could be a little difficult, but 
we can definitely see a good uh, rally is what my expectation. When we were all expecting another success to be done, the market says, no, Shiva, you guys are too excited. We are not going to be giving another one. Just calm down. We will be playing in the zone. As a writer, we know what we are doing. We just showed you how we can eat the premiums on the call side as well now. I just showed you one candle and you guys are excited trying to enter into a trade. Never do that. So the market is just keeping us in a calm space. These guys will be laughing. Come on, come on. I wanted to see some buyers coming on, on the call side as well. Huh? These guys will be creating those positions. But we need some more. Yeah, you guys needed some premiums. Guys, how do their writers make money? They just needed the premiums. Without the premiums, they know there is nothing much fun was going to be there. And this is not going to be a market wherein uh, you're going to be getting that opportunity. I think this is the ideal time. Uh, DJ, why don't you get the crypto guys here and let them have some fun. And I think their expiry should be equally exciting as well. Ours is so far going like a little slow. So let's get the crypto guys on the stage. I think Pankaj is going to be sharing something. Please. So you want to share this one? I think you can uh, connect there. Yeah. No, I, ah, yeah, you can like in, uh, pull it from your, yeah. Yeah, so let's mix it up a little. Let's make think, uh, things a little more interesting. We've been looking at bank nifty options. So some of you might remember a trade that was taken on Bitcoin call option strike was 17,200 at a premium of $36.3. So a quick two minute check on where that option premium is at right now. Mohit from Delta Exchange will show, show us that. Hi guys, hi everyone. So for those of you who were not here yesterday, yesterday evening we took some trades on uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. We sold some call options on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it's a 24 hour expiry. We sold it at 7 p.m. yesterday evening, 6, 7 p.m. And today we are going to see, you know, how are they doing. This is, right now is about what, noon? and. Expiry is at 5.30. So we still have a couple of hours to go to expiry, but we've already done, say, around 12 to 18 hours. So these were the two options that we so, uh, sold yesterday. First is a call option on Bitcoin, 17,200 strike for today's expiry. And second is a call option on Ether, 12,080 strike, 17th, which is today's expiry. Yesterday, price of Bitcoin in the evening when we did this was around 16,700. And Ethereum was around 1230. 12, okay. So this is what we did. We entered the trade at about $36 for Bitcoin. And we kept around $200 as margin for that. So entry price was around 36. You can see that the first column. Index price right now is about the same where it was yesterday. We kept $200 as margin and the option has already decayed and there is $34 which is already there as mark to market currently. And the option price currently is $1. So that's been a big win. Volatility, this is exactly what I was saying yesterday. Yes, these are volatile asset classes, but the fact that there's shorter maturity gives you a lot more control. And the fact that it's a 24 cross 7 market, there is no gap risk. So you can close your position and work with very tight stop losses. And like you can see, we only kept $200 with this trade and we have gotten 34, uh, uh, you've earned $34 in premium. For Ethereum, the same thing, we kept $157 as margin and we sold an option for three and a half dollars. The mark price currently is six cents. So this, much, this one is also pretty much the same. We sold it for 10 Ether, so that's why we have gotten a $34, uh, $34 in the, as premium. That has already been earned. Total notional that we did was one Bitcoin, so about $16,500 $16, and 10 Ethereum, so about $12,000, so about $30,000 traded. We kept about $400, $300 as margin and we have earned about $70 in about 18 hours. Now, this will not happen every day, but the fact is that there are a lot of days where this can happen. And so yeah, we'll just go and close these positions and we'll see 
what, what if we initiate the same position again? So today evening, we'll look to pretty much do the same trade again and then roll it over to tomorrow's expiry 18th and see what, you know, what's the next trade available. So Mohit, why don't we just go to 17,200 strike for 18th and see what's the premium there. So current BTC spot is 16,500 at the top. We go to 18th expiry, which is tomorrow. Time to expiry is one day, five hours. And let's look at 17,200. This is trading at about $45 as of now. And the plan would be the same, that okay. Whatever th uh, 36 we made, we just do the, we keep the same notional and short this for 46. And look for the decay. Now, like, you know, this is of course not free money. There is risk involved. Prices can move away and Bitcoin, you know, is a parabolic asset class, can move very fast. But again, risk management is the key. There is enough tools on the platform that give you very, you know, good quality risk management. You have stop losses, you have take profits available that allow you to manage your position 24 cross 7. So yes, we just wanted to come up and kind of give you an update on these trades and you know how most of how a lot of traders on our exchange particularly the option writers how they are using bitcoin and ethereum as a new asset class to uh, to kind of sort of put small portion of their uh, corpus into uh, trading these assets as well thank you pankaj one thing i liked about the statements that uh, pankaj made just now is uh, one thing this does not happen every day as traders most of us already know uh, know it but it's nice to receive a reminder like this, a friendly reminder from somebody who actually provides the services and stands to benefit if we trade more. So he puts out the disclaimer right at the front. So I'm hoping that spirit would continue going forward as well. No, sir, that's the key. This and every, every trader, you know, has to see it as a long-term game. This is not sure shot. This is not a recipe for success. Uh, there is no such thing. There is, a, this is, there is risk and you have to make sure that you have enough tools and you see all the scenarios. Like what happens if price goes to 17,200, how much can you lose and what will you do in that kind of a situation, right? That's why I'm stressing on what risk management tools are available, that there, there is no gap. So you have continuous trading. This is a very big change from traditional finance. The biggest risk for option traders is the gap risk. That gap risk is not there in these asset classes. That makes it a lot more easier. And ultimately, I would also say, you should also remind yourself on every profitable trade that this is one trade, the next one is a fresh trade. The loss in the profit probability will have no bearing on the previous success. So, it's a fresh trade, fresh analysis. Thanks, Pankaj. And for those people, just a small, gentle reminder, for people interested in getting started with this, Delta Exchange has happily agreed to give a 10,000 rupee balance for everybody who registers and does the KYC on their platform. Their team is sitting outside. Please take advantage of, uh, advantage of this offer. Get started with that 10,000 rupee uh, um, balance credit. You're getting a credit of 10,000 rupees, so you're getting free money. Go ahead, at least use that and try and see how i mean all of us are traders we are used to risk we are used to derivatives in options so this is an option of a different asset class which can probably move virally compared to even bank nifty if bank nifty can be a jungle beast this can probably be the father of grand nifty sometimes um, am i overstating this uh, pankaj that's fine and i think i think that's the way to look at it, that there's one more asset class now where you can do this. And yes, we are giving you money in your account. It's not free money. It's non withdrawable It's for you to try, test, trade, experiment some, and then see if this is valuable for you and you want to do it. So we are giving you your experimenting do uh, dollars. Use them. They are, of course, non withdrawable So play around with them. You'll get into real positions, feel the market out, and see your comfort level. And Sharik is here. Uh, Sharik and others have done a lot of videos on this. So if you need more guidance, you can watch videos on YouTube on how to trade, you know, Bitcoin options at Delta Exchange. There's detailed steps. There's multiple people who have reviewed this. And, you know, there's a lot of content that we are facilitating to build on how to do this. Uh, was, were there any questions? 
There was some question. Assume that I am an NRI, okay. Assume that I am NRI, okay. I will relocate out of the India, okay. And then I have the opportunity. Yeah. So assume that I am an NRI. I have the opportunity. I can go and trade the Bitcoin or crypto, or I can trade the FX. So what will be the advantages of trading the Bitcoin over the FX? FX gives you leverage. Yes. So the question is, why choose Bitcoin over FX? If I'm an NRI and I have an opportunity in the FX markets, then why would I look at Bitcoin trading, right? Fair point. You have to compare different opportunities and different asset classes. FX gives you leverage. It gives you very high leverage because the price doesn't move so much. These days it does, but traditionally FX markets have not moved so much. Now, what we are telling here is not directional trading on Bitcoin. This is volatility trading on Bitcoin, right? This is trading of options on Bitcoin, which is very different than what typically FX brokers offer. That is we typically high time. leverage Control. spread trading, you know, 500 times leverage on a futures position and so on, which basically 0.2% move will wipe you out. This is not the case here. You know, if any leverage here, we calculate on spot. And the premium of the option that you are shorting, we looked at $36 premium for Bitcoin for one day. That is in itself 20 basis points, right? So both sellers and buyers will have to think this differently. This is trading volatility. This is option trading. That typically is futures trading with high leverage. So, I, I do agree that uh, normally the FX is only a kind of a, a, a futures trading. So are there something like a binary option for the Bitcoin? Are, the question is, are there binary options for Bitcoin? There are participants in the market who offer binary options on Bitcoin. Uh, we don't. We want to build a full-fledged options market. And our focus is profession, individual professional traders who understand the market. So we are not into what will the price of Bitcoin be after five minutes and so on. We are not into binary options. We have daily expiries. We have weekly expiries. Sorry, we also have monthly sorry, and quarterly Bank expiries. Nifty, a small breakout. A small breakout in Bank Nifty. Sorry to break your day. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, break so I think your conversation. Bank Nifty action. Right, so so you can ca carry on. Bank Nifty has given a small breakout, but the bigger breakout is still pending. It has broken that level that I was talking, uh, 42, 487. Now it is above that level. Let it consolidate at least uh, 15, 20 minutes there, so that it it will get the firepower to go to uh, the the day high. Thank you. Sorry. Carry on. Carry on. You guys carry on. I just wanted to. Yeah. yeah, just to close, uh, bring that uh, discussion with uh, Pankaj to a logical conclusion. You would have, all of you have got a mail in your inboxes dated 15th November from Traders Carnival or from me in my name. Please check that out to use that offer. Thank you. Thank you guys. We are here. We are outside. We have our booth. If there's anyone who has any questions, do feel free to walk in and, you know, interact with us. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone. And can we get the screen one on, please? Okay, great. So this is the breakout which uh, Siju was mentioning, but again, it lacks the momentum with the volume. Though it moves higher, still it is lacking the momentum which we wanted it. They are just trying to go into adjust the premiums again. So let's look at the premium tab. The trending OI, has it changed the direction? Still not yet. And as the option prices or on the other side, they are giving me any confirmation. They are just eating away around 45% on the call side, taking away around 70 to 80% on the put side. Nothing interesting as an option buyer. And you can clearly see the premiums are almost literally there. The call side premiums are a little higher. So still not giving me the conviction. It's absolutely fine. Nifty is on the verge of a breakout. Yes. We Nifty just needed to see the momentum carried above this level of 18,450 and then a further move above that 18,468 to get a confirmation that they are going to be moving higher. So there is a small breakout. No, not yet. Uh, it has to break a little more. Very close to the breakout in Nifty. It is breaking out, not yet. 
Yes, Nifty is giving that momentum. Now it has to, it has one more resistance, which is 18,400. So last time when it broke 18,400, there was a good sell off in the morning. So this time I'm not at all expecting that. If Nifty is again breaking 18,400, I'm not at all expecting another sell off. But it has to break and sustain. So if you look at it, the Reliance is the one which has been pushing up. In the last one hour, Reliance has moved at least 0.5% up, which is what has been pushing the Nifty higher. But if that is in the Bank Nifty, they needed some more push coming in from HDFC. It has been uh, giving you a small move, but the major move is coming in from ICAZ Bank. Apart from that, the access in the last one to us. Yeah. So we needed some more hands pushing up higher. Whether we'll be able to get in golden, uh, like in a crossover, no. At least a crossover, wherein the super trend can pierce the uh, VWAP, which is something which I'm looking for. But again, absolutely right as paradise. Look at the complacence of the call sellers. 42,500 call option, 423,000 contracts open in Bank Nifty. 42,500, which is very close to the, very close to the spot price, just 25 points away. And the amount of open interest that is built up today, that is three, today's addition is 300,000 contract. The total outstanding contracts are you look at the live data there. It is close to one crore and then uh, 71 lakhs on the put side. Awesome. So the more uh, OI is in uh, 42,500, the breakout is going to be the last year. If it happens, I'm not saying that, okay, it is gonna happen, but if it comes in, it is gonna be the last year uh, breakout provided uh, this kind of OI builds up. And 18,400 OI is also extremely huge. So the option sellers are complacent on both the side, uh, even in Nifty and Bank Nifty, both the places. So the breakout, which I was mentioning, if that happens, it is not gonna be the small one today. So I'm, I'm willing to take a small risk. Whatever trades I have open, I'm just keeping it. So if it goes to loss, it is okay, because that is the price we pay for uh, being in the business or uh, uh, getting the right uh, ride in the market. So if it doesn't happen, I'm okay to lose that amount. Okay, so with so much of things happening, we are into off eight stage of the day. Okay, so we are just three hours into the action, 12.30, so another three more hours to go, but looks like it's a very, very long day. Right? You guys have done it by 10 a.m., but you should be feeling like, no, we don't have much of options other than to sit through the whole day. <laughs> okay, that is nothing exactly much. exactly the same empty homes in the last, since the last two hours. Nothing's changing. Absolutely. So get a move, and then just move it around. Slowly, a candle by candle, getting a move. Exactly. Good news is, at least the Dow is on your side for the bulls. So the Dow is around 110 points. The Dow futures, which is having a live tick over there, 111. So we would love to see the Dow moving towards 150, 200. Then the bulls will feel, okay, it's time for us to do some short covering. Get a move on the upside. For the market to move up, there should be enough amount of shorts outstanding in the market. So market gave good opportunity for creating the shorts yesterday, day, be day before yesterday, and this morning. So that is what is making me st still staying in the long trade. Guys, if you look at the data for the last one hour, look at what has happened for 42,500 and 42,400, 300 and so, so on. You are seeing, starting to see some kind of a short covering and some kind of a long buildup starting to emerge on the deep in the money strikes, the short covering, like an all in the OTM strikes, a long buildup, which is clearly suggesting someone is it trying is. to buy the lower end of the market. Shiva, it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. It, it is, is here. It is here. The breakout is here. We need that volume. It is coming. It is there. I can see that. Are you pushing something? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. See that? Let see that? Let 40 to 500. Let us give. Let us give. Let us give. It touched. So now, the day high is the next hurdle in the back nifty. Absolutely. And uh, even in nifty, yeah, it, the breakout is coming, 18,400, 42,500. Yeah, it is, it is there. We just needed to gr make these guys move above that 42,598, with the volume. And Bayes will do every trick to resist 42,500 and 18,400. 18, uh, guys, do you see that crossover happening? But the only difference is there is no volume on that one. 
I would have preferred a good volume on that particular candle. 40 to 500. It is not getting sold off. It is not getting sold off. It is staying there, which is a dangerous combination. On the futures, you can clearly see some volume is picking up. The long buildup is happening on a five minute chart if you are looking at it, which is a good sign if you are a bull. Come on, from bearish to bullish, will you be able to change the direction now? Will the bulls be able to change the direction? Starting to write more on the put side, cover some of the calls, and then take the market moving higher. Because they don't have any other major reasons for the market to fall today. The global markets are now seems to be in a positive territory, and if you look at the data, like at the, uh, what to say, the dollar index at 106, the USD INR is trading at 81.5, the Brent has been falling for the past few days, there is not much pressure on the bond yields as well. So Hang Seng, which was trading in the lower end, it has almost completely recovered the entire 400 point loss to 150 points now. The Nifty futures, which was trading at 30, 40 points, it has almost coming into the flat territory. The Dow futures is almost at 120 points in the green now. So all the moves, which is getting, it is almost getting there. We just needed one more large push with the volume. Just waiting for that candle. Just waiting for that candle. Which takes out the day high. This is something which I'm going to be keenly looking for. The bank nifty. And if you look at the nifty, it is almost even Stevens now. Earlier it was bearish. 367 to 293. Now both call and the put is having an equal weight. 3.32, 3.32. But that means the writers are just saying, we are absolutely controlling both sides. Unless and until we give up one side, you do not have any trade for you. Will the Bank Nifty be saying the same thing? 2.61 to 1.87. Will they be able to bullet down to 2.2 on both the sides and then put one side of an action wherein the market can continue to rock? Or else we will just be like in playing around in the territory one more time. So as long as the, it is staying above the VWAP, if the OI is going to be supporting, then we can be bullish. At this juncture, the market is showing you bullishness, but the OI data is still bearish because the riders are still holding their positions on the 40 to 500, 600, and 700. We needed these guys to cover their position. But if you look at it with three hours to go for the expiry, look at the premiums. Still, the premium seems to be almost 63 rupees on 40 to 500. Both call and the put 60, 60. Combined premium of 125, 27. So the level which I'm watching is going to be on 40 to 900. Usually the day's high or the day's low will be getting broken with the volume. If you get to happen to see a large bar followed by with another one, absolutely it is going to be like in a buy on dip market from there on. Can the VIX keep falling? Below 15, 14.5, so on, it'll be really good. For a bull, right. So, can you switch to uh, four quart the f multi view? Yeah. Multi view, please. Okay, so you can check it here. So I was roaming around here. So right now you can check how much profit I have. So close to six point seven lakhs the profit for four point eight five. Okay, so in percentage wise, it may be close to 1.3 percentage return what I'm getting right now. So the thing is actually, <coughs> you could check it here. I'm having less puts because markets, it started picking a profit in the puts in the morning. So my system will look for the trend in the morning. In the noon, most of the time it plays for the theta because the theta is very high. So, oh, so right now, so some of the puts I booked a profit. So that, that is the reason why we removed the hedges. So it's no longer needed. And right now more call is there and less put is there. 
it slightly bearish view by any chance market is going up again some of the call stop loss will be hit and it will be taking new uh, straddles for the uh, data so uh, right now as i said actually we are having close to 1.25 percent returns so let's see how market goes and market will periodically book the i mean the my system will periodically book the profit at the same time will be taking a new strategies so as i said morning it plays more for a trends because most of the time 70 percent of the trend happens in the morning historically so it plays for the trend in the morning in the noon it plays for the data so that at the same time there is a it, it is also playing for a delta in the noon but less so for example 20 percent for a delta and 80 percent for the data in the morning actually it plays 50 percent a delta 50 percent data so our time goes on so around 2 30 235 it plays only for data it doesn't play for delta at all so that is how it happens right so wherever delta is there play for delta wherever data is there play for data okay so looking at the current look at that the almost it is heading towards the territory of 42,598 it was a day high in the morning so it is the level at 936 which needed to be broken with volume are we going to be getting the bulls getting into the action over there this is a candle. If they wanted to threaten the bears, this is the moment. The Dow is on their side with 90 points. Will they be able to break that level? 40 to 598. Chase them away with the volume. So whatever the move which would have happened, the bears would have been feeling the pressure now. Will they be covering the position at this current juncture? Looks like a minor resistance over there. So there is a tough fight which is going on between a buyer and the seller over there. We just needed the momentum to be there. Without the momentum, this is not going to be fun. Good. No, no, good. Good, good. Can we get the momentum about that one? Okay, looks like that's the momentum wherein it has been lacking the area where we wanted these guys to be taking it higher. They are lacking the momentum over there. Can they push it up? Get screen one, please. Screen one. Big. Perfect. I think not this one. Yes, it is. Okay. Forty two five ninety eight, the key momentum. The intraday high. So it looks like a temporary halt over there for the bulls. It's good for me because I'm little short in the market. So if market comes, uh, comes down, I'll make a little uh, good profit. So because I'm playing for theta right now. <laughs> So Jagan, it's you who are doing that then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Give us some opportunity, man. Come on, we have been sitting here all day and you cannot be just milking all the money yourself. <laughs> okay, so the market is around 42,586, another attempt towards at 42,598. Will they be able to do it? Okay, is it going to be the intraday reversal level? Is it a double top for the day? Or is it going to be a breakout on after one, two candles, chasing the weak ones away?
So Bank Nifty is giving uh, some more red candles. So we need to see the red candles also. Otherwise, uh, it will be unidirectional mode. Let's wait. Pure, pure right is play. You can't do much at this juncture. Okay, is there going to be like an increase in the OI? There is a slight increase. We can look at it, 2.68 to 2.59. Slowly it is decreasing and then from 1.85 to 1.94. But this is not again convincing to me. On the Nifty, the whole day it has been bearish. This is the first time you're getting to see some kind of an open interest going lower on the call side. The put side open interest is going higher. But considering it's even Stevens, though the direction change was there from 1145, it is not going to be a convincing one for an option buyer to take it in a large quantity. I would love to see a large short covering happening before getting into the picture. Back to 40 to 500. Back to 40, 40 to 500. I would love to see what happens with this open interest in uh, 18400 CE in ba Nifty and uh, 40 to 500 CE in Bank Nifty. That is beyond any logical number. Okay, another attempt towards that level of 42,598. Will they be able to break out? Crucial candle on the way. Time is around 12.50. We have another two and a half hours approximately. Will they be able to take this level out with the volume? And on the way, you can clearly see you have oh. multiple levels of support. WMA is playing for you, Super Trend, the PSR, and another then the VWAP. Bank Nifty is another breakout, smaller one. Not enough. I think people in the bank, you guys needed to push the volume. If you are buying something, please do that now. So 4298, another rejection from that level. Someone who has been selling it from that level, he is not letting the market to go above that. The guy who is playing with the short selling, he has been the one who needed to be defeated today. If someone wanted to take this market higher, catch hold of that guy who has been shorting it from 42,598 and we needed to make the market move above that level. And as long as he is not covering his position on the option side, he is not going to let you go to that area. So look at that on a 60 minute time frame. This is the guy who played it in the morning, who was building up the short position. He is not allowing the long build up guy to take the position higher. And guys, I think, can you please put uh, uh, screen number two on the screen? I love the chart of Axis Bank and HDFC Bank. This is Axis Bank. It is uh, just coming out of a consolidation and uh, the next round of rally is very much on the card for Axis Bank. And uh, I'll say, I will go back to the HDFC bank chart. See the kind of consolidation it is happening near uh, uh, 1623 and 16, the VWAP of HDFC bank is 1624.35. So it is just one rupee away from the VWAP. It is giving a very long consolidation. If it breaks out along with Axis bank, that will be the, that will be the story for today. And we don't see much negativity from anywhere else and Bank Nifty is clearly holding 40 to 500. So if you look at the 40 to 500 CEP price, there is absolutely not much disparity. Both are like, calls may be slightly expensive compared to the put. I think uh, that, is, uh, that is okay, that, that's how the market is uh, getting priced. So I'm just waiting to see when it is going to break the day high and when the, when the Nifty is going to break 18400 and sustain above that. So let's... Watch for that. Thanks, Shiva. Back to you. Okay. Screen one, please. So this is what I was talking about, the support level. So when you have the WMA, the super trend, and then the VWAP playing for you, you see the blue line? That guy will give you the first level of support. If you are, that, that I call it as a pawn. So I play with the chess. When you look at my two-candle theory, you will understand that. That is my pawn. 
he will be the weaker support. Then the next one is going to be the super trend, which is my knight. And then the following one, which is my VWAP, which is my biggest support, that is called as a rook. So when you're playing a chess, you make the moves, right? And these, as a king, you needed to know where you needed to play and keep your players. So they are keeping the player at the WMA, at this current juncture. If you're not feeding your pawn or your soldiers properly, this guy will easily give up and he will play for your opponent. That's exactly, he's doing it now. He's still treating the king, he's saying the king, don't worry, I'm there to support you. I, as long as I'm there, you're not going to be, your fortress is all good. Queen is my open interest. The open interest is suggesting that Queen is trying to make its move. Short covering has been happening there. But the bigger picture is they shouldn't be breaking the VWAP with the volume on the downside. Then the king has to give up his position. So as in buyer, on the option side, they know there is a game which is going on on 42,598. They just needed to break that shackle and then move it higher. So the line which we drawn in the morning, it is clearly acting as a resistance. And now the first line of support to be coming in at the blue line, which is the WMA. Can we expect one round of support there before they make a move? Let's see. So there is some selling happening in the Axis Bank. I was expecting uh, it to break on the upside, but actually it has come down a bit, but HDFC Bank is still consolidating at the same range. So Axis Bank after making that down move, let's see what is the next candle doing in Axis Bank. The trending away data, put side for the first time. For the day, we are seeing a put away combined of seven strikes from other money is around two crore. Call side, it has been consolidating that 2.62 to 2.64. Almost from 11.15, it has been in the same range for the last two hours now. Here, 1.9 to 2, 10 lakh has been added. Not much of writing on both the call and the put at this current juncture. So who's going to build the cat? Is it going to be the call writers or the put writers? We needed to keep a watch, keep a watch. So if I look at the show trade history on this one, let me see if someone is pumping in some volume at this current juncture. So this is the live tick which you are getting to see the trades, whatever that has been happening in the bank nifty. So on the right side, which you see every transaction which is happening in the bank nifty, Whenever you see a large volume getting created, either on the upside or on the downside, we will get to know. Immediately we can look at to attack. Okay, another move towards the WMA level. Can they get some support? In the Nifty, he has been supporting the king. Will he be supporting the king over here as well in the bank Nifty? So this is the LND chart which we were looking at in the morning. So they're just trying to play around above that VWAP level, but positionally this is looking like an at least the bulls will have some control. They are not letting it fall. So they're just playing between the super trend and the VWAP territory. For one to two person on intraday or positional, that's the stock which I'll be looking for. Okay, another move. Okay, come on, get it there. Yes, they are getting it slowly but steadily towards the territory. Look at the volume. There is some heavy volume coming in. 2,200, 2,800, 1,650. All the buyers on the call side has been, on the future side has been coming in. But there is no proper follow-up from others. There is only one set of buyers who are coming in and punching in the volume with 2,000 and 3,000. Will they be able to get another move? The premiums on 42,200, it has just moved from 300 to 330, 30 rupee move. So this particular one has close to given you a good move. 
from 42,579, the low 42,608. And if you look at the delta on this one, just go into the option chain page, look for the delta, 42,200 and everything has nothing for the writers, absolutely delta at one and 0.87 for 42,300. So if you are like in getting a one person, uh, sorry, one point move, you'll be paying 85 paise, 87 paise. So good, 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 keep it going, keep it going. I don't want it to be in one off move. And if you look at the Nifty chart, perfect support at the WMA levels, and it is just trying to move up higher. The first round of a defense has been done. Will the bank Nifty be able to break out this level? Another eight more seconds on this one, and if they're able to stay above this level, watch out for the yesterday's high in the afternoon. This was the high that got created somewhere in the afternoon. Will they be able to close it? Another? So yes. Shiva, uh, just one update, uh, generic update. So till now the market was sleeping. Right now it is time for us to take long position and sleep until 3.20, until the time we need to cover the position. And look at the small bit of an, uh, what to say, a long buildup happening here on the futures now. As the market is moving higher, the first time some buyers are coming in, taking some positions over here. This OI data will help you to know whether the buyers are coming in or not. Absolutely, yes. Will they be able to maintain this and then move it higher? I would have been so happy if this move would have happened with volume. There is only a small set of buyers who are moving in, who are playing in the option segment, who would be doing all those adjustments, but nothing major. So here, one crore, 83 lakhs. It is, again, one has to give up today. One has to give up today if the market needed to rally a bit. Who is that going to be? Considering they have moved it above that level, they will use the 42,598 as a base now to support it. And if they're breaking it with the volume, then that was a fake move just to trap the people. Always remember, whenever there is a key resistance, intraday or positional, that always needed to be taken out with volume. Without the volume, if we are going to be chasing that, it is going to be a weak one. I would love to see the trending OI changes drastically. Can the call writers cover some more position from 2.68 to 2.57? I would love to see 40, 50 lakhs getting an exit in the next one, two minutes. And if they're able to push it further, that'll be an amazing one. The writer still doesn't want it to give up that. Look at that position. Looking at number of trades that's been done, more trades have been done on the call side, sorry, the futures on the long side compared to the put or on the downside. And even you can look at the quantity that is being traded on the upside is much more than the downside ones. Another 30 more seconds, they are trying to defend that 42,598. They're just keeping one point away from that level. 40 to 595, what the way the bulls are like and picking it up to 40 to 599. Another 10 more seconds to go. Who's going to gain this candle? Is it the bulls or the bears? Looks like the bears are winning it once again and they are trying to close it below the level of 40 to 598. What is going to be the follow up action from the bulls? Will it be able to take it above that level? Two point five seven to two point zero two. Now that the bulls will be feeling the heat, okay, we have tried to take it above, but still these guys are giving up a fight. Not giving up the fight with that. Will it be another opportunity for them to push it higher? The premiums on this one from three thirty it has come down to ten rupees. So if someone who's not looking for volatility, who is looking for Shivas, I don't think this expiry is going to be for me. Time for you to stay light. People who love volatility, who wanted a quick action of 30, 40 points moving in one single candle, 100 points moving in one single candle, get ready for some action. Seems to be a fake breakout without the volume. Only put in 
Get a move. Forty to five hundred. It's absolutely a writer's paradise here. From 122 to 50, 88, it went to 100 or 90 odd levels and then back again at 65 now. But from the lower level, it would have given you almost 60, 70%, which is a very good move. But looking at the OI, on 40 to 400, 33 to 78. So the range is pretty much set now. Here, there is not much of writing. On the put side, it is much there. And look at 40 to 600. 69 to 25, so the range is between 42,400 to 42,600, so the writers on the call side is defending that level, and you can clearly see not much writing is happening here, so the buyers are saying, sure, like and still we are good. The writers on the put side will be saying, sure, we are not going to be letting it go below the 42,400 mark. And on the other end, 42,600, you can clearly see the writers are saying, 42,600 above, we are not going to be letting it go because these guys have been adding some positions. So somewhere in between, are we going to be getting an expiry at 40 to 500? The futures are trading at 40 to 609, and then the spot is trading somewhere around 40 to 525. 320 to 330, it is a range which is playing on 40 to 200. From a low of 42,478, you have gotten more of close to 130, 140 points. But nothing exciting to talk about for an index which usually moves at least 500,000 points in a single day. It is hardly moving for 100, 200 point range. People who would have thought the trading is going to be an interesting one would have felt in the last 10, 15 days it's going to be a boring game if the market is going to be like this. Let me quickly look at the futures data here. So this is on 42,500. And you can clearly see what they have been doing in the last few minutes now. So they have started adding more positions from 1130. And then the OI has been moving from 61 lakhs, 67, 70, 80, 87. But on the other hand, put o, uh, sorry, the call OI, which was consistent at that one crore mark, it is not moving anywhere. Though they have added the position, they are not giving up the positions on the other side, which is clearly indicating the writers are just controlling it. What I would love to see, this OI drastically reducing here, and these guys keep continuing to write something which they have been writing it from almost uh, 130 odd levels to 44. They are getting like in a huge, huge premiums over there on 40 to 500. They just needed to keep up the momentum. Nothing more, nothing less. Two point six zero to two zero seven. I would love to see this getting towards the two point six mark. This is going below the two crore mark. Just playing around the region, forty two thousand six hundred. Someone who's looking for a breakout trade, watch out for that level. So I'm looking at 42,200 for my entry. The pure reason is 42,200 doesn't have, even 42,300 doesn't have like an, an uh, intrinsic value problem thumbs. So we can look at these two. If you look at the option premiums tab, you can clearly see there is not much of premiums left over there. Hardly anything. And both call in the put at 42,500 have a combined premium of 46, 46. Sometime back, one hour back, when we checked, it was around 65 each. So they are adjusting the positions in such a way the premiums are the ones which is going to be melting. Keep melting. Okay, the next candle forming below the 
42,598, heading immediately to 42,605. The time is around 1,9. Can we get a move at 1,30 or 2 or 2,30? We'll be eagerly awaiting that move. And let's look at the Dow. That was 120 points. That is not much of a problem over there. The VIX is staying stable at around 15. There has not been a problem with the VIX as well for the day. Nifty, which was down at 30, now it is at 19 points. So absolutely, all these guys are absolutely silent for the day. Global market front. FTSC was the only index in red uh, sometimes back. Now, now even now, that is also coming into the green. Just one point green, but still it is better because morning when we started the trading, that was around 50 points red. Germany was around uh, 120 or 130 points down. Now it is like 90 points in green. So global market is supporting and it is giving some cue. And look at Hong Kong. Look at the way Hong Kong recovered. It is just 124 points uh, down. And morning it was like 18,298, 18,300 was the low and uh, sorry, 17,700 was the low for the day. Now 18,141. So every market has given the recovery, just that our market, the bigger recovery is pending. It has given only small recovery and still you guys are not happy. We have given a recovery from the low and no like, and we are way. expecting this, a bigger move, right? <laughs> this is nothing. This <laughs> nothing. is nothing. Absolutely. Because we have been used to that. Yeah. We have been used to like in a large moves and that's the reason any recovery of 150 or 200 points from the lower level. Correct. We are not treating it good. At least for today, this is nothing. <laughs> Today's Traders Carnival expiry live trading. Mm. Never say never till 3.30. We might get something after 2, 2.30. Okay, another move, trying to break down below that 42,598. The intraday high is getting broken once more time. On the spot, it is 42,500 is being tested. And the day high is the, is the level that we would like to see. That has to be broken for uh, the bigger picture, bigger rally. And look at this guy on the WMA on the Nifty. Look at the way it has been equally climbing and then someone is trying to take a support at that particular level, which is clearly indicating to me, okay. excuse me, the mic please, okay. So it is clearly indicating to me the guys who are playing in the last 20, 30 candles, they are just giving a big support to the Nifty at that particular level. So if that is getting broken, watch out for the super trend. You can't be having multiple layers, like in the soldiers needed to be fed with enough firepower. You can't have like in multiple levels of testing, then the soldiers will give up. That's exactly will be happening now. They shouldn't be testing so many times on the WMA levels. Then it will become a weak resistance, weak support. So what I would love to see, break out higher. Otherwise, you can expect the Nifty all, Bank Nifty also to follow suit, go below the WMA levels, go test the super trend and then come back. A big support over there. For the Nifty, you can clearly see this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. This is not good if you're a bull. You are allowing your enemy to come closer and closer to your territory. Good news is, at least, the writers do not have much of premiums to write on the in the money strikes, so they have no other choice to move the futures to make money in case if they wanted to do it. 2.61 to 2.11. You can clearly see this 2.6 range is not getting increased on the call side, but the put side slowly from 1.7 to 1.7 to 1.89 to 2.1. The writers are feeling, Shiva, as we are coming towards the end of the day, we do not have much of premiums left. We will now start writing in the money and at the money strikes. That's something which they are doing now. Yeah. 
Let's get to see whether they are going to be doing another round of defense or are they going to be making another sharp move on the upside. Uh, screen three. Uh, so when the market looked like it was about to breach the day low, I had shifted the calls up till 18400, but then I got out of the calls at somewhere around 1718, and from there, I added 17, 18350 puts with around 18450 calls. So if you look at this, I still have around 11.5 minus the hedge credit. Uh, it would be somewhere around 11 point credit, which will again translate to another 1% from here on. So I'm up around 0.8%. 78k here, 80k here, I'm up around 0.8%, but I have another 1% to make. But am I going to make the entire, I'm, I'm going to realize the entire theta? No, of course not. Because there will be some delta moves and I might have to roll down the calls or roll away the ports, or some, some adjustments I might have to make. So even if I realize something like 5 points from this, I'll end up somewhere around 1.2, 1.3. So how I look at it is, it's, it's purely mathematical. So it's purely mathematical. So now I have, uh, this credit, 4 on the calls and 7.78 on the puts. So whichever reaches 10, I'll have to risk off. I'll have to take it away to the next strike. So that's what, because at this point, the gamma is highly probable. So if the market starts to break out, and if we see any break above 18400 levels, and if at all we breach this level, this level, these 18450 calls, they might reach even 10. 18450 calls might re even reach 10. So I don't want to do that. And at the same time, if we see a sharp reversal below this 20, 200 days, 20 moving average, probably I'll cut off these 18,350 puts and again sit back on 18,300 puts. Even with that, I'd still end up with around 1.2, 1.3%. Good enough. Okay, thanks, thanks, Praful. And uh, guys, can you just get it to screen one, please? And look at this particular one. The Nifty, which I was talking about, the support there at the WMA. One more attempt to protect that level, but the Bank 50 gave up, and then you can clearly see someone tried to buy it at the lower level, but they were not able to completely defend it because the Nifty, which has been testing multiple times, it is giving up. It is almost on the verge of giving up that level. The PSR has gone above, which is not a good sign, and most importantly, if they are closing it, they might just probably go and test the super trend level one more time and try to eat some more premiums. Bank Nifty, it has to support it in case if these guys have any hope of saving this Nifty at this current juncture. Look at that. Another move to support it. That particular level seems to be a very strong one to someone who was buying it in the last 20, 30 minutes. They are literally wanting to support the Nifty at 18,440 odd levels. Bank Nifty will be the savior. Will it be a savior to take it above that level? 40 to 5, 85. Another 20 more seconds. Yes, Jagan. So quarter view. Multi view. Yeah, multi view, yeah. Sorry. So, so I can check here. Now the profit is 8.7 lakhs. So it is playing for, get my position. It is playing for a theta right now. So as I said before, so if you look at the market right now, it is, it is not exactly, it is coming close to the 2% two, uh, 2 so it may be 1.8% is the return what I'm, we are seeing. So let me go and check the positions right now. And look at this, it is minus 212 delta. So it is looking for the market corrections. If market is not correcting right now in another half an hour, 45 minutes, it again builds up the positions for the delta neutral. Okay, so that's what it does. And look at this, the positions, the market here. It came down and then it it is close to 40 to 500. So it is going to be in the range. So that's what the premium says. The premium is at the minute is one, close to 120 or 130. 
I think the market goes up. That is the reason why the, my profit is coming down right now. So you can check it here. The profit is coming down because market goes up. And you can also look at the positions. This 17,000 and all, the 17 rupees and all, it booked the profit because it's looking for the margin. Rather than buying this one, it is closing this one. So you can check this call options I'm buying. It is just just 400 or 500 points away from the spot. The same way we will start buying the put options very close to the spot so that we will not lose a big profit. At the same time, if there is a big move in the market later, it's a gamma effect that can always come in the market after 2 or 3, 30, uh, 2.30. In such a cases, we will get a some profit. So let's see how it is going to close for today. Okay, another move. This time they have taken a good support. Probably the weekend's uh, stop losses would have been taken out in case if they've been using uh, just below the 40 to 575. Someone who wanted to capture the momentum, if you wanted to just play around for a quick scalp, this is the momentum. Uh, let's see whether they are going to be pumping in some more volume. Nifty perfectly took a support, one more attempt, and they are just trying to build that on the Nifty as well. Bank Nifty, as I said, it is a savior for them. And will they be able to take it high? A breakout, a clear breakout. From 230, 220, 230, it has moved almost like in 15, 20 rupees. So someone who just wanted to play around with the momentum. Absolutely no volumes. Can I get this to 230, 240, and this one to 230? Then it might just give you a small bit of an opportunity. So my stop loss for this trade is going to be around the stupid 10 level. In case if they are able to break this and then go lower, then there is no point in me holding that position. Because if you have been seeing the super trend for the whole day, they've been equally climbing from 40 to 500 to almost 40 to 570. Any move towards the WMA levels, we might just try to get some more and then use that opportunity. Around 220, 210, I will try to add up more, considering there is no problem with the delta here. So what is that which is making me to buy a call? So slowly in the last 15, 20 minutes, the buyers are coming in on the futures. And the most important reason is they are trying to hold this WMA for strong. And multiple items have been tried to break, but unfortunately it is not. And they are just giving all the efforts to keep that level above that level. 42, 598, after a while, everything is falling in place except the volume parameter. If they are able to push the volume, then that will be really good. Then it would be giving me conviction to go with like another 10, 15% of my capital into that. So now you can look at this 2.12, 2.57 OI coming down, but I wanted a gradual or like in a drastic move. I don't want like in a small move over there. So in a day, bull first, bear again, again getting into the bullish territory. So the position which we took, it went into 2K negative. Now again, it is getting into 2K positive. We are heading towards, will it be a 42,600 to 700? A big, big breakout. We can't then chase it. So we will see that, 249, 250. If it would have been coming towards the territory of uh, the super trend and then the WMA, we could have added some more positions. Just playing around in that zone. Can they? Can they not? So people who are wondering why it is like an adding of 50 quantities, it is purely because we have kept the lot size as two here. Looking at the trading OI, the graph view, 
Can you see this? This is what I would love to see. I wanted to see this OI crossing, doing a crossover here, the call OI coming down drastically, and look at the sentiment from almost 11.30. Slowly the sentiment is turning to be bullish, but it is still bearish. Once it crosses the zero mark, then I can consider it to be like in a bullish territory, but it is okay. At the lower level, some buying is emerging. Will they be able to take it? That's something which I'm keenly looking for. Forty two six one five. Nifty still trading well above that level. The WMA is somewhere around eighteen four forty three, seven points above that level. The good news is the OI is slowly building up. The longs on the futures are slowly coming in, trickling in, trickling in. I would love to see these guys creating more positions and then some more short covering happening. So they were able to create the day high break here, which is a good sign. Will they be able to continue with the momentum? They just needed to push it hard. One more push. So the futures is first indication which has been giving me someone is trying to build the positions here. So looking at the Dow, it is the same scenario. The Dow is giving me a move. Nope, it has fallen a bit from 120 points to 100 now. So close to 95 live. Mm. So any break below the super trend, and if they're consistently breaking the super trend with the volume, then it might be like in a problem. As a bull, that's the area which I'm looking for. So market is getting ready for the Europe opening. So right before Europe opening, there is some small weakness coming into the market. So I think that can backfire and that can, that can give the firepower to break the day high right after Europe opening. So Bank Nifty day high is 40 to, 40 to 554 or something. And uh, it went to 549, just uh, 5, point, 5, 6 points away. Then it came down and it is consolidating. The very good thing that I like about this, this thing is uh, it went near day high. Without breaking, it came little down and it is consolidating. That is a perfect combination for uh, next breakout. If it had touched the high and uh, came down like this, then I, would, I, I wouldn't have been happy. But right now, the way market is behaving, I'm so happy. And it is showing me exactly what I wanted to see. And it is, a, it is rare that I get this kind of movement from the market. Okay, let's see whether they are going to be taking a support or not. Another attempt. <laughs> One of those days where the market is going to be... Buyer. Buyer. Side, it is rewarding me or paying me the waiting charge on the sell side. So, yeah, I think my mic was off. So, what I was saying is, no. I'm into sell position and buy position. While the market is testing my patience and making me wait longer and longer on the buy side, it is uh, paying me the waiting charge on the sell side. Don't worry, it will give you the buy side moves as well now as it is happening. So it is slowly but steadily and again. I'm fine. giving all this talk, but my sell position is still in, uh, means buy position is still in loss. It's okay. Because I took By the, the initial breakout. Yeah. By, but sell positions are in profit. Okay, a move towards a bigger move, but the volume is something which I wanted it. Already you can see a big move happening they over there in that particular candle. Can we get another move with another 20, 30 points? Can this be? From almost day 2K high. to 10K now. Day high. Someone who is trying to get into the trade and it is keep moving higher. Can we get some volume? This is the move which we were expecting it. It is day 15K high, guys. It And day if high. you wanted to keep moving Market it, take it forward. This is absolutely the move which we were looking for. And you can close your positions. And if you are wanting to do that. What a move, right? Yes. Let Did it you sustain. guys enjoy it? Now let it sustain. 
No big sell off now. Guys, get the screen one, please. But again, the problem, the volume. So Nifty, I would love to see some more volume. Nifty has broken uh, 18,400, and Bank Nifty has broken now uh, 40. Get one they handle for you. Now it get is the money done. Get out. <laughs> I know Jekyll's heart is like in breaking. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Prof, <laughs> look at his face reaction. My profit is coming down. All we wanted is one candle, I told you. And you guys can enjoy the ride again. We will get in again. We will wait for that opportunity. And what we did, we exited at the right time, and then we are waiting for it. And the Euro is opening just uh, three seconds to one, zero. The countdown for the Euro is done. Germany is 100 points up. Wall Street is again 100 points up. FTS is coming into the green once again uh, uh, after moving into the red. So the, the Europe opening is again favoring the bulls. So as a scalper, this is one of those opportunities wherein we went in at around 128, sorry, uh, around 121, I believe. Let me just see the timings. So we went at 123, five minutes we were in the trade, and then we made around, how much is that? So Nifty is again coming back. Yes, coming back, 11K back on Nifty's that one. Back strong. Okay, will they be able to sustain this? So I'll just run through all the stocks of the Bank Nifty. HDFC Bank still consolidating, still consolidating. It has the firepower to give a blockbuster move in the, in the, the last hour. ICC Bank, very long consolidation, very long consolidation near the day high. And uh, Kotak Bank, that is another guy which is again consolidating. So then Axis Bank, SBI, Indusind Bank. So all these banks are giving very long consolidation, which can actually bring in another another move. So most of these consolidations is, is coming after uh, breaking out. So that is the reason I'm so confident. Okay, so look at this particular data. This is what we were looking for. Once the Bank Nifty made a day's high, the call writers who were holding the position, they have started covering it here. So if you go and look at 42,300, 400, and 500 on the call side, you can clearly see that's a reason you needed to be smart enough to get in there and then steal some money from the sellers over there. So if you go and look at 42,400 and 500, you can clearly see the short sellers have started to cover their position. From 188, it went to 250. And look at the position from 19, it has come down to 13. Slowly, the long unwinding is happening. In the morning, I told you one weakness of the secret of the buyers. If you are squaring off your position, they know you are at a weekend, they will start to write. You will see some... Uh, what do you say, aggressive writing going to be happening on 42,300 put and 42,400. Again, the same scenario, 110 to 150. The writers have started to run. And here, you can start to see the buildup happening. 27 lakh to 81, 40 to 400 in the backs of the sellers on the put side. 40 to 500, this is the area wherein the game was on. Morning, the call side, you were seeing a higher open interest. Now you can clearly see the put side 99 lakhs to 90 lakhs, it has come down drastically. So almost 11 lakh quantity got unwounded in the last 15, 20 minutes, or in the last two minutes actually. 130 to 140, this is data is. So clearly, every bit of a move, which is now slowly starting to suggest that can be like in a big bounce, but the danger is, unless and until the trending OI completely turns around, don't go aggressive at this current juncture. This is a good sign trying to help us to get on a roll to be on the call side. Earlier, only the chart was giving us a clue. Now the data is also about to back you up. When the data is giving you the move from 2.60 to 2.38 to 2 lakh, 2 crore, sorry, and then the put OI increasing, that's going to be the game. And today is not market is not cooperating for higher profit. It is cooperating only for Shiva. So I'm going for a lunch. What is that? It, market is cooperating for bigger profit only for you, so I'm going for a lunch. After the lunch, let me check the profit and loss. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, cool guy. You wanted to go for a break, have a lunch break, and then come back? That's the way it should be. So another move. 
any move towards the lower level. Once the trading OI turns into the green, once the trading OI shows me the bullishness, probably it will be like in a buy on dips market with already the data supporting me to stay above that VWAP super trend and uh, WMA. All we need is another move to just get there. Slow and steady. We will wait, wait, wait for the whole day to get a trade done. Currently somewhere around 245. I'm just looking at 42,000, sorry. 42,000, where it is, the strike price, 42,300. Two forty three to two twenty. Get me a move. And the Dow is trading somewhere around one hundred and twenty points now. On the futures, every bit in the book is going to be helping the bulls today. If they turn to like and make a loss at this current juncture, watch out for this eye. Watch out for the volume. And can you see what's been happening here? The OI is clearly suggesting the bulls are getting in. Bulls are getting in. If you look at this on the short trade history, you will see more of buyers coming in with large quantity compared to the sellers here. So the buyers are slowly coming in, trying to buy as much as possible. They feel that this market has a potential to now run it higher. So as an option buyer, most of the time we go naked, right? So as a scalper, I go 99% of the time naked. I don't like and try to hedge my position. But the most important thing is I needed to wait for the right opportunity. And now, can you see this particular candle? Do you see a gap between these two candles? Try to get to see that the gap is going to be getting filled. These are the orders wherein some of the like in, like in large orders which will not be getting filled. So if you see all these gaps in intraday three minute gap, those are the times that we use it for scalping. Okay, so all those orders, 90% of the time, they try to get themselves filled. And just trying, once a gap is filled, I'm trying to fill my orders there. Just go along with that. And just adding a couple of more positions. But what I would love to see is another breakout happening. Can I get to see the trending OI? 2.43 to 2.2. I would love to see that 2.2 on the call side, 2.4 on the put side. 355, 356. Can they keep moving higher? Yes, another move. The gap has been filled and they are trying to push it up. Good news is the buyers are coming in. Someone who's looking at it. On the call side, it has to be the time. Okay, can we get a move now? Oh, triple five, double five. 42 triple five, double five. Mm -hmm. That was the price for, price for a moment. Another day high is approaching. Yes, yes, almost there. The literal move will happen after 2 p.m. So yes. they are close to that level. 42, 643 yeah. is a this high. It's just 42, 638. Trying to break the shackle, move it higher. Look at Nifty. Look at Nifty approaching the day high. So Nifty, though these guys are both combining together now, the bank Nifty has to be making a move. And the red candle. Nope. 2.43 to 2.2. 2. Come on, get us some more covering over there. Finally, the bank Nifty is in the green. And what can potentially happen now is there are a lot of people who got trapped in a 40 to 500 CE short and uh, 18400 CE short. So every time market gives a retracement of 10, 20 points, these people will start covering, which will propel the market again higher. So that is the reason when, when, when there are trapped shorts, the market usually grinds up and the corrections may not sustain. And eventually 
towards the end of the day, the people who literally get trapped, they will exit uh, all the shots uh, towards the very end of the day. That is the reason you see the spike after 2.45, 3 p.m., 3.15 p.m. and all, you see the bigger spike because of those people. And guys, I'm, I'm saying all this confidently, doesn't mean that the market should obey me. Market will do its own uh, movement. Certain times I'll be completely wrong. The market can take a U-turn and go completely against me. I accept all of that. But when I, when I am in a trade, when I have a view, my view is pretty strong. That's all. It's not that, okay, since I'm saying like this, I'm expecting 100% like this. No, I'm giving very high probability for uh, that to happen. That's what it is. Okay, it, it is inching up. Like, and though it is not a vertical move, but you can clearly see every bit of a move is trying to be like, and the first level of support has been like, and taken care. The Nifty has done its job. So it took a couple of supports and then it is moving higher. Now it is a turn of the Bank Nifty to do the same. So the positions which we are holding, it is slowly but steadily heading towards the 30 to 30K. We needed some more push, some more push. So the current position which we have bought around 400 quantities, uh, like in giving in a, like in a PNL of close to 2K. Can they keep moving towards the lower level? So for some reason, if they're able to bring it towards its territory, and this year, I'll just go for one round of unsupport trade, nothing else, because the futures has been like an on and buying spree. Only for that particular parameter, I will just go for some buy. So after the short covering, is it some kind of a profit booking, which is the long unwinding happening? Looks like it, almost close to 2.4 crow, uh, sorry, 2.4 lakhs unwinding is happening here. Eighty-seven to one crore now. Forty to five hundred will be the base. Can we get a move? This you can expect it on the market when it is giving you a move without the volume. So what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to add some positions over here as it is coming near to the WMA levels. So that is someone who's trying to spoil the party, but look at that, Shiva, it is another move. Look at HDFC Bank, it is doing its job, which was long pending, it is doing its job. Exactly, but still it is okay for us as long as it is not breaking it with the volume. So it is almost now 0.34, so it is again trying to support the market. So that is a big, big move which has been happening, consolidating it and then making a move. Can they? Can they not? Another move, 600 quantity. Can they keep it moving higher? Or are they heading towards that super 10 territory? The next candidate is Indusind Bank. And Axis is taking down. Indusind is going up. HDFC is, uh, after giving the rally, it is, it is, it is coming down. So it is a pure index management which is going on. One up and other down. One more push towards a lower territory. Will it be there? Hundred and one on the Dow, so there is nothing much which is happening in the global markets. Where is my training? This data is going to be crucial. So still at 2.4 to 2.2, though it is trying to break out the day's eye, I would love to see the volume, or sorry, the OI also making a day's eye here. That's something which I'm going to be keenly watching for. Heading lower, come on, getting to the support territory. 
It has broken the WMA. It is heading towards the super trend area. I would try to average my positions over here with the VWAP as my stop loss. Come on, get it there. One more candle. Just added few positions over there. So now we have close to 1,000. I would love to go up to like in uh, 2,500 on this one. Let's see. Can they break that level? Just fool the people because it is all falling with the low volume and RSI is heading towards the 50 territory. Can they get it there? It is the weekends, you would be seeing a lot of long unwinding happening on the call side. Look at that 14 lakh of unwinding which has been happening on the call side. 40 to 400, 4 lakh 46. Shots are covering but the premiums are not moving higher which is giving me the confidence, yes. You can some more time, hold the positions. And here again the same story. From 188 they've given you a move till almost 250, now it is at 231. The longs who would have been taking the position, they're all exiting the position at this current juncture. Are they going to be trapping me at the super trend? Let's see. So we have around 1,000 quantity on this one. Where is the nifty guy? He is again trying to take a support at that super trend. Okay, for the first time, I think Jagan must be happy now. Looking at the way things are, Jagan, once he has gone for the lunch, he would be saying, okay, Shiva, I'm happy now. So almost from a 30K, now it has come down to almost 4K, 5K now. So the super trend, which was supposed to be not breaking, it has broken, but don't give up till the candle is getting closed. We have another one minute and 40 seconds left on this one. It's a low volume day. So that's the way they get to play the game. Can they break it? Holding up pretty well. Absolutely a writer's paradise now. So the position which we are holding is 40 to 200. And if you look at the 40 to 200 here, Absolutely no premium for these guys, unless and until they keep moving like this. So from 278, it went to 347. Now they are pulling it down to 318. So they're just going to be playing in a range. Get another move. But the bigger problem is, if they break the super trend, the range will become larger for me to play because usually the super trend to VWAP will be the range wherein it is going to be very difficult for the option buyer to play. That's the area wherein they will be creating more positions and then keep riding it. I don't want this level to be given up so easily. We have another six or seven more seconds to go and if they're able to maintain this and then form a larger, large candle on the upside, then it'll be good. If they are breaking it, considering the time, they will have a bigger advantage. Another attempt to protect it, it is there, but still, though it is there, it is not there completely. Nifty is holding up. Will the bank Nifty be able to take a support and then move it higher? In the meantime, trending OI, 2.45 to 217. I would love to see some more action happening here. They are starting to add another five more lakhs. Cool down of positions of four lakhs here. Okay, not bad. But is it going to be a trap for the sellers again? Let's see.
So again, we are back to 2022K from almost 7K to 2023. So super trend is pretty much protected at this juncture. As I told you, the first line of a defense, which is the WMA, they protected it. Next, once the WMA is given up, super trend will be your second line of a defense. That is getting protected before they go near to the VWAP. That is going to be the final area wherein they just needed to unwind. But the good news for me is, as a bull, the Dow is not letting me down. So the Dow is currently at around 130 points. As long as the Dow is going to be playing that game, it is still good for me. The OI, which was all along been on the buy move, for the first time you're getting to see some kind of a profit booking happening at the higher levels. Another 40 more seconds. Will they be able to close it above the WMA? Looks like they are heading towards the territory. Yes, it is. But will they be able to close it strong? Another 20 more seconds to go. This would have shaken out a lot of the weak bulls who would have been there in the system. Nifty again doing the same exact thing. Both travel together, trying to take a perfect support of the super trend and then moving it, inching it up higher. Okay, looks like a fall. Interesting. The premiums are the ones which is crashing, though the bank nifty is still trading above that 40 to 598. Can they keep it here, or are they going to be heading towards that VWAP territory? Such a close call on the like an OI data, 2.46 to 2.15. Very close, very close. One more attempt. Okay, almost heading towards the super trend level now. Will they be able to protect that level? Super trend. This is the time. There is not much of things which they will be able to do, taking it lower. You can clearly see 42,400, they have been writing it aggressively. So on the call side, they have been covering the position. On the put side, it has moved from 49 to 80. So they have been adding more positions here. So there is no point for them to taking the market lower, which is clearly a good sign. So 42,400. Let's look at 42,500. 94 to 102. This is the area wherein you're going to be getting a tough fight. The market spot price is trading at 40 to 500 odd range. And both the sides, you have a premium of combined premium of 60 and 40. And if I'm going to be keeping the market at the same exact place, I will be able to write a premium of close to 80, 90 rupees on this particular strike alone. So will they be able to keep it at this particular level, right for the whole day? Or they're going to be doing a quick short covering to make the sellers on the call side to freak out. Hundred and seven on the Dow. The Dow, which was trading at hundred and thirty, hundred and forty, it has come down to hundred and seven.
One more move. When the market moves higher or lower with low volume, this is something which you can expect intraday volatility. It might trigger some of your stop losses, and then the market going to be consolidating, and then move it. Again, they might just come back, hit the stop losses, and then move it again. So literally, we are in the flat territory. So whatever the hard work which we have done, the whole day it has been coming to a nil. <laughs> Exactly. So another attempt to break the super trend. Will they be successful this time? Nope. They are trying to level this. Trying to break the shackles there. Come on, get towards the VWAP area. That's going to be an area wherein I can add some positions. If the VWAP is getting broken with volume, you needed to pack your bags as bull and then like and try to go for the opposite direction once it has moved with the volume. But the problem here is, as it is heading closer and closer to the expiry, you will be getting to see a lot of expiry moves getting played out after 2.30. Unless and until you are a keen trader who wanted to trade till 3.30, you should definitely avoid it after 2.30. Okay, another attempt to protect that super trend level. And can it be a hammer now? Another 30 more seconds on this one. <clears throat> one fifty six is the time. There is another red candle. One more red candle. The time this is nearing two o'clock. <coughs> And uh, uh, can you please share uh, screen number two? There is some kind of writing which has been happening. Screen number two, please. So you can clearly see here. So market is exactly at uh, 40 to 500. I, th uh, I think it is, uh, it is taking the support. So post 2 PM, I am expecting the market to move up. I have been waiting, waiting, waiting for a long time. Now I am buying some calls in this uh, option buy account. I, option buy account, I, oh, it is going up. I didn't get for a fair price. It was 120 when I was trying to take it. Now, by the time the order executed, it is like 130. So anyways, I have taken some position in this account. This account, uh, I already had some put short. That put short right now, I booked uh, profit. And uh, then only I, I went into the call long. So this account, I do have uh, 40 to 400 CE long and 40 to 500 CE long. So that is the trade opened in that account. And uh, the, the first account, option selling account, I still have uh, the, the 42, 500 PE short. So which was short at 88 rupees, now 38 rupees, but still lot of premium left. Okay, and I think I still have a uh, good amount of margin left, uh, which I am willing to risk for uh, a long trade. So that I'm waiting for 220, somewhere around 220, I will, I will probably, if everything stays good, I'll probably buy more call options, which is in the money. Because right now, it is, it is not uh, that great to buy out of the money options. Thanks, Shiva. OK, thanks, Yuju. And screen one, please. This is what I was referring to you guys, like in uh, screen one. OK, so if you look at this, I don't want the super trend to be broken. If you look at the range now, super trend got broken. The super trend on the higher end, it is almost at 42,640. And the uh, VWAP is somewhere around 42,560. So the range is pretty big as an option buyer to play it now. So it has to go for the resistance and then break it and then move it higher, or it has to come and take the support for me to average my position. So as long as it is going to be praying there, I told you about the WMA. This guy will try to give you as much support as possible. Once he feels that the king has given up, he will be the resistance point for you first. So that guy has to be like in cleared with volume 
then you needed to clear the super trend. It will take enormous amount of effort for the bulls to do it again. That's the reason I don't want these guys to be giving up. And if they're giving it up, you can expect the profit to be getting eroded pretty fast. Looks like the move is just to make sure that all the weak land stop losses would have been placing it below the, uh, what is it, the super trend. They all will be like and getting wiped out by this time. Will they be able to take another move above that level, the WMA, which is that which we needed to keenly see? And count down to 2 p.m. Let's see what happens in the 2 p.m. candle. Yes, it is 2 p.m. The first tick is red, then it is moving to the green. 2 p.m. is uh, nifty silently trying to move. Not good. So if you look at the nifty, Not it is good. another one over there. Not good. Nifty is giving the red candle at 2 p.m. Red candle at 2 p.m., which is not a great sign. That is absolutely not a great sign. So let's wait to see if it lasts uh, even after two or three, then it is not good. If it has to reverse within like first three minutes, it has to reverse and come back to like a uh, 18,400 range. Otherwise, it's not going to look good, the Nifty. If Nifty is not uh, going to look good, then even Bank Nifty is also uh, can join the downward movement. So just few more seconds, few more minutes, so let's see. Just wait for a few, few minutes and see what happens by two, 2 or 3 or 2 or 5. So 42,600. The 42,598, whatever the high which got created in the morning seems to be the area wherein the bears are saying, we will try to protect it as much as possible. You guys have to beat us this level for you to take it higher. So again, the M2MS swing is like an happening big. Now the Dow Futures has come into the 80 mark. Something which was trading at 120, 130, now we can clearly see the Dow has also been faltering. Nifty is falling big. But the good news is, the VIX is not rising. The VIX is not rising. Hmm. Interesting day. Interesting Nifty day. Nifty has to very quickly come back to 18,400 plus. <laughs> Otherwise, it is not going to look good. It is not going to look good. Nifty has to break 18,400. Uh, that's what I'm waiting for. I, I'm waiting to see if uh, Nifty can do that. And even Bank Nifty is also not showing the momentum right now. Slightly it is moving down. 40 to 500 is broken on the downside. Immediately buying is coming in Bank Nifty. So yeah, Bank someone Nifty, every time when it comes to 40 to 500, the shorts are trying to exit and it is bouncing back. Someone is trying to support the market there. Yeah. But I'm worried about the Nifty. If Nifty is not behaving the way it should, then it can drag down Bank Nifty also. That's what I'm worried about. Let's quickly look at the Nifty trending OI data as well for you to give you that clarity. So it is currently bullish, 2.77 to 3.4. So I'm not giving up uh, Siju at this Wait. juncture. So let's see whether they have the potential to hold it on till the day end. So 2.5 to 2.16, Bank Nifty is the one which I'm bothered about. Yeah, Nifty is heavily bullish on the trending OI. So trending OI is heavily yeah. bullish on the Nifty. The Bank Nifty is Bank the Nifty one wherein they needed to change the direction. Yeah. But if you are looking at individual option strikes at 32, 000, sorry, 42, this is on 40 to 500, clearly 97 lakhs. I wanted to see that is coming down drastically. This one, 29 to 81. The range is pretty much set. 40 to 400, it's going to be very difficult to break it on the downside. 40 to 600 on the upside, it is going to be a difficult one. But in between, how they are going to be playing, how they are going to be eating the premiums, that's the game which is going on. So I've been, I've been waiting to see if I can take more call uh, long by around uh, 210 to 2, or somewhere around 2.15 p.m. But the way Nifty is moving, that is not giving me the comfort to add more into the call long. Even Bank Nifty is breaking 40 to 500. I am little concerned now. I am little concerned. I wouldn't be worried as long as the VWAP is not getting broken. VWAP is going to be the crucial, crucial level because the buyers have been putting in some money and the future buyers were also coming in. If you look at this data, there are a few fresh positions which got created here. Though it didn't go up with the volume, but they would have been like and trying to defend it. The fresh shots were coming in here. If they have been used to like and cover the position, then it'll be interesting. 
So Nifty is near support area. So Nifty is clearly not giving that momentum. It looks like it is uh, planning to give up. But Bank Nifty is not. So I'll wait for my time, which is uh, 2.15 approximately. And if the market is not breaking down, probably I will add more calls during that time. So at this time, if we wanted to look at the premium tab, almost we are coming to the day end. And look at the premium. It's even Stevens with uh, 17 rupees on 40 to 400, 47 on 45, 500, 40 to 500, sorry. So this is the area wherein these guys are going to be attacking both on the call and the put side. Close to 100 rupee premium is available. But some of the deep in the money strikes are trading in discount on both the sides. Beautiful candle in Nifty. Which should ideally get the follow-up candle? <laughs> Another attempt to protect that level. Super trend is getting protected. Will they be able to hold it? No, it is not. It is not. They are almost there, protecting it. We need to wait. We need to wait. Another 30 more seconds. For me, another, uh, I'm waiting for another 10 more minutes. Then I would like to add my next entry in the call options. Call buy, provided the market doesn't break down. Two point five one to two one seven. Hmm. Okay. So Nifty is holding up above that super trend level. And Bank Nifty wants to join the body on the upper side. <laughs> Nifty eighteen four hundred. Just being around. Four hundred. Hmm. That is the game. Eighteen four hundred and forty to five hundred. That is the game. So good news is, even if the Bank Nifty moves 30, 40 points, we will be able to capture the entire move because the spot is trading somewhere around 40 to 500, and the premium is not much over there on the 42,200. The futures is trading much higher at 40 to 599. Wall Street is back to 100 point. Triple digit, in fact. So 18,400 is nearing once again. 40 to 521, yes. This time, this time, it is not bad. This time it is not bad because the green candles are more powerful than the red candle if you look at the chart. They just needed to push it up. The Dow is back again from 80 to 108. For a moment, for the first time uh, today, they shook my confidence on that those few uh, candles. As long as the trending away doesn't change much, you, don't, you should not be worried on the Nifty because the Nifty is giving me the confidence 2.78 to 3.3. But still, it is an even Steven job. But here, this is the area wherein I would be more concerned, the Bank Nifty. Even when the day low was broken earlier, my confidence was not shaken. But after 2 p.m. when I saw that move, I was a little shaken. Now I will wait for uh, 2.50 to see what happens. So now one more attempt. Almost we are getting in one candle, whatever the money which we lost, we are getting it back. We will see whether it is going to be giving a move again towards a super trend. Probably they are looking for Jagan to come into the halls to give the move on the upside. Jagan, come on. See your positions. We wanted to make the market move higher. <laughs> but looks like you were shorting it outside at the higher levels. <laughs> Reds are following greens. Yeah. Multi view? Check actually how much profit I have. Multi view. Okay. Yes, sir. Show us your profit. Oh, it's 11 lakh. Ah, look at it. Every higher level you have been shorting it. It's 11 lakhs profit. It is more than, uh, I think, 2.25%. 2 2 so that's what we are, I'm getting right now. Super. So why I'm getting a profit? So because market is consolidating and market is coming little down. And that is the reason why I'm making it. Okay. And coming to this one, 
What is the delta I have? So the delta is Delta is 1, 118, so still long, no, short, sorry. So if market consult is little uh, low, then I'll make more profit. Let's see actually how much profit I'm making uh, today. Uh, so far, so nice, got nice profit. But, <clears throat> so what is the thing uh, the system had done? So you can check it there. The All the puts which are 11 rupees, right? So 11 rupees, 12 rupees, 15 rupees, it's got exited because Today, I'm extremely, extremely running out of margin because stop loss are not hit, okay? So it is booking this profit and then trying to move the hedges closer, as I said. And the, from the morning, since morning, it is selling only 40 to 500, 40 to 600 because I always play at the money. So that's what is happening. What is the premium we have totally together? We have only 94 rupees. See here, it is selling 40 to 500 call and put together. So that's what it does right now. So. Let's see actually how we are going to close today, yeah. Okay, so as you are like an MTM is swinging, our MTM is also swinging. Screen one, please. So look at those two candles on the Bank Nifty now. Low volume, they're just pumping it up with no reasons at all. The MTM from almost 8K negative to again back to 30K. What are they trying to do? Will they be able to take something out? 38, 37, 38, exiting some positions at the higher level because it is going near to the resistance area. I'll just run it with 500 quantities. 38, can it go to 40? Because it is in writer's paradise. Holding my position too long is not going to be making the right sense and that too when it is nearing to the resistance area. Look at that. Immediately a long tail over there. Now, in case if the market is able to move up over the super trend area, then it might give you an, another golden opportunity, but I wanted the move to be happening before 2.30. So the game is very clear. They are going to be playing between 42,500 to 42,600, but who's going to hold that level, that is going to be something which we needed to be looking at. The fresh entries can be taken once the market gives me a breakout. Otherwise, I think I needed to be happy with whatever the 1% on this capital which I made. I needed to be happy. We have around 350 quantities which we are retaining just to see like and whether it is able to go towards the super trend and then go scale up higher. Market got a good night's sleep during the first half of the day. So it is so energetic now. So that energy should come into the live action. Right, Shiva? Absolutely. Guys, at least like, and we needed to see some kind of a move between two and three. At least like, and it should give us something else. But anyway, uh, it is like in a three white soldiers getting formed. But the only problem is the volume. Looks like in a low liquidity market. No one wanted to bet big. Everybody wanted to just make quick money and then get out of the trade. That's the way the scalping has been going on. People who have been doing on the selling side, they would be absolutely enjoying it. <laughs> 218 is the takeoff time as per Siju. So let's see whether there is going to be a takeoff. We will get to see that. Another five more minutes on the clock. Put a timer.
So someone who is looking at intraday swings, this looked like a perfect swing for the intraday in terms of the M2M. And look at the RSI factor once again. The bulls have clearly said, Shiva, we are not going to be letting it down, go above, below this level. So they are playing a clear game there. RSI is clearly, clearly the winner today, and they're ensuring that, yes, we haven't complete control on that one. How about the Bank Nifty? It is making a W over there. Can they keep pushing higher? Looks like they are just making that move now. So Nifty is on the verge of getting into the green, six points down, and then the bank Nifty is 22 points up. Little far away from the day's eye, but not much. The market is near day high. Bank Nifty is very close to the day high. Nifty is just 10 points away from the day high. Bank Nifty is also just 10 points away, from, under 10 points away from uh, day high. So 2.16 is the time. The takeoff time is 2.18. So what is the logic behind it, Suji, if I may ask? I will show you if it happens. Okay, so is there any like an uh, like an astro time or something like that, or any intraday? Absolutely no. I no? don't have any that. Okay, kind of, uh, I thought like an, if you are into astrology or something to know about that. Okay, anyway, we are getting a move. Sixteen. Yes, it is trying to make a move. Already, you can clearly see the from day the day high. The day high is broken. Even the flights are getting delayed or getting early, little uh, little bit one minute here and there. So instead of 218, two it started at 216, just two minutes off. Okay, 237. Guys, this is what we wanted to see it now. Look at the OI. The day high is broken. 237 to 222. We needed to see a Shiva, quick reversal. Day high is broken. Look at the time, 217. I'm off by one minute. Yes, but still it is good. So now you have another business as well. <laughs> you can predict intraday reversals and the breakout timings. Okay, so will they be able to push it up above this level? So all my positions are open. I know there is a risk. The market can anytime reverse and it can go into red from green, but when I view is so strong that it would rally, there is no reason that I should exit or I should, I should settle with a small profit. So we have closed the position and then we are going to be just staying light at this current juncture. So 40K is the current profit, so it is close to 2%. So based on my view, what is supposed to happen is just starting. Always remember when you have the super trend in the VWAP, if it has already taken a support from the super VWAP level, and if you have added some position, the position for you to exit your position on the scalping would be near to the super trend level. And now in case if you wanted to enter into a fresh trade, let the super trend get broken. And once they scale up higher, then we will be able to chase the momentum. Till that time, there is a possibility you might see the super trend getting hit, and then if it is going to be a writer's paradise, it might just again go to the VWAP level. So we will get to see whether it is going to be playing that game now. As expected, the market is heading lower. Almost went near to the super trend, taking a reversal, and now again, will it be going towards that 42,598? So that the writers can write the premium on both the call and the put. 
So the premiums have now come to almost 20, and this one is around 20. So something which was trading at 60 rupee levels, it has come to the 20 range. So someone who's looking for, Shiva, if I wanted to make some hedge trades at this juncture, with the premiums being very low, this is something which we could try. So 77 to 20, and in case if the market is expected to move higher, you can look for 42,700. 600 is trading at 25. So somewhere around in between this range, the market is trying to position itself. Then someone who wanted to buy both the call and the put, we will try to create an hedge. So looking at the premium, the combined premium is around 20 and 40. So what I will do is, normally towards the late end, if the premiums are pretty low, this is a long uh, strangle which I'm trying it, 40 to 500 PE and 42,600. So combined, if you are looking at it, around 21 on the, uh, like, in a, what to say, uh, put side and 26, 27 on the call side. And you can clearly look at the M2M. So we have got into an hedge trade. Imagine one side, if you are getting a sudden move of 100, 200 points, you might get to see 50 to 100 rupee move happening on one particular strike. Let's see whether it is going to be a premium erosion on both the sides or there is going to be a breakout. If it is going to be a premium erosion, I might lose the entire premium of 47, 48, which I can afford to take a risk with the profits. But if it is going to be a move on one particular direction, you might get some 100% gains as well on one particular side. Let's see how it plays out for the expiry. This we normally try to play once the premiums come down below like in 20, 30 mark. So the combined premium would be like, and we are paying around 40 to 50 rupees. That's fine. <coughs> so they have already started writing much on the call side compared to the put side. You can see the premiums both on the call and the put is melting. But when it is moving higher, and if you see the profits on one particular side is around 40, you can quickly square off that position. And keep, uh, keep it in mind, your average combined both put together on call and the put. Market is continuously trading near the day high, continuously. Without breaking out, without breaking down, it is continuously trading near the day high. They just needed to break it out. Yes, once again, day high. But it is trading at day high. The candle that I want to see is not coming. The candle. Looks like the super trend need to be retested again. Will they be able to do it, or is it going to be like a like, lot of hanging? Okay, for the first time, the trending OI is almost coming closer and closer, 230 to 221, the day high break, but I would love to see the OI on the call side dropping pretty drastically, at least at 230, for the bulls to get some kind of a move on the upside. Otherwise, it's a day to forget as an option buyer. They are just eroding the premiums on both the call and the put. Look at that, what a writing, perfect one from almost 122 to 20, but they didn't move an inch on this price, 88. What a controlled move. They never let it go above that level. Though it broke the day's low, it never went and broke the day's high. Perfect. It's an absolute writer's market. This hedge on a writer's market is always going to be a head risk because you know you are like in looking at the way the market is. And the only thing which I'm playing for is Imagine the last moment. There will be a lot of players who will be afraid about the gamma move, which is going to be happening at around 3 o'clock. And if they happen to cover their position, and all of a sudden you will see one side getting from 20 to 50 to 60, 
And that's exactly as a scalper, I will book the profits and then move on the other side. So another move, again falling. Can it go near to the support level? Or it is going to be breaking that level. So, so we are gaining 2,000 rupees on the call side, losing close to 3,600 on the put side. Okay, look at the Dow futures. The Dow futures has been falling now. So the Dow futures has gone to 60. From almost 120, 130, the Dow futures has been falling, which is not a good sign. Bank Nifty is also coming too. Yes, the Bank Nifty is slowly starting to fall. Not good. Now I should not be worried about whether being in a call not or a put because I have the positions on both the sides. Not good. But I wanted a bigger move now. Jagan will be happy now if the market falls. So put side, it has moved from 20 to 30. Call side, you can clearly look at it. It went from almost 30 to 11 rupees now yeah. on 40 to 600. Can, can it be like in a path breaking move, move it lower towards a super trend and it has already been done. Now it needed to take a support at the VWAP. Will it be able to do it? Can you, can you switch to multi-view? Multi-view, please. Here. Can you look at the profit? It is 12 lakhs, 60,000. 12.6 lakhs is a profit. And today, I've done some changes. It's more than 200% right now. So yeah, that's what we are, profit we are getting. So what is the changes the system has done? Okay. <coughs> Coming here, right? So here, we are extremely, extremely running out of margin. So this is 25 rupees premium. This is 75 rupees premium when the when we are rolling up this put. Okay, this put we exited three, and this put we sold one. So that two puts margin is free. Got it? So we exited this 25 three, sold it for 75. So that the margin is free. Again we can sell. So I will be start selling the straddle still to 35 or to 40. Okay. So that's how uh, I make a money. And as I said, actually the we are buying the uh, hedging closer whenever it comes to seven rupees uh, some other this thing right so we will be trying to close our positions okay so if it comes to six rupees no sorry it's one rupee okay sorry okay anything that comes then we will be closing this position so let's see how it happens so the last order will go at 235 so right now i'm sitting with a profit of two and a half percent for the capital of 4.5 the same thing is replicated in all the accounts yes So screen one, please. So looking at this data, now you can clearly see the buyers who have been frustrated for the whole day, holding the positions on both call and the put. They have started to unwind the position. The long unwinding is being seen on both the call and the put, which is clearly suggesting the buyer said, enough is enough. It is not my day, and I'm exiting my positions on both the sides. So people like me who are still holding them, uh, like in a, what to say, uh, the short, like in a long strangle, we needed to be a little worried because it's a perfect, perfect writer's day. If I'm not going to be getting a trending move, even up to 30, then I just needed to forget the day. <laughs> so whatever the money which we are able to make as an option buyer, guys, this is where you needed to give a kudos to all the option buyers over there. If you're able to make money on a day like today, you should really put yourself like, on a seller's day, if you are able to capture even the minus move, yes, pat on your back. Two twenty nine to two twenty, and what is happening with the Nifty? Almost two point five seven to three. It is on the bullish market. The Bank Nifty is the one. Two point two nine to two point two zero. Almost closer and closer. And it is trying to make some days high as well, but it is now heading lower.
So has a long strangle, we are gaining 2K, losing 3.5. So overall, it is giving us a loss of close to 1,500 to 1,800 odd bucks on that long strangle. Hmm? <laughs> it's okay. We needed to accept it. So looking at this, there is not much of premiums on the call side to write. So the put side premiums are the ones which is going to be melting from here. So almost all the call strikes are in the discounts now. 40 to 400, five rupee discount, wow. Thirty-eight thousand is the M term where it is swinging there. Can they move it above that WMA? That's something which we needed to be looking for. Come on, get me a move. Guys, anything happens after 2.30 to 3.30, get ready for some wild swings. Don't look for the data on March, because from here it is going to be an expiry play. So all the position that they would have been creating and everything, if they are covering up the position, you will be seeing a lot of basket orders getting filled. You will see some of the large quantities getting filled. When it is all being done, you will not be seeing the data getting respected. The market will be making a wild move. And look at this. On the long strangle, both call and a put has been giving me a 1,500 rupee loss on either side, and then the market is trying to inch up higher. Will they be able to break out? The Dow now is at 58 points. Can they keep moving it higher? One more attempt. The call, which was trading at 11.12, it has gone to 23 bucks now. Dehai, once again. Once again, Dehai in Bank Nifty. 42.579. Guys, we can't be more clear to you in terms of telling you what is, what is the range that they're going to be playing. And I also told you, how we were telling you that once it is in a discount, they're not going to be playing on that side, they will move on the other side. So that's the reason the option premium on expiry day, it plays a major, major role. Now, we are getting close to a good move on the call side. Will they be able to break out that level? Look at that. The whole day, we didn't get any single 50K bar right from the first candle, which was at around 9.15. Beyond that, there is absolutely nothing today. And when you're looking at the super trend to do a VWAP, this is a no trading zone if you are looking for an, like, in a positional play. This is perfect play for the uh, like, in a scalpers. Sell, buy your positions at the lower level, sell your positions, exit, wait out. Buy it, sell it, wait out. Now, it is almost 1,900, 1,400. So we were having a loss on one particular direction. Will it make a move again? We needed a breakout above the super trend. Otherwise, they are going to be playing in that range. OK, a breakout. My M2M29 M2 on the negative, 1,000 on the positive. Will it be a breakout above that super trend? So in case if the combined premium goes up to above like in 47 on one particular direction, if you are able to get a 47, we can trail it so that the cost will be covered so that I don't lose any money to the sellers. 
and then the remaining is going to be our profit on this particular trade. Adding some more positions as it is heading towards the territory. If it is a quick breakout, we might get a good move. The only problem is I'm buying 32,600 call. The spot currently which is trading at 32, sorry, 42,587. We needed a quick 40, 50 point move at least to get the premiums at least there. Because currently the intrinsic value which will be clearly showing you this entire 30 rupees can be written off. But the good news is, calls say the premiums are low or at a discount, which is a good sign. For the first time in the day, Bank Nifty has turned bullish after 9.45. So if you look at the trending OI data, it has just broken that. 218 on the put side, 209 on the call side. So the data is slowly turning to be bullish, but I would love to see the data giving me more confidence to take the trade. So now, once it breaks, what I can do is, what are the long strangle which I have taken? If it is coming towards a 20 odd range, I might just add a couple of more positions on the call side, not adding any positions on the put side. In case of a breakout, I can, it can give me like an, a little bit of an increase in profit on that particular direction. The pure reason is the premiums is also giving me the conviction. So combinedly, we are losing close to 2.5 and 600 here. So close to 3.5 is gone on the table. Will that be a weekend shakeout over there? I think uh, in the recent memory, this is one of the, uh, what to say, uh, very range-bound expiry, which we would have seen it in Traders Carnival. So it's been like in one of the range, range-bound expiries. We are still not giving up. I can understand. Yes? Okay, again another move on the down. Look at the way the premiums are getting adjusted. 2,000 rupees on both the sides is shaved off. There is some, there is some bad news from the global front. Wall Street is just 20 points green. Germany is just 46 points green and FTS is like 29, 30 points red. Yeah, the Dow has completely given up. Looks like the Dow has yes. played used to like Correct. a manager or index. The Dow Correct. has completely given up. Yeah. Or it can be a foolish move as well. Show the exactly. Dow to be like in a negative exactly. and then now market to do a breakout. Because looking at the way the trending OI is showing up, look at that. The shorts have started to cover the positions on 42,400. 42,500, the same scenario. So 1.2 on the put side. You can see this OI data here. And 71 lakhs on the call side, short covering, good news. And 42,600, 97 to 45. This is the area wherein they just needed to break the shackle and move higher. Will they be able to do it? 42,567.
Can we get a quick move? Before the 3 p.m. move, if that can be a quick move, either on the upside or on the downside, that can be a good one. If I'm able to get a quick large move on one side around 80 or 90 points, we will book the profit on that particular direction and hold the remaining one like an, on the other side as like an, a completely complementary. If they are going to be keeping it at the same level, there is a big risk of me losing it on the both the sides. Shiva, what will happen to Bank Nifty if Nifty comes back and clear the day high? There is a huge possibility the Bank Nifty can also follow suit. The only reason is if the Nifty so, needed to clear it, it will definitely requires uh, Bank Nifty because that being the largest index heavyweight in the Nifty 50, you have to be getting that guy. Bank Nifty is already trading near the day high. Yeah, exactly. They're just wanting to clear that super trend. They're just trying to hold that level. If you look at this, Multiple atoms, one, two, three, the three atoms have been done. In fact, five, one, two, three, four, five. And they just did, literally doesn't want it to give up. And they know the VWAP is long way away. And if I'm going to the VWAP, there will be many traders who will be coming in and buying in the market, which they don't want to give it up. So clearly the premiums are melting both on the call and the put, close to 3K and 1,500 on the put side. Sorry, call 2,000 and then they put 3,000. Wow. Interesting. 2626. Two, six. Okay. Can we get a bigger move? So Nifty is headed towards a VWAP territory. Interesting. Interesting. From almost 18,470, from the high, uh, almost 18,470, 480, it has almost coming to the range of 18,430 odd levels. Watch out for this. This will be your support at 3 o'clock. If this is getting violated with the volume, that can be a swift move. But on the other hand, Bank Nifty says, I have a pawn in place who will be defending me. So the WMA is coming into the picture over there. What a control move. <laughs> I would love to see these guys who are doing this. The way they manage the index to keep it at a particular level, keep on bringing the premiums on one side, and then eat it out. Uh, Sharik, just give me like an, uh, if you know their contact, I would love to speak to them. No, uh, for even for option sellers today, right? It's not like, it's a very easy market. In hindsight, it looks easy. Yeah, after it is easy. You, uh, no, after you trade it, after post 3 p.m., you look at probably, if there's no move from here, you say it's consolidation and it's easy. But when you're trading, Premiums are super low, it's consolidating, and you're expecting a big move anytime. So you're always skeptical, you're taking uh, small, small steps only when it is super consolidating as well. No, so. but looking at the trending away from morning itself, these guys gave you a clear picture. We are not going to be breaking out, we are going to be keeping it. We are riding both the sides, unwinding both the sides together. This is an ideal, ideal, like in a large sellers who do that. Okay, so if you're, you wouldn't see this kind of a data coming out. When but you Shiva, see the option data. In spite of all that data, you're still expecting a breakout, right? Yeah. And you're still buying the options, right? See? All of you buy So even time. just like you, how you are greedy to make profits, we True. are fearful of losing the money absolutely. when it when there's a breakout. That's this is yeah, absolutely. This is your market, and you guys can say whatever that you wanted to now. <laughs> and you needed to enjoy that moment as well. But as an buyer, we just needed some momentum for us. And as long as it is there, we will be able to make it. Let's see. Looks like the loss is getting creeper. Look at that. Almost now they are adjusting the premiums on the put side. And they are making the move on the call side one more attempt. Now the Dow futures has gone to 20 points, which is going to be not a good news for me. Because 
any move on the upside, we needed a larger move. At least I would require another 70, 80 points on the Bank Nifty if I needed to survive this. Otherwise, the premium on both call and the put has a possibility of getting eroded. Two point one four, two point one five. Right as paradise. So close to 6K on the put side, another 1,000 rupees on the call side is gone at this current juncture. The only reason is this is not giving me the confidence the way the Dow is being managed now. The Dow has almost literally given up 120, 130 points. It has come into the flat territory. So if Dow has been going down, then you have a problem wherein the fresh buying, which has been happening in the morning, which is not going to be happening. So people will say, I think it is an expiry day. We will not take fresh positions. Let it go, expire where it is. And then we will come and look at it tomorrow based on Dow's move tonight. So that's something which we needed to be really careful about. So someone who's looking at the H play, I'll be like ready to lose like in whatever the 5, 6K or whatever it is, and then try to at least protect some of the profits which we made. Can you please connect uh, screen two? Just one update. Okay, so like I said, I didn't do anything on the position. On this account, uh, option selling account, I have uh, 40 to 500 PE short. Now it's only 75, uh, seven, seven rupees or under seven rupees. So it absolutely doesn't make sense to hold it and uh, take the risk. So I'm booking the profit there and uh, So that is done. So it looks like there is a breakout happening. Uh, yes. Sanjo? On the other account, I have some put sell, uh, sorry, I have some call long on 40 to 500 calls and 40 to 400 calls. So both are running. I am just leaving it because uh, like, I, like I have been saying, my view is that the market, w market can literally make a good move on the upside. So I'm not booking that. I'm just leaving it open. Even at 3 p.m. there is a risk, absolute risk is there because 3 p.m. candle, that can come in both the side. Certain times it is big red candle, certain times it is big green candle. But I'm okay to take that risk because my view has been very strong since morning. So the market hasn't moved according to the, my expectation. When that is there, I'm expecting that move to come after 3 p.m. So definitely I'm, I'm not giving up on uh, my calls on this account, which is running in fair amount of profit. But that is not the kind of move I'm expecting. Put short I exited because it doesn't make sense to keep the uh, 6 rupee put and uh, go into a risk of uh, 3 p.m. move. If there's a 200 point move from 6, six rupees, it can go to like 100 rupees. So I just exited that. But call long, I know how much I can lose. So even if the trade completely goes wrong, it can go to zero. Both, both, both of these can go to zero. That is the highest risk I'm carrying. So I'm okay with that kind of risk. So defined risk is what I like. Earlier also it is okay because uh, uh, my hedge was like around 600-700 uh, points away. That is the max risk. Since my quantity is less, I'm okay because I had some uh, 80, 70 or 90-95 uh, rupees premium or something which I shorted. So I was okay to take that risk for uh, uh, considering the probability, I was okay to take that risk. But for 6 rupees, I'm not uh, willing to take that risk. So that is how I manage the risk. So right now the market is clearly breaking out and the Nifty is also joining the party now. 18-400 is the rock solid resistance, once that is broken uh, before 3 p.m., it can even go to 18 for 50. Don't catch hold of me if it doesn't go there because uh, that is my expectation. And Bank Nifty, if it stays with the momentum, 40 to 800. Don't catch hold of me again if that doesn't happen. That is my expectation, my view. Thanks, to sure. Okay, to thanks, Suju. And screen one, please. So I've just made a minor adjustment to a position. So considering the market is moving higher, the 42,500 base has been set. 
I just have a small protection for my trade, considering now it has gone bullish. What I have done is I have squared off some 200 quantities on this side and then retaining the remaining 450 on the other one. So even if there is going to be a fall, we will still have something for the downside. But if it is going to be a move on the upside, we have the positions on the upside now. But considering the premium erosion, there is not much we will be able to adjust and then take it higher at this current juncture. I'm not looking to add any more, and I will just see it for the day. So Nifty is trying to inch up. At the same time, Bank Nifty is getting some red candles before uh, 3 p.m., but it is not going far down. It is just a uh, minor down. So it's okay, that happens. That's a part of the move. But every red candle, the green is coming without, uh, with higher force. That is what I like to see towards the end of the day. And the next thing I want to see is Nifty breaking the day high and Bank Nifty breaking the all-time high. I think Bank Nifty all-time high, which is which must, have, must be broken no, already. No, it has already done it on this candle. It is uh, 42,611 is the all-time high. And probably on the next candle, it is going to happen. Yes, Bank Nifty all-time high. Bank Nifty all-time high. Yes, it is. It is. So the let the position run. I don't want to look at the PNL. I just hid it. I don't want to see that because that is when you get the temptation to exit the position. Because when the real money comes in, you should not be get tempted with anything. You just look at the market. Look at what is happening in the market. Is it favorable to you? Yes. If it is favorable, hold the position regardless of PNL. Is what I do. If it is not favorable to you, exit regardless of the PNL. That's what I do. So I'm just closing, it means uh, walking around once again because I don't want to sit in front of the system and get myself tempted again. Make a move. <laughs> okay, another move, 42,650. And you can clearly see this, 42,619. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting one. I'll just try to get you the one more thing, which is going to be, I'll get you another chart. So normally at around 3 o'clock, We try to give you the last expiry 30 minutes. If I wanted to know where exactly the spot is going to be closing today, both on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, this is something which is going to be giving me the clue. So current uh, Bank Nifty spot is expected to close, adjusted closes around 42,536. Okay, 3 p.m. move has not started. Okay, let's come back here at 3 p.m. What a writing. What a writing, it's been happening here. Mm. Good, good, good. So every rise on the call side has been getting killed. So whatever the premium which you would have seen on the call side, the 42,600, they were not able to sustain it. The first spot is trading at 42,602. Almost a 20 rupee premium, which is pretty cool higher. And look at the way the writing has been happening. There is absolutely no breakout today. Is this going to be a fake move before the 3 p.m. move? Let's see. So can you switch on the multi-view? Yeah. Can you switch on the multi-view? Yeah. Multi-view, please. Right. So... So my profit was more than 200%. So right now it has come to close to 1.75%. Uh, so 0.75 profit has wiped out because uh, I was taking a non-directional theta game after 12 o'clock, but market trended today. So I compromised some of the profit, but as a backtesting, we have to look at for longer run how it is making a profit. Okay, for today, so the, the noon big. one, is the noon straddle, whatever I sold, started. it did not help. But still now, if market comes down right now, I will make a, a, at least 2% profit. Okay. If market goes up, I may be making profit of close to 1%. So let's see how the market is closing. So if you look at the delta, right? So the delta is still actually it is uh, negative, okay? So I, it, it, it deliberately looking for the market to come down. So right now it is coming down. What the level, what I am expecting according to the uh, strike price I sold, 42,500 is the place I will get the maximum profit. Let's see how the market is giving to, uh, trying to give the profit to me uh, today. Yes. Okay, if you look at this particular candle, the market is starting to give up again. One more time on the downside. 
the entire move, whatever the bulls would have been hoping for, all that is getting completely crushed. But yeah. what I'm looking at is, since it is an expiry play, in the last minute, we might get to see some kind of a consolidation happening, the premium erosion happening, and all those. I'm looking at 42,000, till which level they've been writing it. So to form a view to go for a hero or zero or something, 42,500 is something which I'm going to be keenly looking for, if for a hero or zero. In case if this one comes to around 10, 20 rupee range, this is something which we can look at it. The pure reason is, look at this, short covering has been happening major, major way. The price has moved from almost 30 to almost 80 odd levels. 40 lakh quantity got almost covered up. So this is going to be giving me a confidence The 42,500 is going to be the base. And look at this, 107 on the put side. So considering that, I'm just trying to take few trades around uh, uh, 42,300, which is deep in the money at this current juncture. Something, any move to compensate whatever the money which we are going to be losing, if we are able to compensate it to take it here, I'm just going to be going naked on the call side. The pure logic is the riders have been running away on 42,500, and the only problem is the Dow. Other than that, Indian markets looks very resilient at this current juncture. 40 to 400, the same scenario the riders have been covering on the call side. So any move towards the super 10, we can add, look at to add some more positions there. And the most important thing, the long buyers who were there on the put side, they have completely exited their positions here. Can we get to see this on the trending OI? Yes, it is. What a control move, 2.2, 2.2, 2.14, 2.14, 1.8, 1.8. They are, someone who has taken the position hitch play, they are playing it pretty well, pretty, pretty well. 256. Can they hit towards this territory? Screen one, please. Okay, oh, half of it was my screen. I kept my order window ready to punch in the call. I am just looking at that particular level, the super trend. My friend, super trend at 42, 598, closer to that, so it can give me a move from there. So another three more minutes for the 3 p.m. move. If at all there is anything today that needed to be there at around 3 o'clock. Can we get like one last push before the market expires? I've been Sorry? Oh, you cannot see C or P. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Are you able to see it now? Perfect. So we have around 550 quantities of 42,300, and then 42,600, 450, 42,500 put, 250 quantities. But the long strangle on this particular day, it is not giving us a reward, so we are going naked for that 42,300 call buy. And I'm looking to add more near to the super trend level, but unfortunately it is just trying to pass it somewhere there. So 42,572 is the spot. And the future is trading at 42.620. Will they be able to head towards the super trend? Almost they are getting there. Before the 3 p.m. Before the 3 p.m., the fall is coming. The fall is coming before 3 p.m. I think uh, the market is tanking. And I'm buying calls. Uh, you can share my screen, share, uh, screen number two. I just bought some 43, 40 to 
So this is the momentum which we require it at three at three o'clock. If they are able to move higher or lower, they have to be doing it. So right and it is trying to fall faster. Right before three p.m., there is a move. So I just to used it to buy the calls. Let's see if the, if the market is going to tank big or uh, recover big. So I've just taken the calls, just taken the calls, and the market is falling. It can even go to the OTM range. But Look at that. Yep. The 3 p.m. is not at there. The no, 3 no, no, p.m. is not still, there. Still, like, and we needed to wait it out. This is just in, like, in a candle heading towards the VWAP level. So we are just getting more over there, near to the VWAP. This is the area wherein I wanted it. So 42,510. And look at 42,500 in case if you are looking for a hero or zero, this is the one which you needed to be looking for as a call buyer. So that is going so to be now it is 3 p.m. Now it is 3 p.m. Let's see, let's see what market does at 3 p.m. Yes. Because right before 3 p.m. we saw the fall and 3 p.m. Nifty is moving up. Bank Nifty is uh, starting with a green candle and you can share the uh, screen number two. You can share the screen number two. So I've taken some calls. I've taken uh, uh, the, the 4,200 CE at 58.99, and right now it is trading at 40, 46 rupees. And it uh, is just uh, in wild swing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is swinging wild. It is not moving the way I expected, but it is still holding up. It is still holding up. Can it move it? And the price is going to 54, 55. It can still move. It can still go to the day high. It can still go to the day high but it is not giving their momentum. It's literally a day wherein the option buyers will feel it like, what you guys have done. <laughs> so if the market hasn't, uh, doesn't move, both the accounts I might end in red, but this, this is an amazing opportunity as for me, which I've been looking for. And uh, if the market moves, the market moves or not, it is up to the market. I can't control that, but I can only follow the market. Market has uh, given me all the indication. And I've taken the position. It's up to the market whether it needs to move or not. If it doesn't move, it is going to be in loss. But if it moves, it is going to give, give me the money. OK, at this current juncture, the spot is expected to be closing at 42,535. So if there is a quick move on the downside, then probably I might try to look to add some more positions on the call side. Can we get screen one, please? So this is a, like an indicator which we have added for the 3 p.m. move to know where exactly the spot is going to be closing. So currently the adjusted close is going to be like somewhere around 42,534 at this current juncture. So if you are looking at 42,500, it has the potential to close somewhere around the 30, 35 mark. So the future is trading at 42,537. So can we have a multi-view? So multi-view is hanging, okay. It's stuck, right? The market is not giving the kind of move I was expecting. Absolutely no. Absolutely <laughs> no. Look at that. It is almost coming into the flat territory. One more attempt. Yeah. So 303. I don't know why the trading view is not There is no internet connection. Properly. Net is not working, yeah. It is not working. It is not working. It is uh, the price is uh, 42 for 540. Oh, I hope it doesn't go. We have some positions to close. <laughs> the positions are open, so we should be extremely. Some more positions are open. Okay, this is fluctuating now. I hope I will be able to close my positions. Guys, please be careful. There is some fluctuation happening in the internet. It's coming now. If I'm not wrong. No, no. So the market is at 42, 540, 537. This screen is not refreshing, but the price is intact. The actual price is also same. I'm, I'm seeing on the other screen, which is connected to the cellular network. The price is same. 
the adjusted closing at this current juncture expected to be 42,534. And the price is moving above 40 and the internet has come back it seems the market is slightly moving up that is not enough it has to give a big move only then uh, it will be it will be good for me. The problem is the Dow futures has gone into the negative. Yeah but that doesn't uh, uh, that might not impact too much at this point because uh, yeah anyway but like here. in someone who wanted to carry some position they would be looking at this and the positional players right, may yeah. not be much interested looking at the way the Dow has given up all its gain. Is the net back? No, right? No, net is like in fluctuating a lot. Please be careful. So I have my mobile network. The market is going to 47, 547, 546. But you can look at this wherein, uh, can you just bring up the screen one? Uh, I think the market, uh, the, the internet is refreshing now. Yeah, it refreshing. is refreshing. So if you can look at this particular price, though the spot is trading at 42,548, the adjusted closing is expected to be at least 14 rupees below that level. So if someone is looking at the premiums here, if the premiums are like and moving crazy, you can expect this price to be settling at around 42,537. So something which is trading at 245, that is an expected fall of another 7, 8 rupees on that one. I think there is no point in we holding this to so almost literally the entire move, it has been like and formulated by the sellers. So there is no uh, gamma move which has been happening today. So whatever the little money which I will be able to save it over there, it's better to save it. So even at this time, the market is not able to hold the level and every, every up move. The, the selling is coming and it is trying to get protected. The market is protecting the levels. 40 to 540, 40 to 530 levels are getting, getting protected. Like Shiva said, the expiry seems to be at 40 to 530 range. Look at that. That has been already given to you here, 40 to 538, and the spot has again come back to 40 to 539. So they're just going to be playing around in this territory. Correct. I think the close is somewhere uh, 30 to 540, 530. No, 538 at this current juncture. Though the spot is trading lower, it will be like in getting adjusted to that price. So unless and until this particular one goes to 220 odd levels, it's not going to be making sense for me to buy that. We will see whether it has some potential to go lower or lower. Is again coming to 40 to 530, 28. I'm just adding some positions for that arbitrage play. Yes, I, I, even I'm doing that. Even I'm doing that. But the problem so is the, the Dow futures is a problematic one. So I'm just looking for this arbitrage play. So if you look at the spot, it is at 42, 526, but the adjusted rate is around 40 to 537. So I'm just looking for that 12, 15 rupee move. But it is not gonna. It, it is not coming back up. It is. Let it go. Can we have multi view? Are you connected? Yeah, I connected no. to my phone. <laughs> Instead of buying, I sold by mistake. So can you switch to multi view? Yeah. Okay, it is literally almost giving up all its gains there. Yes. Excuse me. Can you put the multi view? Oh no, the internet is working. Internet, internet, please. Yeah. Internet is gone. Okay, so the adjusted closing it as 42,534. The spot is at 42,510. I'm just playing for the 20 point recovery in case if it is going to be happening in the bank nifty. Let's see how it plays out. The adjusted closing, whether it is going to be playing on the upside or it is going to be falling further and further. It is not refreshing. Looks like they just wanted to get it near to the 42,500 mark. I think the close, they're trying to get it at 40 to 500 range. Mm, so I think 40 to 510, 520 could be the, the closing range. There's a good, interesting thing is 40 to 500, where exactly it is trading? 
almost at 19 rupees from 80, it has come down. So in case if it is coming towards a five rupee range, that can be our hero or zero. Siju, can you ask them to put into multi-view? Hey, hey. Multi-view, please. I'm just adding few positions on 40 to 500. So, zero the account, whatever uh, position I have taken, I exited that. But this one I haven't exited, so I'm facing some uh, loss here. I think here also I'll have to exit the position now because it doesn't make sense and the market is going below 40 to 500. So, whatever loss is there, I'm taking that. It is not looking good. It is absolutely not looking good. So I just exited the position. So Joe, I'm just playing for that, like in, uh, what to say, the adjusted closing, whether it is going to be playing or not. Let's see whether the, the, the adjusted is, closing uh, is going to be there. The problem is market is moving down. I exited all the positions. Yeah, it's we'll not, see. not at all looking good. All they would require is just one candle to be on the move on the upside. Yeah. 20, 30 points. 40 to 498, and then the adjusted closing is around 40 to 528. So the writers who have been writing on 40 to 500, they might try to defend that once at least. Look at this. So 40 to 500, the long unwinding has been happening pretty fast. The OI has come down drastically, but these guys will not be liking it if the price moves higher. So they will definitely try to do one round of a move on the upside if it is going to be even an expiry play. Are they going to be doing it? I think 40 to 500 put is going to be the zero hero, not the calls. Looks like it, but let's see. The M2M swing is almost from 20 minus to almost 50K in the negative. Will so it be pulling right up? Right now, the time is 3.11. We have 20 more minutes. If the market keeps moving down, then uh, 40 to 500 put option from 13, it can go to the crazy levels. It can go to the crazy levels. Wow. Some pretty, pretty long unwinding happening pretty fast now. I think 40 to 500 puts from 11. That will be the arbitrage play, I think. Or 40 to 600 CP. This is getting crazy. So the adjusted closing price from almost 38, with the way the fall has been happening, it is falling pretty, pretty fast now. So at least now it so has to be at 40 to 520, and I it is falling lower. I just bought some 40 lower. to 600 CE. I just bought some, for, uh, sorry, PE. 40 to 600 PE. I bought it uh, one, 112 and I'm just keeping it for some more time because the market is making a big move on the downside. It can literally come down. It can literally make a move. There's an interesting thing is, this is the first candle after a while we are getting close to 50K bar. Look at this bank nifty. This is the first one after several like, hours, the first 50K bar on the downside. 514. This doesn't look good for me. The 750 quantities which we got it somewhere around 15, 16 rupees, it has gone to almost three rupees now. So I have bought that in both accounts. Here also I have added some quantity here at 112 and here also 112 I added some quantity of uh, 40 to 600 put option and uh, that is purely uh, to take part of this move because uh, if, if the market keeps moving down then the adjusted closing will get uh, on the lower side because we still have time we still have uh, 15 more minutes if you look at the approximate average it is like uh, 521 or something but it can be no, 40 can, to 508. Yeah, now. but if the market continue to trade here, it can definitely come to like uh, 40 to 570 range that just at closing, provided the market doesn't recover. And if the market falls more, it can even come to the uh, even higher range. Let's see whether there is going to be some kind of an hope for the buyers who would have been holding the position on 40 to 500. Are they giving up? 40 to 500 from almost 100 rupees, it has given up to 40 to 500 to 2 rupees now. This is absolutely nightmare for the buyers who would have bought it at the higher level at 80. Yeah, 40, to 40 to 500 CE 
luckily i exited or and the market is drifting down further and further it is 40 to 4 37 35 it is moving down it is it is falling big and 3 pm move i never expected it will be on the downside i was hoping that it is going to be on the upside but to my surprise to make me wrong in my complete view the market is tanking big it is 40 to 421 it is 40 to 421 it is making a big move it is making bigger and bigger moves if the recovery doesn't happen then uh, the, the puts are going to explode I think I needed to cut down the positions now. We have given enough time for these guys to recover. 314, 315, it's not been happening. And Nifty is falling more. Actually, if Nifty put is there, that would have done uh, extremely well. Look at the, the way they have been falling in the last few minutes with the volume. Pure, pure play with the longs being unwinding their positions big time here. Writers know it, what they are playing for. So if the mar market needs to fall further and further for getting a better adjusted closing, because uh, 3 p.m. the market started falling from uh, 40 to 5.59. So all those will, will be included uh, in the calculation. And the volume is picking up. Volume also will, will have to pick up because uh, it is volume weighted average closing. It is not just average closing, it is volume weighted average closing. So we'll have to get a, get a good down move so that uh, our, our position can rock in, in, the, in the coming minutes. So the problem is with the spot, adjusted closing is going to be 42,400 to 42,490. Imagine someone who is looking at the last 30 minute Correct. average traded price, Correct. and if you're carrying your position, this will be a big problem. Yes. So you will be getting to see like an 80 or 90 rupees higher close from the current level. And we will be looking at for the expiry play, they are doing all this. But tomorrow morning, when you see for the next series, it might be opening at a higher level based on this, in case if the global market supports it tonight. Correct. So that's going to be the problem here. So I think I may need so it to end the day in a negative territory. Even I... I think the kind of bounce that is happening right now, it is not looking so great, but look at that, 40 to a clear move, and then they are just trying to adjust the premiums. 40 to 400, 40 to 400. Will they be making more? another move towards another 40, 50 points in a quick move? Something which is going to be happening after 320, the spot is at 42,445, and then the adjusted closing showing me 42,486. So another 30 odd points, which is needed to be catch up. Almost they are getting there. Almost it is going there. Almost it is going there. The kind of green candle that is coming in, is it going to rally big? But the problem is like in how far they will be going on the downside before they come back. Yeah. But the 42,500, the call, it is going to be a problematic one. almost came down to like in two rupees. Let's look at the chart of this one. Can you get screen one, please? In the last moment, screen one. In the last moment, you can clearly see the writing is going to be much happening on the, it's not about the writing, the covering is much happening on the put side compared to the call side. Screen one, screen one, please. This is a 40 to 500 chart. Look at that. It went to a high of almost 117 at around 14.52. From there, a deep fall to one rupee. Non-stop fall here. And look at the OI. The longs have started to unwind the positions, cover the positions, and then the shots have been starting to add. There is one more set of red candles are coming. Uh, let it come. Let it come and break the law which was created sometimes back. Let it fall. It's a 
so the profit has come down from 2.5% to 1.5% but still we are i am in profit of close to 1.5% right now because market took a fantastic u turn hit a call stop loss hit a put stop loss as well but still happy because i have made a profit of 1.5% with the, such a low volatility with a, such a violent move yeah except the last 30 minutes you would have survived the everything over there Yes, I just said closing is expected to be 42,482. The spot price is 42,441. So there is going to be an addition of 40 points for the current premium, which you are seeing it on all the strikes, but it is going to close much below the 42,500 mark. But honestly, any buyer who would have been thinking about a breakout as it has been happening, Clearly, the 42,500, the longs have said, all week we have been having the profit. Today is not the time. We are going to be exiting in large manner. This is more than the shots building up the position, the longs unwinding the position. The smart money who was holding the position, they have been exiting it pretty, pretty fast. And look at that. In spite of that long unwinding, you are not seeing the premium move happening on the put side. Again, another round of unfall. This time it is bigger. This time it is bigger. It is again breaking the prior low. Anyone who is playing till 3.30? Anyone still holding the positions for yes. 3.30 play? Yes. You are holding it? How about you uh, guys? Any positions still 3.30? No? Great. Cutting the positions. Cutting down. Yeah. Out. Smart ones, 2.5, that's a good one. So from almost 2, I have gone to minus 0 0.6, actually negative. <laughs> so you are closing the day in negative? Huh? You are closing the day in negative? Yes. I am also. May, probably, I don't know. But I was expecting the VWAP so to be getting a support still, with the 42,000. I'm still at break even, 2 minus here, and uh, nearly 2 plus uh, over 2 negative here. <clears throat> So if the adjusted closing come to uh, 42, 450 or below, I'll be, I'll be ending the day in green. No, the adjusted closing is 42, 473. No, but we have 10 more minutes, right? Yeah, 42, 473, probably it can go to 42, 472, 42, 460 odd levels. Okay. Beyond this, you're not going to be getting much of premiums move, which is going to be happening. And the volumes are picking up in the lower end, so that will give more advantage to the downside. Now, I wanted to see what is going to be the daily candle formation today. If you look at it, wow, this is going to be interesting for tomorrow. So RSI at 70 with the Dodgy getting formed and will be, be and able to get a gap down. 40 to 400 is down. broken. 40 to 400 is also broken. That is also getting broken? Yes. Looks like the adjusted closing is 42, 470 at this current juncture. 470? Yes, 470. No. no, it will be below that. Let's see whether they have eight more minutes, whether they have potential to sell it further and further. Screen one, please. Screen one. I think it will be around. Uh, Can you enlarge the screen one? Yes. So uh, if you look at this, this is the rate at which uh, it is trading, uh, Shijo. Okay. So the spot is trading at 42,409. So adjusted closing is going to be above another 64 points above from the where it is the spot is trading. OK. Will they bring it before that expiry close, or it is going to be done post-market? Because the fall has been, entire move has been after 3 o'clock. So naturally, you will be seeing the adjusted closing yeah. being higher. So the final score on this is going to be 93 and another account we made around 17K. So hardly like 60, 70K loss. That's okay. I need it to accept it since we are going on the finale spree for a big move, which was not happening. So what is the adjusted closing showing now? 42,467. 
33 rupees. 67 rupees on 42,400. Hmm. What is where it is trading now? 139, 140. Yes. Yes, it is somewhere around that level, 62, 65, there. Clearly, the buyers who were holding the position for the whole day, they were forced to give up their positions on both the call and the put. Like me. Yes, like me as well. Sorry? We just needed to take it on a stride and move on. If it is not your day, it's not your day. But better to like and control the risk, lose what you can afford to lose and then move on to the next day. 42,462 and it is trading just around that 60 rupee mark. 64. Another five more minutes, will they be able to get it to 42,460? 61. Is the adjustment closing now? No, 64. 64. Okay, I think I got to exit the position with minor loss. I think my loss and your loss will be open. Almost a similar amount. It's okay. Multi view, please. Multi view. Okay. So, so you can I'm check it here. The profit is close to 6.6, .6, so it is. It has come to, come down to 1.25 from 2.5 percent due to this violent movement. So sometimes it happens for expiry day. So that's how I play because I'm playing with that the money where the gamma is very high, but still I'm happy with this 1.5 percent return with the hash of all such a low volatility. Yeah, I see we are going with updates. Then I'll give my trade update. Can you make this full maybe? What is that? Just closing. S screen three, I guess. 62. Top right. 58. It is almost done. If it comes to 58, I'll be break even. Yes, I am. Yeah, so this is what has happened to me. So I was trading uh, with a 2CR account today. Uh, so ending at nearly 275, which is again 1.3 percentage profit. Uh, I had an 18.350 put. So if the last down move wouldn't have happened, I would have reached uh, north of 1.6 percentage even. But again, I'm happy the way I managed it even with the fall. Uh, I did not risk much, right? So. Uh, yeah, uh, speaking on an absolute terms, I would have ha seen 3 lakhs, but it's, uh, it would end probably at 275 now. So that's that 1.3 percentage profit. And uh, whenever I come to Traders Carnival, I try to align my live trading to the speech or the talk I'll be giving. So tomorrow I'm going to give a talk around selling penny options of 3 rupees and making crore rupees a year. Right? So tomorrow I'm, today I did th just that. If you look into my positions, right? 18.450 calls, sold at 3.88. 18.300 puts, sold at 3.33. You can look into any position. Most of them are sold around that only. Wait. Uh, this is all position, right? But yep. So the, let's look at sell average. Yeah, sold at 4.61, 4.8. Okay. This one which was sold at 6.1. This is sold at 2.72. So that's that. So I sell. You can I easily actually sell it. positions at 3 rupees, 3.5 rupees. I never booked loss in any position I took today. Not even a single leg which I took today went into loss. Everything was covered in profit only. So that's what I'm, I'll be talking tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning first is my session. Selling penny options and still making 1-2 percentage a week. Thereby making 50 percentage profit a year. Absolutely possible. Very tension free. Morning you saw my portion, right? I was at 1,500 call sell and 1,800 put sell. I just moved closer with the time. Always selling 3, 3.5 and still reaching over a percentage a day. So yeah, doable. Absolutely. That's it. Thank you. You can put it to uh, screen two. Screen two. Is it gone? What happened? Yeah. So last fall, I was able to grab it because uh, 3 p.m. I was holding every position. I was holding all the long position I, I was uh, keeping on with me. And I got trapped. 
on top of getting trapped i again took the position but immediately when i realized that the market is going away i was able to exit all the position and reverse the position so in this second i'm ending with a 2.31 lakh profit from a capital of 20 lakh which is about uh, 1 percentage plus sorry 10 percentage plus but the irony is in this account also uh, from a starting capital of around 20 lakhs i am ending with uh, 2.24 lakh loss so net winner i am ending the day with some 8000 rupees profit which can hardly cover the brokerage so i am happy the market is completely against me not that uh, the initial part initial part was in favor of me but i was not able to take advantage of it because uh, my view was very strong and i was close uh, literally expecting the bigger move to come after 3 pm on the higher side that was the whole reason i, I kept on holding the position for the whole day but market was completely against me still i uh, means i'm so happy that i am able to close the day at least flat without having a loss thank you screen 3 thanks siju and uh, yes prajwal ruffle okay so, so personally speaking i mean the day was okay i wanted to take an extra call side credit when the market was falling but thanks to the internet the option which i wanted to short at 6 i no, ended up shorting at 0.6 so and um, since i wanted to take the call credit i didn't keep stop losses on the 350 puts so 350 puts i had to cover at exorbitant prices but still i mean i i was targeting around 2% but um, had to give up around 80k in um, taking my stop loss little slow but nonetheless this is a 1 cr account i'll show you this this is a 1 cr account and we made around 1.2 and here again 1.25 so okay i mean <laughs> um, the 3 pm fall was something which we couldn't have avoided and uh, nobody could have thought that this uh, this level 350 level which acted as a very good support since last two days would have been taken out in a just one single red candle but um, nonetheless i mean we are here to manage the risk some days we make some days we lose but um, 1.2% i'm happy we'll take it any day we'll take it any day yeah. 1511 right yeah. otherwise it could have been like shiva over okay thanks thanks uh, praful and uh, thank you jagan and sure yeah you have any yeah so this i said as i said actually the all the positions are almost done right now right so the market is over so having a profit of 1.25% here this is for the account of 4.85 and i have one more prop account that also i'll show you so there i do it's 11.85 so uh, 11.85 cr is a prop account there i have a 15 lakhs profit so the same thing is replicated in a prop account okay so you can share the can you please done with jagan done it, can you please share the screen number 2 once again please so what saved me today is the execution speed look at the speed at which i was able to exit the position and reverse it so the the speed at which i exited is this one at 28 29 rupees uh, the option which went to zero and look at the speed at which i took the trade so in one single minute in one single second i was able to execute 1 2 3 4 5 orders which is like all 900 quantities then again in next 1 uh, second 1 2 3 4 5 6 fast and for 4500 quantity six orders i was able to punch in in 1 second so that speed is what saved me saved the day for, uh, day for me and that's what i was saying this particular account i was keeping it completely free because whenever the biggest or fastest trade comes in i can just punch in order like anything like a computer i can get get in and get out so that is the reason this account i mostly keep it free and uh, i i take the fastest uh, trades in this one that is the that is the limit that is no, the that maximum is the limit in one order that is the freeze limit for bank nifty and guys point. this is not iceberg order this is not iceberg order this is sticky order one one by one i punched in like if you want to see i will show you this is how it is see 900 is the quantity i put the market then uh, i press enter i kept keep on pressing enter see this this is how i uh, enter huge number of I orders i think now with one click you should be able to do more than five correct <laughs> let's see okay so guys talking about uh, one last move i think <laughs> i needed to thank all the panelists here who have been like and contributing from the looks like it is a perfect sellers day and hope like and you guys have enjoyed it 
we would have had a great day. Unfortunately, the last bit of movement did have spoiled the party, but still we would take it on a stride. On a day, tricky market, even if we are able to close it less than 1%, I would take it on any day. And uh, naturally, we will be coming back stronger in the coming expiries. But guys, most importantly, it takes guts and like, and I needed to thank all of you. You guys have done an amazing job to share the stage and then share their strategies and in right in front of you. Please give a big round of applause to all the panelists here. Okay, thank you all so much. Hope you would have all enjoyed the day. Though the market was not giving that kind of a move which we would have been expecting it, but look forward to seeing you all on another wonderful expiry in the future. I hope when DJ announces it, we will all be there. And from OI Pulse team, I take a leave. And thank you, Siju, Jagan, Praful, Sharik. And thank you all so much, guys. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks to all of the folks on the stage who showcased uh, live expiry trades. Let me tell you, sharing trades live in front of any audience, forget the size of the audience, and this is a sizable audience, requires nerves of steel and uh, probably some other body, body parts also of a certain kind. I think, Shishir, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I was not being specific, but I think, you know, people get my drift. So, thanks a lot. It requires great courage, conviction, and like uh, Shiju exhibited very fast execution capabilities. I could see five trades being punched within one second, which is huge. I mean, see, it, it almost sounds superhuman. Basically, because you know, imagine punching five trades in one second. So it's almost seems surreal for me. And uh, keeping in, yeah, Abhishek, you also need to join us, please. I think Abhishek, uh, I don't know if anybody has seen my tweet about Abhishek today. Abhishek and Shishir. Yes, red shoe. So I think Abhishek knew all along it's going to be a down day today, probably. So. Can we call you Nostradamus? <laughs> okay. So, thanks to everybody. And the kind of uh, commentary that they gave, each one of the game must, should have been revealing to you, should have given you a bit more insight into the thinking of a person in real time before they are taking trades or when they are exiting positions. So, I hope that that real time experience sort of gave you some clear insight into the logic or into the thinking of traders who are all very, very good, I would say. In fact, that's the reason why I've invited them multiple times over. There are many other traders in India, obviously, who are also very, very good. But it's just that I've not discovered them. Okay. But these people are really some of the best I've ever seen, probably in the last five, six, or even 10 years. So thanks to all of you. A big round of applause for all of them, please. Thank you. So keeping in trend with uh, the times uh, and most traders carnival expir expiries have been read. As you can see from both our dress codes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, possibly. No, what to do? We got corrupted by Abhishek, by shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I can easily shift the blame there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'd like Abhishek to share his views on the some kind of a brief commentary about today as a market. Uh, so, this is how market works. Surprises everyone. But I just want to appreciate all the panelists out here, right? From Sharek, Praful, Jagan was there. Uh, Shibu, uh, so sorry if I pronounced it wrong, okay, <laughs> and uh, again Siva, because the kind of efforts and uh, audacity it takes to come on the stage, do the commentary and do all those things, phenomenal, like profit and loss is a part of game, 
someone has made money someone might have lost someone must have break even but amazing kind of commentary and the second thing is uh, so we and rekha ji were actually discussing around this thing so somehow i made okay okay money also uh, uh, somehow today but uh, the point over here is coming on the stage i i still wonder how siva is actually doing how you guys were doing constantly speaking guiding everyone and talking so i would wish everyone if uh, gives a big round of applause for all these gentlemen out here amazing job amazing and just a brief uh, this thing uh, these are just part of uh, 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 of the game uh, I, i i was expecting the buyers to win the game today but uh, okay that happens i had put up my stakes on the buyers today true honestly <laughs> like even we were expecting at around 3 pm there is going to be some kind of an gamma move and but it's suddenly it's like a bas mastan movie there was a twist and then uh, <laughs> everything turned but anyways commendable job i really uh, commend and uh, uh, amazing amazing job by everyone that's it thank you thanks thanks abhishek and i would like to uh, have a couple of more comments quick comments two minute comments by the remaining uh, folks here please starting with shiju <laughs> hey today was an amazing market one of the markets which can test any trader maybe uh, but literally it, it tested me because my view had been extremely bullish and my position was in super profit like it was so tempting to book the profit but that is not what my trade when when my view is strong regardless of profit or loss i keep it but the market took a turn which is totally unexpected the the time that market took the turn that was exactly at, uh, right before 3 pm so usually if there is a move right before 3 pm the 3 pm move usually goes to the opposite side so when i see that i again added the position but immediately after 3 pm when the move was continuing i realized my mistake uh, i i realized the the market is not going to behave the way i am uh, seeing i was able to exit all the position which was a huge position then immediately the market was so kind the execution was so fast internet was so fast so i could do everything and uh, ended the day in green i'm so happy with the way i traded today because uh, i'm i'm not at all regretting for not uh, taking the profit out because when your view is strong if you don't ride ride your profit you will not make big money so big money is in the big trades not in the quantity but the quality of the trade and the the, the way you ride the winners but the moment you realize that you are wrong in the market don't care about the profit or loss get the hell out of it and take whatever is best for the situation thank you yeah so making 1 percentage plus profit on an expiry day i would take in any day right so the question i always ask is how was the 1 percentage profit coming Uh, we had a discussion yesterday as well here in the night right so i always talk about making money in the most peaceful happiest easiest manner don't you think that's the best way of making money i mean that's very subjective right but at the same time i look at traders around me so today uh, it was very interesting option buyers on one side and sellers on one side so i was having two great option sellers next to me and one thing which is very interesting is each of us ended at exactly the same profit percentage each of each one of us made nearly 1.3 percentage profit wow. but if you looked at the way we traded i was really out of the money and came in closer with time he was very i mean kind of close in the beginning then went far and then came near and he very crazy his own uh, automated style right so the thing is each of us traded in our own styles which are very different in itself yet ended up in the same profit right so it's, it is validation that market is there for everybody you can figure out your style but making profits is absolutely doable that's what i stand for right uh, i i always uh, i'm baffled by the fact that why are people running be behind a lot of different strategies when making money is actually very simple so yeah uh, overall i said again 1 percentage profit on an expiry why not beautiful thank you so personally for me i did a couple of mistakes usually i gun for around 2 to 2 and a half percent every expiry and that's what i try to do and i got a little adamant at some points i had to cover particular strikes at the prices which uh, i didn't um, again i mean we just everything is just one trade at a time and we look at our mistakes try to correct them and just move on and um, you know excellent outcome from all these traders because shiva made money And no i didn't shiju <laughs> shiju managed to end break even because like when shiju was talking to us he was telling like i'm completely bullish i'm completely bullish he was long synthetic he was short at the money puts and long at the money calls 
and the kind of quantity he trades has like wow like if the market gives breakout like he'll be he would, he would have made a killer, killer profit but um, in spite of his view going wrong he was very fluidic in changing his position from bullish to bearish and made recoup pretty much everything that he lost in the last 15 minutes which was commendable so as sharik said i mean the market is a huge huge place we all have place we can just find our own corner and um, though we all were option sellers the way we approached trades was completely different because i was trying to gun for higher profits but sharik was almost like ha main isi strike pe baithunga itna bhi hai to mere ko 1.5 milega kafi hai and i tried to gun for you know higher percentages but unfortunately didn't work out but again one trade at a time and we move on with your mistakes just one more thing i wanted to add especially to the option sellers if you remember i was short in uh, 40 to 500 put option from 89 rupees when it came to 6 rupees i exited the position saying that i don't want to carry a risk for just 6 rupees and if the market falls it can go to any level and if you look at where it ended it ended at 42 rupees so being an option seller you should not try to milk every bit of the uh, the, the premium that is there when it doesn't make sense to hold the risk you get get out of it so i am standing next to two option sellers so probably call it uh, infectious sharik and praful so i also sold options but i'm going to talk about it during my presentation tomorrow obviously it's on cryptocurrencies okay so i'm going to share details about the logic and i'll also have to trigger uh, try to figure out how to display my phone onto the big screen i also have it on an app actually which is where i place my orders selling uh, call options on bitcoin so o2 jagan today uh, it started with a such a low premium so i know that either the market uh, is not going to stay anywhere it is going to be in a sideways so i'm going to make a killing profit or else with the close window it is going to move violently so that's what exactly happened today but fortunate that actually my system had a accumulation and distribution model wherein it starts selling it starts booking profit periodically if i start selling the straddles in the morning i'm putting a stop loss it could have hit a call stop loss it could have hit a put stop loss i would have made a loss the reason why is actually gradually add your position gradually book your profit gradually book your loss make sure that your position size is not so much at the same time you roll your margin that is how indirectly i'm taking the leverage so that's what exactly happened but last hour yes true last hour it had a complete v shape i had a hit but it wiped out the 50% of the profit but still 1.25% return with a such a low volatility as a good return okay i think uh, jagan uh, pointed out the clear view when it is a low volatility as an option buyer we don't have much of an option only thing is we just wanted a quick move whenever there is a quick move we were able to get something the one big mistake which we did is around the 3 o'clock wherein uh, we were expecting 40 to 500 to be getting hold on because the way the riders were running for cover i was just hoping the riders are not going to be but i never expected all the buyers also to exit quickly they just felt chiva there is no way we will be able to get any money out of it the market is falling on the us it's okay it's a part and parcel and i will take it 0.6% down that is the way we will be able to do it most important thing is try to control the draws which you will be able to absorb it and even whatever the things which we were trying as an option buy a long strangle didn't play out any particular move towards the 3 pm that didn't play out so when you have so many challenges it's better to stay light we could have easily done what siju done it but sometimes that will be like and sometimes can be misleading when you know it is not your day try to cut down your position that's something which i have done it in the past wherein i would have been gone aggressively on the other direction then the market would have just moved back when you see the adjusted closing there was some problem into that so it is better to stay light but again i hope all of you would have enjoyed the day we will come back again rock the show next year thank you so we are already considering a few options i got some feedback from quite a good number of people here locations uh, that were uh, disc, uh, recommended to me were obviously the all time favorite in india which is goa and surprisingly i got some recommendations for places like ludhiana indore hyderabad again several of those so probably you know we'll run a poll and then we'll see the numbers and then try and figure out where to travel to next but please make sure whatever places are recommending has good chilled beer thank you yeah so um, 
How many of you have finished lunch? Yes. Okay, so the remaining people, please uh, start off with lunch. We have kept the lunch counter open. And in case people want to have a round two, please feel free. Yeah. Yeah, immediately after that, we please uh, change your t-shirts to the red ones. And please come over here. We're going to have a quick group picture and then start off the next session. So we don't want to lose much more time after that. So four o'clock here, please. I'm um, sorry. Sorry, it's 3.50 now. Um, okay, 4.30 p.m. Please have finished lunch and uh, change your T-shirt and then come here, please. Thank you.